Hello and welcome to the Projects Using MongoDB course by Eduonics. My name is Brad Traversy and I'll be your instructor for this course. So this course involves 10 web development projects using MongoDB along with other various web technologies. So we'll have 10 chapters. Each chapter has one project. Each project has four to eight sections and each section has one to two videos along with program files, quizzes, and PowerPoints. So what you should know, you should definitely just have a basic understanding of what a database is and, and at least know some basics of web development. Uh, it is possible for you to take this course without knowing any of that, but uh, of course the more you know, the, the easier it's going to be. Uh, JSON syntax is, is, a, is a real plus because MongoDB is a document database and stores documents in JSON format or JSON-like format, okay? If you know HTML and CSS, that's great. If you know JavaScript, that's gonna help too. And obviously, if you know things like Node.js, Express, um, anything to do with, with NoSQL development um, is definitely gonna help you. So technologies used, where MongoDB is just a database, we're gonna have to use a bunch of other technologies to actually build something to have a project. Um, so we'll be learning learning about things like Node.js, Express, um, Angular, Meteor.js, Mean.js, um, jQuery. We're gonna build quite a few RESTful web web APIs using uh, HTTP requests. Um, we'll even build a PHP application, and we'll deal with uh, Socket.io and WebSockets, and a few others as well. All right, so there's a lot crammed into these 10 projects. Hopefully you enjoy them and you learn a lot from them. And I will see you in the first project. Hey guys, and welcome to your first project. In this project, we're gonna be building a customer database. All right, so we're gonna focus solely on MongoDB. We're not gonna build a web application or use any other technologies because we wanna basically focus on installing MongoDB setting it up, um, learning the basic syntax for tasks like creating databases, collections, and documents, and using, uh, using the Mongo shell client. So section one is the intro, which you're watching now. Section two will install and set up MongoDB on a Linux Ubuntu server. Uh, section three, we're gonna be learning how to insert and find customers in the database. Section four, we'll learn how to update and remove customers. And section five, we'll be looking at arrays and embedded data. So what you'll learn is how to set up and install MongoDB in Linux, how to open and use the MongoDB shell client, how to create databases, collections, and documents, and also how to perform CRUD functionality from the shell client. And that would be create, read, update, and delete. All right, so pretty simple project, just an, an introduction type of project to get you comfortable with the syntax and, and how MongoDB works. So I will see you in the first video. Hey guys, welcome to your very first project in MongoDB. So in this project, we're gonna get everything set up. We're gonna kind of, um, I'm gonna explain what MongoDB is. Uh, we're gonna install it and we're gonna create a database to hold customer information. All right, so we'll have a bunch of different fields uh, in our customer's collection, things like their name, addresses, uh, services, things like that. And the, the main focus for this project is just to get you familiarized with MongoDB syntax, how to do things like insert, update, delete, um, how to create embedded documents and arrays, things like that. Okay, so there'll be no web application. We're just pretty much gonna focus on MongoDB by itself before we go into uh, web application development with it. So what is MongoDB? It is classified as a NoSQL database. All right, so that's a little bit of a misnomer. Um, there are NoSQL databases that can use SQL. So uh, it's a little misleading. I think a better term for it is a non-relational database. Uh, it's very different than your traditional 
um, or Oracle or MySQL or Postgres or any of those types of databases. All right, and some of the key differences are the structure. Um, when you're working with SQL databases, or I'm sorry, relational databases, there's a strict structure or schema that's involved, and you have to predefine that before you can even think about creating your application. You have to you have to know what tables you want. You have to know which um, what fields will be in those tables. You have to know what types of fields. You have to specify if it's a a var char or, or um, whatever it may be. All right, uh, with MongoDB and other non-relational databases, you can pretty much do whatever you want on the fly. All right, so if in the middle of development you want to add another collection or you want to add um, separate fields for a certain collection, you can do that, and it's not going to break anything or anything like that. All right, so. MongoDB was built basically to scale. Uh, it's used for very, very large uh, applications that have a lot of data. Um, and if you want to uh, add hardware or add space or whatever, it's really easy to scale. That's one of the, um, if not the biggest benefit to uh, MongoDB and other non-relational databases. All right, so like I said, we're gonna go ahead and get it installed. I am using Linux Ubuntu, but we will be working in Windows for some of the other projects as well. We're gonna kind of flip back and forth. All right, because the, the um, how it works, how Mongo runs is a little different on Windows than it is on Linux. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna use the, um, the package management system for Ubuntu. But before we can actually install Mongo, we have to import the public key. And I think, uh, I think I should probably open up the link to the installation instructions. All right, so if you wanna go to this URL right here. Um, so we're gonna go down to install MongoDB, and this is where we need to import the public key used by the package management system. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and copy that. And I'm going to paste that right in. Okay, now if you're not familiar with Linux Ubuntu, um, sudo basically just means that we want to run this as root. So it's going to ask us for a password. Okay, so that imported the key for us. Now we need to create a list file for MongoDB. I am in Ubuntu 14.04, so I'm going to grab this. Copy that. All right, next we want to just uh, do an apt-get update. All right, and then we'll go ahead and install the MongoDB packages once this is done. Okay, so we're gonna do uh, sudo apt-get install y and then mongodb-org. Okay, then we'll go ahead and install the latest stable version. Like it says here, if you want a specific release, you can do that, you can specify that. And let's see, and that should install it for us. Okay, now to start the service, we're gonna say, oh, let's say sudo, service mongod which is the service we want to run the daemon and start okay so job is already running mongod and then if you want to stop it you can do this right here uh, sudo service mongod stop all right and to restart it's sudo service mongod restart all right, now if we go down here, begin using MongoDB. Okay, there's a lot of different um, tutorials and guides that are available at um, the documentation site, which is docs.mongodb.org. All right, and if we go to the getting started guides, there's guides in Mongo Shell, which is what we're using here, um, for Node.js, which we'll be using quite a bit in this course. Uh, Python, C++, 
Java and C Sharp. Okay, so this guides on all of those different uh, drivers. And there's uh, guides on CRUD operations, aggregation, SQL. There's there's just a there's a ton of information in the, the documentation for Mongo. Now just to make sure, let's go ahead and just type in Mongo. And what that does is that opens the shell for us. Okay, and we can do uh, whatever kind of operations that we want in this shell. So let's say show DBs. Okay, so that's gonna show that we have a database for uh, a default database local. And you can also do show databases. It does the same thing. Now, if you want to see what database you're currently in, you want to do DB. Now, you'll see that we're in a database called test, but when we did show DBs, that didn't show up. And the reason for that is there's no data in test. All right, so it's not going to show up. Now, we can go ahead and just add some data. All right, so in order to add data, we need uh, a collection. So we can say db.createCollection. And let's create a collection called uh, test call. All right, and if we say show collections, we can see we now have a test call collection. So now we can say db dot test call dot insert. And let's just say name test. All right, and this and inserted one means that we inserted one uh, column. Okay, so now if we do show DBs, test will now show because it has data. All right, now I'm not going to go into any more of the syntax or any of that because we're going to do that in the next video when we actually create our database. Now, one more quick thing that I want to mention is um, you're going to need some kind of text editor or code editor. Um, I'm going to use Sublime Text 2, all right, which I, I really like. It's really easy to use and it's powerful. So we're going to do that. And this page here from the askubuntu.com website shows us how to install it, all right, because we just need to add, the, add it to our repository. Okay, so I'm going to grab that. And to get out of the shell, we're going to do Control C. Okay, and I'll paste that in. All right, so now we can do sudo apt get update. And to install, we'll say sudo apt get install sublime text. Okay, so now I can go up here and if we search for sublime text, it should show up. There it is. And what I do is just grab it and put it in my sidebar right here. All right, and then we can access it. All right. And when we're doing our inserts and all that for this project, I'm probably going to type it out here just so you can see it nice and neat and then we'll just paste it in the inside of the terminal. All right, and then the last thing that I want to install here is git. Okay, so we want to install git, so we'll do sudo uh, apt git install, and I believe it's git core. Yeah. All right. So just to make sure, we'll say git v and unknown option. Hmm. Oh, actually, we can do git version. There we go, version 1.9.1. .1. All right, so we have our environment set up. In the next video, we're going to create our database for our customers. We'll create the collection. Um, I'll show you how to uh, add data, how to read it, how to look it up, things like that. Uh, so I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys. So in the last video, we talked about what MongoDB is. We installed it, did some very basic commands. Um, and uh, what I want to do now 
is we're going to be working in the Mongo shell for pretty much the rest of this chapter. Okay, and as we did in the last video, to, to enter the shell, we can just say Mongo inside of our terminal, and that's going to open it. All right, now there's a lot of different things you can do in the Mongo shell. You can do just basic JavaScript, all right? So we could do, let's do uh, one plus one, okay? I can do basic math. We can do things like set variables. So we'll say variable i is equal to five. And then we can say i plus one. It's going to give us six. Now, this isn't very useful to us. I just wanted to show you that we can run basic JavaScript and functions and stuff like that. Um, but we're going to obviously want to interact with our databases. And the first thing I want to do before we create our uh, customer's database and insert data, I want to create a user. And if you look over here, we have the documentation for db.createUser. Okay, so it's pretty self-explanatory. You can see here, uh, we're going to specify the user, the name, uh, give it a password. You can attach custom data to the user if you'd like and then you want to add the roles okay so first thing let's um create a database called user uh, customers and enter it okay so now we're in customers now um, i'm going to type everything out in this uh, snippets file all right um, for two reasons one so that you can see the data better uh, than typing it in the terminal and also so you have it for your reference. So you should have this in your um, program files. All right, so if we go down to the bottom here, there's an example. All right, so you can see this is to add an admin user to the products database. All right, so what we're gonna do is copy this. Let me make this a little bigger, wider. All right, so uh, db.createUser and let's change this I'm gonna change this to Brad and then the password let's just do one two three four custom data um, we're not gonna use any custom data we don't need it so we'll get rid of that and then role okay cluster admin and then we're also gonna put this user in the admin database all right, and then you can see we can add as many roles as we want. This role is read any database, and then we're specifying that we want the user to be able to read write. Okay, um, the timeout thing and majority, I'm not exactly sure what that means, uh, but we can just keep that in there. And let's go ahead and copy that, and then we'll run it in the shell. Okay, you can see why I wanted to type it out in the file. All right, so we'll run that and it gives us the user back. All right, so now let's do show DBs. And we still, it's not showing the customer's database because we still have no data in the actual database. All right, but let's do uh, use admin and we'll say show collections. And now we have a system.users. All right. That wasn't there before because we had no users. Now what we can do is do db. Uh, we want to do db.system.users.find. And then there's a, a helper function we can add to this called dot pretty. And that's going to format it nice and neat for us. Okay. So Let's see, we have the ID, which is customers.brad, the user's brad, db customers, and then we have our credentials, all right, so the stored keys, um, and then roles, we have cluster admin, uh, read any database, and then read write on the customer's database. All right, so that's how you can add a user. Now we wanna get into inserting data. And by the way, if you wanna clear the console, you can do CLS. All right, so let's move on. Okay, so I'll probably add comments to this file as well to make it a little easier to read. Now let's say we wanna add a customer and let's be really simple here and just add a first and last name. All right, so first thing we need to do is create a collection. And to create a collection, we can do db dot 
create collection. And then we can just add the collection name. In this case, will be customers. All right. Um, so let's run that. All right. And you can see it gives us an OK one. It added one collection. Now, if we say show collections, oh, you know what? We're still in the admin database which is fine because it gives me uh, a reason to show you how to get rid of a collection. All right, so we'll say db.customers.drop. Okay, and now if we go again and say show collections, it's gone. All right, so now let's go back and use customers. All right, and then we'll do our database create collection customers. Okay, and then we'll show Okay, now we have the system indexes, we can ignore that. Um, and then we have our customers collection. So let's go ahead and add a customer with a first and last name. All right, so we'll do it over here first. We'll say db.insert. And then we're going to want to pass in a JSON object. All right, so first name, we'll say John. And last name, we'll say Doe. Okay, so we'll copy that. Uh, insert of, oh, I'm sorry, we need to add the collection name. So it'll be db.customers.insert. All right, so it gives us this inserted one. Now to look up, to, to have a list of our customers, we'll do db.customers.find. All right. All right, and that gives us back our first name and last name, but it also, you'll notice that it, it gives us a field called underscore ID. All right, and this is put there automatically. This is a unique ID, and it's what's called an object ID. Okay, um, some NoSQL databases won't do this for you. You have to generate it yourself. Uh, but MongoDB, if you don't if you don't have or specify this ID field, it's going to put it in for you. All right. Now, as I said before, we have a helper function called Pretty. And you can see that now it formats it nice and neat for us. Now we can also insert multiple customers in one query if we want. All right, so let's do DB dot customers dot insert. All right, and then here we're going to place an array. And I'm going to space this out just to make it more readable. All right, so. Let's see, let's do first name. I'm just going to make up some names here. So first name, Steven. Actually, I want to use double quotes. All right, and then we'll do last name, Johnson. OK, that's one. Now we can just put a comma here. A couple more. Let's say Bob Smith. Uh, we'll say Michelle Ford. I'm just making these names up. Let's say um, Jill uh, Swanson. All right, we'll take that last comma off. Okay, so let's copy this. Okay, we'll go to our shell and paste it in. All right, so uh, it gives us a bunch of things here, and these are all zero, these modified and all that, but you can see we have inserted four. So now let's go and do db.customers.find.pretty, and it gives us all the customers. 
All right, so that's how you can insert multiple customers at once. Now, just to show you that the, the schema here, first name and last name, we don't have to stick to that. We can add a customer with an added uh, field. So to demonstrate that, let's grab this. All right, and let's change these up. Say William Hart, and then we'll add on to this, and let's say gender male. All right, so we'll copy that. Okay, so now let's do a find. And now you can see that all of our customers are here, and William Hart has the field gender. Okay, so it doesn't have to match the rest of the customers, which is really, really helpful and makes things a lot easier. Now up to this point, we've been adding strings, okay? So all these first name, last name, gender, these are all strings. All right, so we can also add other data types. All right, so let's do, let's grab this and we'll change this up. Whoops, Mary, <laughs> say Mary. Um, um, Jackson. All right, and we'll say gender female. And let's add an age. Okay, so age. Now this is going to be an integer, not a string. So we don't have to use quotes here. All right, we'll say age 33. All right, and let's say, let's add her birth date. Okay, so birth date. Now to add a date, we can actually use the JavaScript new date and then we'll pass in September 10th 1981 okay so we, we can see we're inserting an integer and then a date so we'll copy that paste that in and now let's take a look and now down here you can see we have age 33 and then birth date and this is formatted as an ISO date and ISO stands for um, International Organization for Standardization alright and it just eliminates ambiguity we can convert this in our application to pretty much any kind of date any kind of format alright so what I want to do now is I want to show you how to find data uh, and specify certain conditions. All right, so uh, actually, you know what? Let's add one more mail just so I can show you. Just change this to, um, I don't know, uh, real. <laughs> okay, so change that to, say, Fred. Okay, Fred real. He's a male, all right, so we'll add him. Now let's say that we want to find all the males, then we can do db.customers.find, and then specify here. Uh, we want to specify gender male. And you can see that it's giving us William and Fred. Now, what if we don't want all of this returned? What if we just want the first name? All right, so we'll go back, we'll do that same query, except we'll add another parameter, and we want just the first name. So we'll say first name, and that's gonna be one. Okay, so now it's giving us, now it does give us the object ID as well, but you can see the only other thing it's giving us is the first name. And I also want to show you that uh, in addition to find, we also have find one. Okay, so we can say, let me just type this in here. Okay, so db.customers.find1 and then specify the condition. Okay, so we'll find one where uh, first name is equal to William. All right, so let's copy that. And 
and it's giving us no. Oh, I accidentally left and came back, so I have to use customers. And there we go, it gives us William. Okay, and if we want to specify only returning a certain field, let's get first name one. Okay, and that just gives us William, his first name. All right, so I think that's a good place to stop. We talked a lot about um, looking up data and inserting data. In the next video, we'll look at updating and deleting and some, some couple other things as well. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. All right, so now that we know how to insert documents and we know how to uh, read them, we can find a bunch of them, we can find just one, we can add conditional parameters. Now I wanna work on being able to update customers and delete them. All right, so let's take a look at an update statement. Okay, so we'll say db, whoops, db.customers.update. All right, and this is gonna take in first parameter. We need to figure out w which one do we wanna update. So let's say where first name is equal to William, okay? So that's, that's the, the record that we wanna update. Next parameter is what we wanna update and the value. Okay, so if we say, um, let's update William's last name. I don't know why this would change, but it's just, um, you know, hypothetic. All right, so last name, let's change to Hill. Okay, so we wanna find the person with first name William, change the last name to Hill. Now, if I just run this like this, let me show you what happens. Okay, so it ran. Now let's do a find. And if we go and look for William, we can't find him because this is him right here. But you can see all we have is we still have the ID and we have just the last name Hill. Okay, so what it did is it replaced the, the document entirely except for the ID. So we didn't specify the first name, so it, it just got rid of it, it just replaced it which is m most likely not what you want to do. So you have a few different choices. You could, you know, specify William's first name and all the fields that are there already so that they don't disappear, or you can use what's called set. All right, so let's try this with someone else. Uh, let's do it with, we'll do it with Jill Swanson. All right, we'll say she got married and she's changing her name. So DV, dot customers dot update and we want the person with the first name of Jill uh, whoops we need to put in our curly braces here can't forget those all right and then the next parameter let's say we want her last name Let's change that. Let's say she married William, so now she's Jill Hill. Now if I run this, it's gonna do the same exact thing. It's gonna just replace it. We're gonna lose her first name. So like I said, we could just put her first name in there. Okay, so we could do that, but um, you know we may not want to just add every single field. So what we can do is we can go like this. We can say dollar sign set and then that's we're going to open curly braces and we're going to put that last name in the curly brace so that'll go like that and i could probably make this look a little better oops all right okay so First name, Jill, well, that's who we're looking for. And then we wanna set the last name to Hill. All right, so this shouldn't affect her first name. So let's copy that. Okay, we'll go ahead and paste that in. All right, now let's do a find. 
And now if we go up, you can see that we have Jill Hill. <laughs> All right, so it didn't, it didn't overwrite her first name. We just set last name to Hill. So that's, that's usually what you're gonna wanna do when you do an update. So let's use update to add some of these other fields to the users, all right? So let's say uh, Bob Smith. He doesn't have a gender or an age or a birthday, so let's do that. All right, so we'll say db.customers.update. Now usually when you're working with uh, a, a production database, um, you're going to want to update by a unique field, all right, because this here, this would not be good for a production database. The reason is because if we have two Jills, what this is going to do is it's going to just grab, uh, it depends, if you specify it, that it can do multiple, uh, multiple customers, then it'll change all Jills to the last name Hill, all right, if you don't, then it's going to just grab the first one, all right, so you need to have some kind of unique field which would usually be the object ID so let's get so we're gonna update Bob Smith let's get his ID which is this right here all right and then we're gonna pass in underscore ID and then his object ID all right and then we're gonna say yeah we'll say set All right, so we want to set gender to male, and let's set age, and we'll set that to 30. Okay, and then birth date, we can say new date, and we'll pass in uh, what was the format for the birthday? All right. So August 20, 1985. Okay, so that should add the gender, age, and birth date to Bob. Unexpected token. Hmm. Let's see what do they do here and birth date new date oh the second parameter has to be wrapped in curly braces so it should be like that all right so now let's check it out and where's Bob Bob Smith male 30 and he has his birth date now we can perform an update and we can make it so that if the condition isn't met then it can create it for us it'll do an insert all right so let's try that all right so let's do db dot customers dot update and let's see let's say first name okay we'll do a first name we don't have so we'll say Michael all right and then we're gonna want to set okay so we'll set first name last name hey it's Michael Jordan uh, age no idea how old Michael is. I'd say, I don't know, in his 50s maybe? We'll, we'll say 50. All right, now, just as is, it's not gonna do anything because we, we know we don't have Michael Jordan in our database. But what we can do is add on to this. Okay, so this is, we're gonna add another parameter right here and we're gonna specify upsert. So this needs, needs uh, curly braces. So upsert is going to be true. And you'll notice upsert is basically a combination of update and insert. All right, so let's try to run that and see what happens. OK, 
Okay, so you can see it gave us uh, upserted one. All right, now if we do a find, we now have Michael Jordan, okay, with all the fields that we entered. Now, what if we want to remove a field? All right, so let's say, uh, let's say Michael Jordan sees that we, we gave him the age 50, and that's wrong. He's really, um, I don't know, we'll say 48, even though he's probably a lot older. But anyway, to get rid of that, let's do db dot customers dot update and we want to find where last name equals Jordan so in this next parameter we're going to specify unset okay so let's unset um, age so we're going to say age one. So we'll grab that and go ahead and paste that in. All right, and now if we do a find, now we can see that age is no longer there. And by the way, I just looked it up. Michael Jordan's 52, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. Now we can also increment. All right, so let's take, uh, let's see, Mary Jackson is 33. So let's say that um, her birthday passes and she needs to be updated to 34. Okay, so let's go and do db.customers.update. Okay, we're gonna specify first name is Mary. All right, and then in the second parameter, uh, we're going to say dollar sign ink, and then the field name, which is age, and let's bring that up one. Okay, so we'll try to run that. Okay, now we'll do a find. And now you can see Mary Jackson is now 34. Okay. All right, so the last thing that we need to do here is we need to be able to remove records or documents. All right, so let's say we want to move, remove uh, Steven Johnson. All right, he's no longer a client, so we're going to say uh, db.customers.remove and then we're simply going to put the query in here so let's say first name Steven okay now there's a second parameter we can use and this is a true or false and this is for just once alright so what this is going to do is if we say true it's going to take Steven and delete him but just that one it's not going to go ahead and delete all the Stevens and like I've said before, this is not a query that you would use on a, on a real database, all right, because you, you may have more than one Steven. But I'm just using it for simplicity. Usually you would do this by the object ID, which is unique, okay? So just keep that in mind, all right? Um, but for the most part, we're going to want to say true for something like this uh, because we just want the one. So let's run that, and then we'll... Whoop. What happened here? Unexpected token. BB customers remove. Oh. Okay, so I kept the uh, the curly brace should end right here. Sorry about that. All right, so removed, and if we do a find, you can see Steven is nowhere to be found. All right, easy enough. And we can also do stuff like, um, let's say, db.customers.remove db and let's say age, uh, we'll say age, and then let's say dollar sign GT, which is greater than, and we'll say 31. All right, and notice that there's Mary that's 34 and there's Bob that's 30. 
All right, so we removed one, and let's check that again. And Bob is, let's see, where do we start this? I'm sorry, Bob is still there because he's 30, but Mary is gone. She was 34. All right, so just to show you that you can do stuff like that. And that's, that's the basics of just updating records and removing them. All right, so I think that's about it for this section. In the next section, we'll take a look at embedded documents and arrays. Hey guys, in the last video, we took care of our updates and removals. And um, up to this point, we can do basic CRUD functionality. We can create, read, update, and delete. But if we look at all of our documents and um, how we structured them, it's all like one value per key. So first name, William, gender, male. Uh, but we may have more values that we want to put um, in relation to one particular key. And a way that we can do that is through embedded documents and arrays, all right, and embedded data. So let's do a, an insert that's a little more complicated where we can embed data um, into one key of a document, all right? So let's say uh, DB dot customers dot insert all right and let's do some of the the ones we've we've already done so first name we'll say um, Peter and let's say last name we'll say uh, Carrie age uh, 32 all right, now let's say that we want Peter's address and we don't want to do like street and then do another one and do city and all that. Let's just have one address field, but we'll include some embedded data. All right, so let's say street, we'll say 120 Main Street and let's see, city. Chicago State. Oops. And zip. Don't know it, just making it up. All right, so now we have this address field, but in it we have embedded data. We have the street, city, state, and zip. All right, so this is a lot more cleaner and it just encapsulates the, the address all into one key. All right, and then we can query that with something like address dot state. All right, and I'll show you how to do that after. All right, but let's finish this insert. All right, so after address, let's do phone, but maybe Peter has more than one phone number. So for that, we can do the same thing. We can say home. All right, maybe uh, work. And mobile. Okay, so pretty much same kind of thing that we did with the address. All right, so now let's say that Peter has a few different services with our company and we wanna embed that in an array. Okay, so let's say services. And now what we're going to do is since this is going to be an embedded array, we're going to use our square brackets. All right, and then each object will be in curly brackets. Okay, so each service is going to have two things. It's going to have a service ID. And for this, let's say the ID is hosting underscore Linux. Okay, that's the ID that this service goes by. And then we also want to have a service name, which is like a uh, human readable version. So we'll say Linux hosting. All right, so he may have more than one. All we have to do is put a comma there and we can copy that. All right, so he has three services. This one, let's say hosting email. And maybe he has a, um, a domain registered with us. So we'll say domain register. All 
All right, now one great thing about using uh, MongoDB or a NoSQL database is that we don't we can use different fields for different objects. So for the domain registration, maybe we want to have the actual domain. All right, and let's just say something.com. And we can do that. Even though these services don't have a domain field, it's fine to do this. And that's what's so great about NoSQL databases, or as I prefer to call them, non-relational databases. All right, so that's all one field, services. And that ends here. And maybe we have a services count field. All right, so that's a, a much more in-depth insert than what we've been doing with just simple key value or key and just a single value. So let's try and run this. So I'm gonna copy that. Okay, we'll go ahead and paste that in. And we get inserted. So now if we do a find, I know it's a little hard to read, but you can see that we have Peter Carey, we have his addresses, or his, it's a single address, but with different uh, embedded fields, phones, phone numbers, and then our services, all with a service ID and a service name, and then we have our count. All right, so this, this is more like a real document that you would have in a database like this. Now, if we wanna get all the services, Let's do that. So we'll say db dot find. I'm sorry, db customers dot find, and then we'll specify that we want uh, first name Peter, and we want to get his services. So we can say services one and that's it we don't want any other fields all right so let's copy that all right and you can see that it has returned just the services array now let's see let's say we only want the name we only want the services names okay so we can do that with db.customers.find Okay, same thing, first name, Peter. And then here we wanna put double quotes and we're gonna say services dot service name and one. Okay, so I'll copy that. Let's clear this. And that gives us just the name, just the service names. Now, what if we want to get all of Peter's domain names? Okay, so for that, let's just copy this, make it quicker. Okay, so first name Peter, and um, we want to narrow it down to only the domain register service. So let's say first name Peter, and then we're gonna put a comma, and let's do services dot service ID, and we're gonna specify for that that we want domain register, okay? And then over here, we're gonna say Let's get rid of that. Uh, services, we only want to return the domain name, so dot domain, and then one. All right, so let's copy that. Okay, and we can see that we got something.com, and if he had others, it would list them here as well. All right, so we know how to add an array as a field, and we know how to uh, look them up. 
Now, what if we want to add to that array? What's if Peter purchases another service from us? We're gonna to wanna to add it to that. All right, so to do that, we're gonna use an update. So we're gonna say db.update. And let's say we have first name is Peter. Okay, so um, this is where we're going to use the push. All right, so dollar sign push. It's one of those special keywords like set and um, ink, and there's a bunch of other ones too. So we're going to push. And the field we want is services. And then we're going to specify the service ID. Okay, maybe we'll say hosting windows. And we also want the name. All right, and that should do it. So we'll copy that. Uh, let's see, update of object customers is not a function. Oh, I forgot customers. All right, so if we look, it matched one and modified one. So let's do a search to find pretty. And if we look at Peter and look at the services, we have our hosting Linux, email, register, and now we also have the hosting windows. All right, so that's how we can push to an array. All right, so I think we're gonna stop here. Um, like I said, the purpose of this project is to get you familiar with all of this, all this syntax, um, because it's pretty much the same thing when you're working with a driver in a web application. All right, so if we're building uh, a Node.js Express app and we're using the Mongoose driver, it's pretty much gonna work like this. Okay, the find, insert, all that stuff. All right, so just wanted to get you familiarized with that and um, you can use it in future projects. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next project. Hey guys, welcome to chapter two. In chapter two, we're gonna be creating a product catalog RESTful API. And what I mean by RESTful API is we're gonna build a backend application interface that will be able to react depending on which type of HTTP request it gets. All right, so if we send a GET request to the API, then we'll be able to return the data, which will be um, products, because it's a products catalog, uh, in JSON format. So we'll be able to do things like, just like return all the products or sp specify a certain product ID in the URL, and we'll get the data for just one product, um, things like that. We'll also be able to uh, deal with POST requests all right, so if someone submits a form to the API, it'll add that data to the server, to the database. Uh, we'll be able to handle put requests, which deal with updating data that's already there, as well as delete requests, which will obviously delete data. All right, and we'll be using a tool called RESTEASY, which is um, it's a Google Chrome and a Firefox plugin that allows you to make all those different types of requests. All right, so the sections, we have the intro. Section two, we'll be setting up Node.js and Express. Section three, we'll be looking at the data model and we'll be able to handle our get requests. And then in section four, we're gonna handle the post, put, and delete requests. So in this project, you learn how to install and use Node.js along with Express. You'll be able to create an Express backend server with the routes and mapped URLs, and also we'll be able to connect and interact with MongoDB using the MongoJS module. All right, so that's it. So hopefully you guys learn a lot, and having this knowledge to be able to create a RESTful API um, and being able to handle HTTP requests is really valuable 
because you can really integrate it with any kind of programming language, uh, whether it's a JavaScript framework like Angular or uh, PHP or Ruby on Rails, anything that you can make HTTP requests with. Um, so hopefully you enjoy it and I'll see you in the first video. Hey guys, in this project we're going to be building a RESTful web API where we can make HTTP re requests to and we can interact with data on the database. Alright, so just as an example, let's say we went to uh, localhost and let's say this was, um, well, let's say what it is going to be, it's going to be a catalog API, so products. So we may go to localhost slash products using a get request. All right, so what that would do is just list all of the products in the database in JSON format. All right, so this API will be returning JSON. All right, we might make a request to uh, localhost slash products slash and then some kind of ID, product ID. And that will be also a get request and what that would do is just get us a single product and all its information in JSON. All right, so we might make the same, uh, the same URL, a request to the same URL, but a post request. Okay, so what that's gonna do is that's gonna add that product to our database or to our API. All right, and then maybe we'd make a put request and we could attach an ID to that. And what a put request does is it updates data. All right, so that would update something on our database. And then finally, we'll be able to make a delete request to some product and it'll delete it. All right, so that's a, a really quick and dirty explanation of what we'll be doing. All right, so to do that, we're gonna use obviously MongoDB. We're gonna use Node.js, which is um, a platform to build uh, web applications on using mostly JavaScript. Uh, it uses the same JavaScript runtime that Google Chrome uses. All right, and we'll also be using Express, which is a web framework that runs on top of Node.js. And it, it also gives us an HTTP server to work with where we can create our own routes and um, decide what we wanna do with what requests. All right, and then in order to use MongoDB with Node and Express, we're gonna use something called MongoJS which is a, it's a Node.js module that allows us to interact with MongoDB. All right, and then to make requests, we're gonna use REST Easy, which is a Firefox plugin, um, but feel free to use any kind of, of RESTful, um, anything that allows you to make HTTP TTP requests, and you can see we can make get, post, put, delete, and some others. All right, there's a bunch for Google Chrome, if you use Chrome, um, I just wanted to use something different. I've only used this maybe uh, one or two other times, but I wanted to try it out. So that's what we'll be doing. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we already have MongoDB installed. We want to install Node.js. And depending on what, si what kind of operating system you're using, it's a little different. If you're using Windows, uh, just go ahead and go to nodejs.org, click on the big download button. Um, what we're going to do, we're using Linux Ubuntu, so we're going to be using the uh, package manager. And what we're going to do is install uh, NVM, which is Node Versions Manager, and we'll install it that way, All right, which is uh, a lot easier than it sounds. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to say sudo apt-get update. All right, then we have some dependencies. Uh, we're gonna say sudo dot, uh, not dot, <laughs> sudo apt get install, and we want uh, build essential and also lib SSL dev. And yes. All right, so now we're going to install NVM using curl, and I'm going to paste this command in. All right. Now we need to source our profile, but before we can do that, um, we have to go to, uh, while you're in your terminal, profile preferences, 
and let's see, title and command, and then we want to run this command as a login shell. All right, so you want to choose that, close, and then we're going to just restart the terminal. All right, and then we're going to go ahead and source profile. And now we can uh, check and see if NVM is installed, uh, which we have to do NVM version. Okay, so uh, the latest version is 0.26.1 at this time. All right, so now we need to install Node. So let's say NVM, uh, NVM LS Remote uh, LS. And that's going to give us all the versions of Node. Let's see if we go up here and down to right here. So 0.12.7 is what we want at this time. Obviously yours may be different. So to install that, we're going to say uh, nvm install uh, nvm install 0.12.7 and that will go ahead and install it. All right, and let's make sure that we're using that version. So we can say nvm use 0.12.7. All right, so now it's installed and we're using it. And also npm should be installed. Okay, version 2.11.3 at this time. And we should be good to go. Now if you had any issues, uh, there's, there's a few other ways to install Node. Just do a Google search uh, for whatever operating system you're using. If you are using Linux, then I'm guessing you, you already know how to do this anyways. So let's clear this, and what I'm going to do is go into my projects directory, and we're going to create a new folder for this project. All right, so let's say make directory uh, catalog API. All right, and then we want to go into that directory. Now, if you haven't used Node before, or NPM, uh, NPM stands for Node Package Modules, and uh, it's the it's the package manager for Node. So it has just a, a ton of modules or um, packages, whatever you want to call them, that add different types of functionality to your application. And Express is one of those packages or one of those modules. So we have to install it. All right. So to install it, we'll say NPM install express all right so that's gonna go ahead and install and if we look at the folder it we now have a node modules folder okay we didn't have that before and if we look inside we see an express folder that contains everything to do with express all right we don't have to touch any of this it's just there we, we, you'll very rarely touch anything inside of the node modules folder all right. Now, when using Node.js, you need to have a manifest file called package.json. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and create that. So save as package.json. All right, and this is basically like a manifest. It's going to hold like our application name, the version, uh, and most importantly, it's going to hold all the all the dependencies that are needed for this application. Okay, so all the modules that are needed. Express is obviously one of them, and we'll have a couple more. All right, so we want to open up some curly braces here, and we want the name of our application, uh, which is going to be just catalog API. And then we'll have the version, which will be 1.0.0. .0. 0 .0. And then we need our dependencies, uh, which should be in quotes. All right, so this is an object itself with all the different dependencies. We have Express. And if you don't know the, the version um, off the top of your head, you could just use an asterisk, and that that basically means it's the latest version. All right, um, now we're also going to need something called body parser. 
Oops. And what this does is it, it'll it'll allow you to process forms from post requests. All right. So if we submit a form, we can grab the fields out of the body. So we want that. And then we'll need a way to uh, interact with MongoDB. There's a lot of different modules that you could use. Uh, in this case, we're going to use something called MongoJS. All right. And MongoJS is probably the closest to actually using the Mongo shell. All right. And actually, that's it. Yeah, that's all we're going to need for dependencies. All right. And then we can put the author. And feel free to put your own name. And that's it. So we'll save that. Now, even though we're using MongoJS body parser is a core, I believe is a core module. We don't have to explicitly install that, uh, but we do MongoJS. So we could say npm install MongoJS, but since we put it in our dependencies, we, all we have to do is say npm install and it'll install whatever we have in our dependencies. All right, so now if we look in node modules, we now have body parser and MongoJS. Now we're going to need a, a, a main JavaScript file that's used as, I guess you could call it the application's gateway file. All right, so let's go ahead and create that. And we're going to call that app.js. All right, which is very common to name it. Uh, a lot of developers will name it index.js, um, server.js, something like that. And there's only a couple lines that we have to actually put in here for Express to actually work to run. All right, so we have to require it. So we're going to create a variable called Express. And this is all just JavaScript code. And we just want to require Express. All right, and then we're going to need a variable to initialize it. So we're going to say var app equals express. Oops, no R. OK, now we need to define a route. All right, so to define a route, we can say app dot get and then the route. In this case, let's just do the, the landing page or the home page, which is just a slash. All right, and then we're going to say function. And then this takes in a request and a response object. And then we can choose what we want to do with that with this get request. And you'll see that it's app.get because it's a get request. If it was a post, then it would be app.post. If it was an update or a put, it would be app.put. And if it was to delete, we do app.delete. All right, so we'll be doing all of those. But for now, let's just say res.send. And what this does, it'll just send text to the browser. So we'll just say it works. All right, now before we can actually run it, we're going to have to, um, we're going to have to make the application listen on the server. So we're going to say app.listen, and we have to put in a port. Usually uh, with Express, you see port, port 3000 a lot, but it could be any other thing, any other port that's not being used. Um, and then we'll just do a console log. We'll just say um, server started. Actually, let's say server is running on port 3000. All right, so now to run this, we'll go to our directory, catalog API, and just say node app. All right, now the reason I wrote app is because that's what we call this file, app.js. You could also do node app.js, um, but that's fine. So now if we go to our browser, and we should now be able to go to localhost port 3000 and it works. All right, so we now have an express server up and running. 
it doesn't do anything except say it works but it is working it is up and running so in the next video we'll create some other routes and we'll implement MongoJS so that we can actually talk to our database and um, insert data read data all of that all right so I'll see you in the next video hey guys welcome back in the last video we installed node.js and set up express and then we went ahead and set up an app.js file with a, a route to the home page and we, so we sent a response from a get request that just says it works all right now this doesn't do much but it is in fact an API that we can request data from all right so what we want to do now is I want to create I want to model the data that we're going to be using and this is going to be a catalog of different products all right so I'm going to use the Best Buy site as an example of the type of uh, information that I want to store in our database so let's go ahead and stop the server with control C and I'm going to open up a new file just a blank file and we're going to model the data structure that we want to use all right and it doesn't have to be one particular structure um, for instance we may have different kinds of products and um, as an example we have the Microsoft Surface tablet here and if we go to specific specifications um, and you go down here you can see battery life display type now if this was let's say a, a, a dresser it's not going to have a battery life specification and this is where NoSQL comes in extremely handy and you can just have different fields a whole different structure um, for something that's in the same collection alright so let's go ahead and just model out the data for something like this for Microsoft Surface all right, so we'll even put the query in here. We'll say db, because we're actually going to run this. So db.products.insert. Um, All right, and we'll have a name. So Microsoft Surface. And let's see, what else do we have here? Let's do a category. Will be electronics. All right, and then let's see. Let's get the model number. And the SKU number. Now let's add an image so an image would be in I mean you can store images in MongoDB uh, using GridFS and we will do that and we'll, we'll look into that later in, a, in another project but for now let's just make up some kind of URL that has has the image to this product product so it'd be like some websites dot com slash some image dot jpeg all right, and then maybe we'd have, or we would have a price. We'll say, actually, the price we'll do as an integer because we may want to do, uh, do some math operations on it. Uh, let's see, pick up available. Okay, this would be a Boolean. We'll say true. Uh, and description. Okay, so description, let's grab this. All right, and we'll do a release date. Okay, now for the format for this, we're gonna use an ISO date. So we'll say ISO date, and then we need to pass in the actual date which will say 2015 09 01 all right now let's do something different 
other than just a single value let's do an, ob an embedded object all right so let's say we want specifications okay so that'll be its own object all right so we'll get height uh, 7.36 inches and we'll get weight which and you can see this the website has all this stuff so there's a very good chance that their data looks exactly like this all right so height 7 weight is 2192 ounces and let's do uh, width what else do they have in specifications uh, let's see battery life is 10 hours and let's see display type LCD SD LCD and let's see what else let's do touch screen okay touch screen will be actually that'll be a boolean we'll say true and memory let's say two gigabytes what else? Uh, processor type is Intel. I think that's good for uh, for the specs. All right. So after the specs, let's do reviews. Okay. So reviews, we know there's going to be more than one set. So we're going to put this in an array. So to have an array, we need to open up some square brackets. And then inside there, we'll have each review. All right, so this review, let's say name. Actually, we'll do subject. Let's say great tablet. And then we'll have the uh, review body. And I'm just going to grab that. right here grab that so that's the body let's also do uh, a number rating so for a rating let's say 4.5 uh, the user okay that would be determined by your application so for we'll just say some user 01 and then the date of the review so that also is an ISO date and let's do a would recommend and that'll be a boolean okay so that's one review then we could just copy that another and we'll change this up a little bit let's say mixed review I think I saw that somewhere right here and we'll give them a 4.0 some user 2 we'll change the date and let's say false for would recommend and then this one we'll say good deal and I'll 
be some user three. All right, so we have three reviews for this project. And for the last field, for now, let's say protection services. Okay, so the, the services that are available with this, and we're gonna put these in an array. So we'll say damage, oops. We'll say damage, uh, battery, and power. I have no idea what that means, I'm just making them up. All right, so this is, a, is our model for the products collection. Now, it's not a hard-coded schema. We don't need these exact fields for our every product. Um, and again, that's what's great about MongoDB and any um, non-relational database. So let's copy that and see if we can actually add that. All right, so we want to go. We're going to want to um, log into our Mongo shell, and let's say show DBs. So let's create a new database. We'll say use uh, use catalog, and we want a products. Actually, you know what? We don't have to explicitly uh, create the products collection. We could just run our query. All right, since we're saying db.products, it'll automatically create that collection. All right, so we got an inserted one. So now if we say db.products.find.pretty, gives it back to us. All right, so we have that data now in MongoDB. And ultimately, we want to make that data available through our API. So now I'm going to enter something else. And let's take a look. And let's do, let's do a cell phone. We'll do the Samsung Galaxy. Grab this. All right, so um, I doubt you want to sit here and watch me put all this information in again. So I'm going to do that and I'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead and entered all the Galaxy information here. And you can see that most of the base fields are the same, um, you know, name, category, model. But then under sp uh, specifications, we have things like battery, li actually, no, we had battery life, uh, wireless technology unlocked if the phone has no contract, if it has LTE, all right, so there doesn't have to be a hard-coded schema whatsoever. All right, so let's go ahead and add this. I'm just going to copy it, and we should be able to just paste it right in. Uh, looks like we got a syntax error. Um, you know what, let me try that again. Clear it out. There we go. All right, so now if we do a find, and you can see we have both the Galaxy and the Surface. All right, so let's do a control C and get out of the Mongo shell, and let's run our app. And what we want to be able to do is we want to send a get request to slash products. All right, and you can see we get this cannot get products. That's because we didn't define this route yet. So if we go back and go into app.js and just copy this right here and change that to products. And then just to see if it works, we'll just say products works. Restart the application and we get products works. All right. Now, to be able to deal with the database and fetch data, we need to implement some kind of um, database mapper. And we're going to be using MongoJS, so we have to acquire it. So this will just say require and then MongoJS. All right, then we need, um, we need to create a database object. So we'll say var db 
and that's going to equal MongoJS. And we need to pass in two things. First, we need the name of our database, which is catalog. Then we need an array of the um, collections that we want to work with. In our case, it's just products. All right, so now we can go back down here to the products route. And let's first just do a console log. And we'll just say, uh, let's say, fetching products. You don't have to do this. It's just, I like to do it during development. Just shows what stage we're at. All right, so now what we want to do is we want that DB variable that we have. We want to say DB dot products and we can basically use this how we do in the shell db dot products dot find all right and then inside of this find we want to put a callback function all right and that's going to take in an error and then something to rep represent the documents returned so usually we do something like docs all right so before we do anything, let's check for an error. And then if there is one, let's just send it. res.send error. All right, now if there's not, then let's first console log. And we'll just say sending data or sending products. All right, and then to send the JSON, we can do res.json, and we just want to pass in docs. All right, so let's save that, and then we have to restart the app, and then let's reload products, and we get JSON formatted products. You can see up here we have the Microsoft Surface, and then where does it end? Right here we have the Galaxy S S6. All right, so that's returning it. Now, to make an, uh, a get request with REST easy is very simple. Just make sure that this is in get, and then just put in the URL. So um, localhost port 3000 slash products send. And this gives us, this tells us what kind of response we're getting, which is 200, which means OK. It's telling us um, what our API is powered by, which is Express. It's giving us the content type, which is JSON, uh, the length, e tag, and the, the date string. All right, so that's how we can make a GET request and how we can provide a GET, uh, get response. All right, so we know how to get a list of all of our products by getting this making this get request to this route here but what if we want to just get one product a specific product we're gonna to have to create another route for that so let's copy this okay and what we're gonna do is we're gonna to add to this slash products we're gonna add slash and then colon ID alright and this is gonna represent the ID of the product alright so let's go down here we'll change that to fetching product and then we're going to call db.products.find1. All right. Um, and then we need to pass in here our query. Okay. So we're going to put the first parameter here is going to be surrounded in curly braces. And what we're going to do is we're going to say we want the underscore ID field to match the ID. Now we can't just put in, uh, what is it, request dot params dot ID all right so this here request params ID is going to get whatever is right here but these are object IDs so we just have to surround this with mongojs dot object ID like that so let me make this a little wider okay so object ID it's going to wrap around that and that should be good. And then we're going to just change this right here, docs. We're going to change that to doc because it's only um, it's a single document. And then down here, 
we'll say sending product and we want to respond uh, res.json doc. So we'll save that and restart the server. And then what I'm going to do is just grab this ID right here. Okay, this is the Microsoft Surface. And then we're going to go here and just say slash and then the ID. All right, and now you can see that it gave us back only the Surface and all its info. And we got a 200 response. So that takes care of making a GET request to get all products and a single product. Uh, in the next video, I want to look at making POST requests so that we can actually add products. Um, now, knowing how to do this, how, how, how to make a RESTful API like this, you can work with uh, a lot of different types of programming languages and still use this database. So it's, it's a really good skill to know how to do something like this. I know we're not doing much by just making requests through this application here, but um, you know this could be the back end to, to pretty much any kind of um, any kind of application that you want to develop a front end for. All right, so uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, in the last video we set our set up our data model and we set it up so that we could take get requests and we would return the products and also so we could return a single product. All right, now we're gonna take a look at post requests, which is different than a get request because you're actually posting data to the server, to the application. So that's what we're gonna do. And before we can actually create our route, we need to uh, add a module called body parser. All right, um, it, I, it is a core module, we just need to require it. So we're gonna go up here and we're going to say uh, var body parser and we're going to set it to require body and this is body dash parser all right and then the middleware is really simple we're just going to say app dot use and in here we're going to put in that uh, body parser variable and we want to say dot json because that's what we're dealing with okay so we'll save that now we can make we can now create the route all right now it's not going to be app dot get it's going to be app dot post all right so we're going to say app dot post and it'll be formatted the same way and we're going to make a post request to products all right now you'll notice that this is the same URL as this and that's fine because they're different types of requests all right we could also make a put request to products we can make a delete request as long as it's a different type of request it's not gonna it's not gonna get confused or anything like that all right so let's say function and that'll take the request and response object all right, now we're going to use uh, D, we're going to use insert. All right, just like we would in the Mongo shell, we're going to say db dot products dot insert. All right, and then we're going to pass in here uh, request dot body. All right, and then we'll have our function, and that will take an error and a document. And then here we can just copy this right here. Okay, so it's very similar. All right, and then we'll change this to adding product. And you don't need to have these console logs right here if you don't want. All right, and then we'll just send the document back and it should be good. So let's save that. Now we'll go to rest easy and we're gonna make this time a post request and it's going to be to http slash uh, slash slash localhost port 3000 and we want slash products and before we do this let's go ahead and just restart the server all right now we can't just send it well we could but we're not actually sending any data so what we're going to do is go down to data and this is a JSON API, so it's not going to be through a form. We're going to do custom, and then the MIME type is going to be 
application slash JSON. All right, and then we can do our thing here. So we want, whoops, we want a name. All right, and I have a um, page open here for a Sony PlayStation. So we're going to just grab that. All right, and then we want the category. Okay, category will be electronics. And then we'll have a model. Which I'll grab right here. All right, and then we'll have uh, the SKU. Okay, let's do a, I think, description we had. Okay, so I'll just go down here and grab this. Description, what else? Let's do price, which is $3.99. All right. Okay, that looks good. And then let's do a couple specifications here. So we'll do height all right remember we're doing specifications as a um, embedded ad, embedded document so we're gonna do this all right and then we'll say height and weight All right, and that's fine. I don't want we don't need to add every single field that we did with the others. All right, so that looks good. Let's just let me just copy this just in case something goes wrong and we need it again. And post looks good. All right, so let's go ahead and send that. Okay, we got a 200 response, which is good. And then we'll go to raw, and that's going to give us what we just gave the server, okay? What we just posted. All right, and now if we go back to this page and reload, you can now see that we have the, the name, Sony PlayStation 4, we have the model, the category, all the information we just added. All right, so it's as easy as that. So no matter what programming language you're using, as long as you can make HTTP requests, then you can use this database. You can add products or, or whatever you'd like to do with it. So now what I'd like to do is make a put request. And put is used for updating data. So if we want to change anything here. All right, so let's go back to app.js. And let's go right under post. I'm going to just copy this. And we're going to change this to app.put. Now, just like we did with the right here products ID, we're going to need to add the ID. Okay, so we're going to say slash ID. All right, and then down here, let's see, we're going to do db.products, and then we're going to do dot find and modify. So we want find and modify. All right, and then we're going to pass in a query. Okay, so this is going to go like this. We'll say query, and then we want the ID, underscore ID, and we'll say Mongo, 
mongojs dot object ID and then we want to surround request dot params dot ID which is going to come from the URL all right so let's see that ends there now when we're doing an update it's it's a little different because we're gonna we're gonna provide specific fields in our post we didn't which you probably would in a in a production backend or database like this um, for security reasons if nothing else uh, so what we're gonna do is we'll just we'll take a couple fields and we'll we'll add them all right so let's see we're gonna have to go right after uh, we're gonna go right after this ending curly brace which is right after that the quick query all right and let's go down here make this a little easier to read all right and then we're gonna say update okay so we have a query and then we have an update all right and we're gonna say set and let's do uh, we'll do name is it name or title yeah name so name is going to be equal to request dot body dot name and let's do what else category and we'll say description So we should be able to update these. And then if we go right here, put a comma, this is gonna be the options parameter. Uh, one parameter I wanna set is new. I'm gonna set that to true. And basically if what it's gonna do is if it doesn't find this particular product, then it's going to add it. It's gonna do an insert. All right, so that's what that does. And then the rest of this is pretty much okay. We'll change this to updating updating product and let's save okay so we'll go and we'll restart let's reload this okay and we're going to make a put request so local host 3000 slash products slash and then I'm going to grab let's do let's do the um, PlayStation the one we just added so I'm going to grab this right here that there all right and then We're going to do custom again and application slash JSON and let's just change the name. Okay, so we'll say name and we'll change it to just PlayStation 4. Okay, so I think that's all we need. Let's go ahead and send that. We got back a 200 OK. And if we look at the data, you can see name PlayStation 4. All right, and if we go back here and reload, there we are, PlayStation 4. All right, so up to this point, we've, we've fetched data, we've posted it, we've updated it, so now delete. Now, the, request, the, um, the route that we're gonna create for delete is very similar to uh, let's see this get request right here as far as um, what we're gonna pass in you know we need the ID from the URL we're gonna pass that into dot remove and it'll delete now if you want to do a delete request which is what you should do so that would be app dot delete um, but I don't think that rest easy I don't think that this is it'll let us delete it this way 
Um, so you would have to have a, a more secure way of doing this through some kind of Ajax request or uh, whatever it may be. So we're going to set up the server side of it, but we're not going to bother with creating an application to actually delete. Uh, but I will show you that you can also use post um, for deleting as well, but it's not as secure. All right, so let me show you. Let's copy this right here. All right, and then we're going to change this to delete. And this is the same, and then we're going to change find one to remove. Okay, and then that's the same. We're getting the ID, passing it in. And here we'll say removing product. All right, so that's a delete request. Now, if we go to rest easy, reload, and let's grab an ID, let's say the surface. And we'll say, um, let's change this to delete. And then uh, local host 3000 slash products slash and then the ID. All right, and if we try to do that, oh, okay, so let's check the response here. Oh, it did do it, okay. For some reason I thought that it wouldn't, but I guess it does, so all right. So there we have it. We've done uh, full CRUD functionality here on our products. And this is how you can create a, a, a data API with JSON. Um, and it's really powerful. You could do this as a back end and then you can you could build your front end in basically whatever kind of programming language you wanna use. Um, so it's really helpful to know how to do this. Okay, so that's it for this project. I will see you in the next one. Welcome to chapter three, project three. In this project, we're gonna be building a task manager application which uses jQuery along with the MongoLab data API. All right, so MongoLab is a third-party service that offers MongoDB uh, as a service, as a paid service, but you can also create a free account, which is what we'll be doing. And we can create uh, remote Mongo, MongoDB databases and connect to it through its own API. All right, so it includes a RESTful interface where we can make GET requests, POST requests, update and delete. All right, so we'll be able to create tasks and categories as well as update and delete them. So the project sections, we have the intro, section two will uh, sign up and set up MongoLab. Section three will be able to get and add categories. Section four will focus, focus on put and delete so we can edit and delete categories. And then section five will be doing uh, CRUD functionality for all the tasks. So you'll learn how to set up and sign up with MongoLab, how to make Ajax requests using jQuery, and that'll allow us to, to interact and make requests to the MongoLab data API. And you'll also learn how to return data and display it in your HTML web app. Okay, so that's about it for the summary of this project. Let's go ahead and get started. Hello, and welcome to your next project. In this chapter, we're going to be building a task manager and we're going to use a remote MongoDB service as opposed to running it locally on our machine. All right, and the service we're going to use is called MongoLab. And there's a few other ones. There's MongoHQ and um, I can't remember the names of the other ones, but there's, there's, a, there's a bunch of them. And uh, most of them offer a free plan, all right, for usually for development purposes, or maybe just a very, very small production database. Um, now, what you're gonna wanna do is go to mongolab.com and click on sign up, go through the process. I already have an account, but it's really self-explanatory. Uh, just register. Once you register, you wanna log in. And once you log in, you'll see this interface. Okay, so what this is down here is these are my MongoDB databases, my deployments. All right, I have one called City Search, 
and then one called Task Manager, which is actually the app we're building now. Um, obviously, I had to have it as as a development version. But what we're going to do is create, excuse me, we're going to create a new one from scratch. I'm, I need to call it something else, but uh, it'll be for our Task Manager app. Okay, so we have some options here. Uh, create from backup, clone existing, and create new. Let me just make this a little wider. All right, so what we're going to want to do is create a new database. Okay, so there's a couple different providers as far as data storage. We have Amazon Web Services, Google Cloud, and Windows Azure. All right, we're going to um, keep the default, which is Amazon Web Services. All right, and you shouldn't need to actually create an Amazon account or anything like that. It's just where it's stored, and you can choose a location as well. All right, now plans, this is where we need to select um, our plan. Now these here, uh, these go by the amount of storage. You have uh, SSD drives with different amounts of storage and different prices. What we're gonna do is click on single node, and you can see that here the sandbox package, it's uh, 0 0.5 gigabyte shared, is free. All right, now this is obviously something that you wouldn't run um, on a production database with a production app. It's just for development purposes, really. All right, so make sure that we choose that. And then we need to name our database. So I'm going to call this Task Manager 2, since I already have one called Task Manager. And you can see price is $0 a month. All right, so we're going to create that takes a second to set up okay and now you can see that task manager 2 is now available down here the size is 0 kilobytes alright if we click on that it's gonna open up the interface and what we have up here is it shows you different ways to connect this is how you would connect through the shell alright using your username your user and database password which we, we don't have yet um, I will create that in a minute and also how to connect using a driver using a standard URI all right now down here we have our collections which we don't have any because we haven't created any yet but before we create a collection we're gonna add a user okay so if we click on users and then click on add database user let's go ahead and add one and you have the option to make this user read only so that they can't um, insert or update or delete anything okay we're not going to check that and we're going to click create and now we have one user for this database all right now if we click on collections we can add collections from here now with when you're building an application usually you don't have to go and manually add the collection from here you can have it set up from the application but we're gonna go ahead and do it just so I can show you alright so if we click add collection we're gonna have two collections in this database we're gonna have tasks and we're gonna have categories alright so the first one will say categories create and there it is okay we'll create the other one which is gonna be tasks All right, so now that we have our collections, we can actually add data to it from here. So if we click on categories, and then we can click on add document, and we get this interface, and we can just add JSON straight from here. So let's go ahead and just add a name. Okay, because an ID is going to automatically be, be generated, um, just like if we were using a local MongoDB. Um, so all we want besides the ID is the category name. Okay, so we'll say category name, and let's call this category work. Okay, so if we say create and go back, now you can see that we have a record here with an ID that was generated, as well as the category name of work. All right, so let's create another one. So let's say category name 
and family. All right, so now we have two documents in the categories collection. All right, and I wanted to add those because when we build our application, um, I want to be able to list them before actually making the, the functionality to add them. All right, so now let's talk about what we're going to do for the web application. All right, so for this particular project, we're going to just use straight JavaScript and jQuery. And it's going to be all on the client side. And what we're going to do is just send Ajax requests to the MongoLab RESTful API in order to perform CRUD operations to add, um, create, read, update, and delete tasks. All right, because there's a nice RESTful API that comes with MongoLab. All right, and let me see if I can find some of the documentation. Okay, so MongoLab Data API. All right, this is where you want to look for um, any information to do with this API. There's a lot of lot of good information. All right, so we're going to need an API key, and tells us how to do that. And then down here, we're going to use now when we use RESTful routes, everything is done through the URL. All right, so the base URL is api.mongolab.com slash api slash one all right and what we can do is let's see to list databases here's an example um, we want to say slash databases and then we can put in our api key and that's going to show us a list of all the databases um, to list collections we just want to make a get request like this data database slash collections so we would have the name of the database here and then the collection and then have our API key and that would return all the collections to list a document we're gonna say slash data whatever the database is slash collection slash and then the, the column or the document um, so there's a bunch more here to create a collection we're gonna make a post request to slash collections and then the collection name uh, let's see, you can insert multiple documents. It's, so you can see there's a lot of different options we have, update and delete. All right, so that's what we'll be doing for this project. So no data, no uh, MongoDB data is gonna be on our local machine. It's gonna all be on this remote MongoLab service. So what to do now, let's just create the folder and we'll create some of the files. Okay, so in my projects folder, I'm going to create a new one called task manager. And we're going to be using bootstrap for the interface. So let's create our CSS folder, a JavaScript folder. Let's create an index HTML page. All right, and now we'll go to get bootstrap. Okay, so we'll download, and this is bootstrap three, by the way. I know four is coming out any day. All right, so let's open that up and we're just gonna bring over the CSS file. Right, and we want the JavaScript file. And let's also put the, the fonts folder over as well. All right. So we're gonna need a few different HTML pages. So we might as well create those now, get it out of the way. All right, so let's see, we're gonna have a page for um, Let's see, for categories, so categories.html, we're going to need a page to add categories, so we'll, we'll need a form, so we'll say add category, we're going to need um, an edit category page. 
Okay, we're gonna need what else? We're gonna need an add task page. An edit task. And I think that's it. Yeah, that should do it. All right, so those are our application files. And I'm gonna add it to, I'm gonna add the folder to Sublime Text. So let's see, projects is in my C drive. All right, so let's go ahead and just create the main, just the, the, the HTML tags and all that. So we'll say doc type, uh, let's use an exclamation mark. Okay, we're using HTML5. Now this is, this, app, this is a client side application and we're only gonna be using JavaScript and jQuery. So uh, we're not gonna use any kind of view engine or anything. So we will have to put these tags on every page, but there aren't that many pages. And you know, it's small enough where we can do that. All right, so body, let's put title. And for this, we'll just say task manager and welcome. And for now, let's say this is index. Oops. All right, and we'll open that in the browser. All right, so um, I, I think that's a good place to stop because we're going to, in the next video, set up the rest of the, the look of our application and bootstrap and all that. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. All right, guys, so now that we have the interface, all the HTML and all that out of the way, now we can move on to the fun part. All right, so we're going to now deal with jo our JavaScript and jQuery to make requests to Mongo Lab to the database uh, to grab the items and bring them into our app. All right. So I want to start with the categories because we already have a couple categories in there that we added through Mongo Lab. So I just want to be able to display those categories here. All right. Now for that to happen, we're going to have to run a function when we're on this page. And the way we can do that is if we go to categories.html and we go to the body tag we can say on load equals and then we'll say get categories okay so we'll create this function and it'll run whenever this page loads all right so if we go to main.js um, we can say function get categories all right now just to make sure that it's actually connected and it'll load let's just do an alert one and if we reload we get our alert all right so we know that it's connected and working now we have to make a get request to fetch all the categories from that collection and to do that we can use jQuery's get method all right, now before we can do this, we need to get our API key, okay? And we can do that in MongoLab if you go and click on your username up here in the right, and then go down, you have a section with your API key. All right, now I don't mind mine being shown because I'm just gonna regenerate a new one, but I'm gonna copy that, and then I'm gonna put it up here in a variable so we can access it whenever we want. All right, now as for the URL that we need to make the request, we can get that in the documentation here. If we go down 
and what we want is to list documents okay we want all the category documents from the categories collection so let's grab this right here this URI and put it right here uh, but we're going to change a couple things one is the, the database we're going to change this to task manager 2 or whatever you named yours and then right here for my collection this is going to be categories and then the API key get rid of that and what I, what we can do is just concatenate on the key vari variable all right then the get request this function is going to take in a, a second parameter which is the callback so we're going to say function and that function is going to take a data variable or a data parameter all right and then down here what we're going to do is we need to build up our list item and output it with the categories so let's create a, a variable called output and we'll set it to our ul okay because if you remember we just have if we look at the categories page all we have is a div with the id of categories and actually this the ul is going to be in our in our javascript so we can get rid of that all right so now if we go back and we want to put that here ul class is going to be uh, list group Okay, so it's just the opening UL tag. Now for the list items, for the LI, we're gonna have to loop through the categories. So one way we can do that is with the each loop. Okay, so we'll say each, and then we're gonna pass in, um, we're gonna pass in key, I'm sorry, we're gonna pass in the uh, data, and then the callback, is going to have key and data and I didn't realize that but since this is going to be key we, won't, we don't want this variable to be named key let's call this let's call it API underscore key and then just change it over here all right so now what we want to do is from inside this loop, we want to um, add on to the output variable. We want to append to it. And this, this actually shouldn't be here, these two curly braces. It should just be like that. All right, so as I was saying, we're going to append to it. So we're going to say output, we're going to take that variable and we're going to say plus equals which is it's going to make it so that it doesn't replace what we did up here but it adds on to it and what we want to add on is the list item so li and we're going to give it a class of list group item whoops list group item and i'm also going to give it a class of category all right and then let's see that's going to end right here. So that's the li, that's the opening li. And then we're going to concatenate a new line. So I'm going to put a plus here. And let's do data.name. Okay, so this is going to get the category name. And then we're going to concatenate. Actually, just for now, let's just have that. I do want to put a button next to it to edit the category but for now let's just get the category all right so we should be able to now go to the next line and we want the closing li all right and then down here we're going to say output and we then want to just append the ending uh, ul tag Alright, 
so now this output variable holds everything. It, ha it has the UL, it has all the LIs with the categories. Um, so we need to add that on to our div. So we're going to say, we're going to use jQuery to get the uh, categories ID. And I'm going to say dot HTML. And we want to put in the output. All right, so we'll save that. Let's open up our console in case we get any errors. All right, so output is not defined. Okay, so let's see, 13 outputs not defined, and that's because we spelled it wrong. Okay, so we're getting undefined. It is, in fact, seeing the categories because we have two, so we know that it is seeing the two categories, but what we're putting out isn't correct so and I think it's because this should be category name there we go work and family alright so it's reading our categories let's go ahead and put a line break under that button so let's see categories dot HTML and we want to go right here that Maybe two of them. There we go. All right. So now what I want is I want to have an edit and a delete button next to the category name. So let's go back to main.js and right here where we have data.category name, we're going to want to add on to this. So right here, let's put in some quotes. And we want a div. We want the buttons to be f to float to the right, so we can use the Bootstrap class pull right. All right, and then let's see. So that'll be that. And then inside that, we're going to want the buttons. So we'll do a class. Oops. A class equals and we'll do BTN BTN primary all right and let's add actually another class BTN edit category all right and then we're gonna need a way to pass the ID to um, to the add category function uh, I'm sorry the edit category function so to do that we're going to use a data attribute so we're going to say after after the class we're going to do data category ID okay and we're going to set that now we can get the ID with the um, if we look in here, actually we don't have any. I can show you one from the other task manager database because we don't have any task yet. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It has an I, it's an underscore ID and then this dollar sign OID. Okay, that'll give us the object ID. So let's go right here and we're going to want to concatenate. So single quotes and then plus signs. And then we can say data dot underscore ID and then dot dollar sign OID. Okay, that's gonna give us the ID for the current category. All right. And then for the text, we want it to just say edit. So that should give us an edit button. Let's check it out. All right. Now to fix that issue with it being flush with the bottom, uh, we can just add a style. And we're just going to say li. And let's see, we want to say overflow auto. Let's also, um, let's make the font size. 
we'll say uh, font size 18 pixels. There we go. Okay, if we click edit, it's not going to do anything because we don't actually have an href. We're going to handle that within jQuery. All right, so now we need a delete button next to it. So let's go back. I know it's a little hard to read with all this, with all the um, switching from string to JavaScript, but uh, try to bear with me. Now we can pretty much copy this whole edit link. Okay, so the whole A tag. Okay, we'll copy that. And then right after the ending A tag, we'll do a space and then paste it in. And then we're going to change this to delete. Okay, data ID, that's good. We want to change what else? This right here, where is it? Button edit category. We're going to change to button delete category. And then change from button primary to button danger. Okay, so that'll give us this red delete button. Okay, so now that we have our categories listed, we're not going to do the edit and delete functionality in this video. What I do want to do is I want to be able to add a category. All right, so to do that, we're going to have to create an event for when we submit this form to uh, make a post request to the API to add a category. All right, so let's add an event. <clears throat> so we're going to go up at the top here. And we have to do this uh, after the document loads. So using jQuery, we're going to say document.ready. And then we're going to put in a function. Okay, so let's see what the uh, add category.html. We have our form with the ID of add category. So let's grab that. So add category dot submit. Okay, so when that form submits, we're going to run a function. Actually, you know what we're going to do is not make this a self calling function. We're going to run a function called add category. All right, and then we'll put that down here. And let's just test it out. Say submitted. All right, so we know that it's linked, it's working. So to add a category, we're going to need the name, which comes from that input. All right, so where is it? We want to be in add category HTML, and we have an input. The name is category name. All right, so let's create a variable and we'll call this category name. And the way you can grab it is through jQuery. Okay, the ID category name. And that's not going to work by itself. We have to say dot val. Okay, that'll give us the value. Now we're going to make an Ajax post request. So for this, we're going to use the Ajax method. All right, so we're going to say Ajax, and then we're going to pass in the URL. All right, now for this URL, let's go to the documentation. And let's we want to insert a document and this is the URL right here and this this example that is actually extremely close to what we're doing all right so URL paste that in we're going to use the API key we have All 
right? Um, the collection categories and the database task manager 2. All right. And then after that, we're going to put a comma. And then we have the data. And we're going to say JSON dot stringify because we want this to be a string. And we'll pass in so this should be category name category name all right next is going to be the type and the type is going to be a post okay and let's set the content type which is going to be set to application slash json all right, then we have the success callback. Okay, so this is what happens if it succeeds. We're going to pass in the data. And then we're just going to redirect. So window dot location dot href is going to be categories dot html all right and then the error okay if it if it's an error func function and we're going to pass in a couple things here it's xhr status and the error itself and all we're going to do here is console log. All right, and then down here we just want to return false because if we don't do that, then the form is going to try to actually submit. All right, so let's save that. And I just want to see something real quick. All right, I just wanted to see if this was category name or just name. All right, so that should match this right here. All right, so let's save that and let's try that. Okay, so we'll go to add category. Okay, what do we have? Family, work, let's say, I don't know, hobby. And there we go. So we made the post request, everything went Okay, and it was added. If we reload, it's still there. And if we go to our Mongo Lab backend and reload, you can see it's right here. ID was created and it was entered. All right, so I think that will stop here. And in the next video, we'll make it so that we can um, edit these categories and delete them. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, in the last video, we made it so that we could list categories using the um, Mongo Lab API, and we could also add them. Okay, so now we need to focus on being able to edit them and delete them. All right, so with the edit, there's basically two parts. The first part is when we click on this, what we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna get the name, the category name, which is work, as well as the ID and we want to store those in session variables and then we want to load the edit form and then put those variables those values into the form for us all right and then the second part is to actually submit it make an um a request to the to the api and update it all right so let's do um, what we need to do is, is we need a click event for this edit button all right now these buttons have a class of button edit category, but where there's a bunch of them and they all have the same class name, we have to do this a little differently. So we have to get first a parent object 
for of those um, buttons. So let's say body, because we know body is the parent of everything. All right, and then we're going to say uh, dot on instead of dot click. We're going to say dot on click. All right, and then we need the actual class of the button or the button identifier, which is in this case, uh, it's a class. It's btn dash edit dash category. All right, and then finally we want the function, which is going to be called set category. All right, so now we need to go down and create that. So function set category. So first thing uh, we're going to want to get the ID. All right, so let's say var category ID and since we have the ID on our link, and let me just show you that. Uh, where is it? Right here. Data category ID. We're actually attaching the ID to. All right, so we can access that in this function. All right. Um, and we can do that with this. Since it's on the actual thing that we clicked, we can use this. So we can say this dot data, which is what grabs data attributes, and then category ID. All right, and let's just test this out. So we'll say alert category ID. Okay, so now you can see that it's alerting whatever that particular category ID is that I'm clicking. All right, so, so far so good. Next thing we want to do is we want to set the session item. So to do that, we can say session, um, session storage dot set item. All right, and if you've ever used HTML5's local storage, this, is, this works the exact same way, except it, it closes in the session. When you end the session, it goes away. Local, local storage will stay there until you actually clear it. All right, so we want to set item and let's name this uh, current category ID. And of course we want category underscore ID. So that'll set it. Then we need to redirect to the form. So we'll say window dot location dot href and we want to go to the form, which is edit category dot HTML. All right, and then we just want to return false. And that should set it. Actually, I'm sorry, that's not it's going to set it in the session, but it's not going to set it in the form yet. What we have to do is go to the edit page now, edit category HTML, and then in the body, we're going to say on load, we want to get category. All right. So this function is going to look at the session, the session variable that we just created and then put it in the form. All right. So let's create that. So right underneath, we'll say function get category. And then we'll create a variable category ID is going to be equal to session storage. Actually, we want to say session storage dot get item. And that's going to be current category ID. That should be an uppercase I, by the way. All right. So let's see, let's move that down. So now what we want to do is we want to go to the API and we want to get that category. All right, so again, we'll use the get method. So we'll do dot get, all right, and then we need the URL. So let's look up here. This is where we got all categories, so let's get let's get this. And put it in here. 
All right, now this URL is, is gonna get all categories. We don't want that. We wanna get a, a specific one by its ID. So we're gonna go right after categories and do a slash and then just add in, uh, we wanna concatenate our category ID. Just like that. All right, so now it's getting a specific category, not all of them. All right, and then the second parameter is gonna be the function. Actually, this needs to, let's see, it ends there, API key, there we go. All right, and then this function, we'll put in data. Okay, and what we want to do is just add the category name to that form. All right, so I'm sorry, that input. So the input has an ID of category name. So we'll say category name. And then we want to assign the value. So we're going to say dot val. And then we're going to pass in data dot category name. All right. So let's see if this works. Uh, all right, looks like something went wrong. Let's look to get categories is not defined. Categories is not line 11. Get categories. How is it not defined? It's right here. Expect an identifier on line 51. Oh, car. You guys probably saw that a while ago. <laughs> okay, so if I click edit, and there we go. So it brings us to edit category HTML and it inserts the category name. So that's the first part. Like I said, the second part is actually submitting it. All right, so we're going to need to set up another event. Okay, so we'll copy this one. And this is gonna be edit category submit. And we're gonna call the function edit category. And it's gonna be similar to add category, so let's copy that. Okay. Now we're gonna need the category ID. All right, so we know that it's gonna be in the session, so we can get it from the session. So we'll say var category underscore ID, session storage dot get item. And we want current category ID, all right. Then we make the Ajax request. Okay, so we're gonna have to just change this a little bit because right now it's um, it's getting all categories. So we wanna go, just like we did before, we're gonna say slash and uh, slash category ID. Get that back like that and then API key, and then, yeah, that's good, that's right. All right, and then here, same thing, that's fine. Now the type that we're gonna do is not post because uh, this is a RESTful API, that means that we have get, we have post, put is for update, and then delete. So this is an update, so it's put. Okay, content type is fine, that's fine. Everything else is good. All right, so let's do a, let's save that and we'll go ahead and try it. So let's go to manage categories and let's go to family and we'll change that to home. Submit. And you can see that family is now home.
All right, so that's the edit. Now we have to do the delete. All right, so if we look in the get categories function where we generate the buttons, you can see that the delete button, where is it, has a class of button delete category. So we need to create an event based on that. So let's go up here and we want to do the same thing that we did with this button edit category. So we'll copy that. Make this a little wider. All right. So that's the edit. So this one I'm going to change to button delete category. All right. And then we're going to change this to delete category. All right. Now we have to create that. So we'll go down here. We'll say function delete category. And we need the category ID and we're going to get that just like we did up here. Okay, because we have that data category ID attribute and that's passing in the ID. So we're going to grab it and then we need to make an Ajax request. And this is going to be similar to the edit one. So let's grab this. We'll grab the return faults too. And let's paste that right here. And then let's take a look at the URL. So we have uh, slash of databases, task manager two, categories. So that's the correct URL. That's what we want. Okay. Um, we're not passing in data, so we can get rid of that. Oops. All right, and then the type of request we're going to change from put to delete. And let's see what else. We can get rid of the content type. And we're going to need, let's say, async. We're going to make sure that this is asynchronous, true. And then we'll just set a timeout and we'll set that for uh, 300,000 milliseconds. Is that 300,000? No. Okay. And then success function data, we're going to redirect. That's fine. Handle the error. All right. So that's, that's good. So let's save that. All right. And then we'll go back and reload. Okay, we have an issue. Get categories is not defined. All right, so. And we just need to put a comma right here. That's why it's doing that. Okay, so let's say hobby delete. And there we go. So we now have full create, read, update, and delete functionality on our categories. All right, so the next thing to do is do the same thing with the tasks. All right, basically the same exact thing, it's just a different resource. All right, so we'll do that next. Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we wrapped up the categories functionality. So we now have full CRUD functionality on categories. Now what we need to do is do that same stuff with the task resource. All right, and I wanna start with adding a task just so we have a way to add them and then we can work on listing them on the home page. All right, so first thing, if we go to add task.html, we have our form and there's a few things that we need to do to update this. All right, so one is gonna be this checkbox. I'm gonna change this to be a select box, all right, to, to check if it's urgent or not because I was having some issues with having it this way. All right, so I'm gonna copy this uh, category select right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I'm gonna paste it in. And this will be, uh, we'll say is urgent. And let's change the name here. And the ID. All right, and then we're just gonna have some options. And this value will be no. All 
right? And then we'll have yes. Oops. <clears throat> All right. So there's that. Now this form has an ID of add task. So we're going to need to have uh, an event for when we submit this form. All right. And now before we do that, the categories, we need to generate these uh, from the JavaScript and we need to do that by fetching them from the uh, Mongo Lab API. All right, so we know we have a select with the ID of category. So keep that in mind because that's where we're going to append the options. All right, so let's save that and we'll go to main.js. Actually, before we do that, on the add task page in the body, let's, uh, let's say on load, then we want to run a function called get category options. All right, because we only want this to run on this particular page. So now in main.js, let's go, we'll just go to the top here and I'm going to paste this in. Okay, so get category options and we're just getting the URL here, which is going to be um, task manager two slash collections slash categories. And then we're creating a variable output um, and then we're going to loop through the data that's passed to us from the get request and for each iteration we're going to create an option tag with the value of the category name and then the text will also be the category name and then we're just going to append it onto the element that has category as an ID alright so let's save that and now if we go back to the form you see now we have our work and home options. Okay, this is coming from the database now. And you can see that the is urgent is now updated to uh, a select list. So now that that's taken care of, let's add the event for when the form submitted. All right, so same thing that we did with add category. Let's grab that. We're going to do with add task. All right, so this function will put, let's put this at the top as well. And I'm just gonna paste this in because just to save a little bit of time, it's pretty simple and it's just like the add category function. Okay, we're getting all the fields from the form. We can get that with dot val from the ID and then dot val. And then we're making the Ajax request to collection slash tasks. And then we're passing in the data which we're putting in a, a json.stringify function. All right, and then we're saying the type is gonna be post. It's a JSON content type. If it's successful, we're just gonna redirect to the index page. All right, so we'll save that. And let's go back and go to add task. We'll say meeting with boss, which is work and let's say the 14th and it is urgent all right so we got redirected now we don't see anything here and that's that's should be happening because we don't we didn't add that functionality yet but we still can check to see if it went through if we go to mongo lab and reload the tasks collection you can see that what i just typed in is now showing here so it did go through all right, so now what we need to do is make it so that those show up here. All right, and that's going to be from a function called get tasks. So we're going to go to index.html and in the body tag, we're going to say on load equals uh, get tasks. <clears throat> and then down here, we have a div with the ID of tasks. This is the placeholder. This, this is where we're going to put the, uh, the list of tasks. Now I put this UL here, but I'm actually going to get rid of it because we're going to include it when we generate the HTML from the JavaScript. So we want to get rid of that and the ending tag. All right, and now we'll go back to main.js and up at the top here where it says add category dot submit. We're going to copy that. And 
whoop, I'm sorry, that's not what we want. We want, um, actually we don't need to put anything up here. We just need to create the uh, get tasks function, which I'll put right here. So I'll paste that in. Okay, so very similar to get categories, we're making the get request to collection slash tasks. All right, then we're initializing an output variable and this is where we're gonna have the beginning UL tag. And then we're gonna loop through the data and for each, uh, each task, we're gonna have a list item. All right, and then we're, this should be actually be task name. Okay, so we're gonna attach the task name. And then after that, we're gonna have a span tag and that's gonna have the due date. All right, due date will be inside of these square brackets. All right, now right here we're saying if data dot is urgent equals true, which we have to change because it's not true, it's gonna be yes or no. So we're gonna change that to if it's yes, then we're gonna add on this, which is just gonna be a, a bootstrap label that says urgent. All right, and then here we have our buttons which are being pulled to the right with the pull right class. And let's see, we have the edit button and then we have the delete button. All right, so you can get that all copied or just use the program files. And then what we're doing is we're just adding it on to whatever div has the um, ID of tasks. So let's save that. Uh, let's see, unexpected end of input. Did I save this? Oh, I, I'm missing the closing tag for get tasks. All right, so that should work. Okay, so there we go, meeting with boss. We have the due date and we can tell that it's urgent. So let's add another one. This one will say for home, we'll say make dinner. That'll be for tonight and is urgent, we'll say no. Okay, so now you can see it's listed and there's no urgent. All right, so we can now add tasks and we can read them. So now we wanna be able to edit them. All right, and everything's gonna be very similar to what we did with the category. Um, we want to grab this and let's put that here and this will be button edit task and then set task. All right, so when we click on an edit button, what we want is to add the current task to a session variable so we can access it later when we see the form and it'll put the, all the fields in the form. All right, so let's create set task. We'll go right here. And I'm gonna paste both of these in. All right, so we'll start with set task. We're gonna get the ID from the data task ID attribute. All right, then we're just gonna console log it. And then we're gonna set the session variable, which is gonna be called current task ID. And then we're gonna redirect to the edit form. All right, and then once on the edit form, we're gonna run get task, which is gonna get the ID from the session. And then we're gonna make a get request and get all the information for that particular task and then we'll insert it into the form. All right, and um, this right here should, we need to change this. Data is urgent if it equals yes, then we want this to be selected. All right. So now let's just make sure that we can see the form. So if we say edit, okay, it brings us to the form. Now the reason it's not showing anything is because we, have, we're not, we haven't ran this get task yet. So we need to go to edit task.html and in the body tag, we're gonna say on load equals get task. Okay, so now it's getting it. Uh, the category, 
oh we still have to change that so let's go to edit category HTML and let's see we have I'm sorry not edit category edit task we're gonna have to run the get category options function as well so that we can fill that category select list so up here uh, what we're going to do is put a semicolon here and then get category options and that'll run both functions for us there we go okay so it's pre-filled now we do have to uh, fix this urgent just like we did in the add form so let's actually go grab that we want this uh, this whole form group right here put that in edit task and there we go now to actually be able to edit these um, we're gonna have to add uh, let's see an edit task event so let's copy this and we'll say edit task All right, and then we'll go right under add task. All right, so we have edit task. <clears throat> we're gonna get the ID from the session. Uh, and then we're gonna put all the values from the form into a variable. All right, um, and then this here, if is urgent, we don't need that. We can actually just do what we did with the rest of the fields. Say is urgent. Is urgent. Okay, and then we're making a get request to collection slash tasks slash and then the ID. All right, that's really important to have that ID in the in the URL. All right, and then we're just attaching the data the type of request now is going to be a put okay that a put request will update content that's already on the server alright it's JSON format and then we're just going to redirect okay so we'll save that and let's reload and instead of make dinner let's say uh, we will say go out to dinner submit and there we go alright so the last thing we want to do is we want to be able to delete. So let's go up to the top. And we want this right here. And then we just want to put in task. Delete task. We'll put it right under the edit. Okay, so we're getting the ID and we're getting it from the data task ID attribute that's on the delete button. All right, and then our Ajax request, uh, this should actually be task manager two for me. And you wanna make sure that the ID is in there and then the type is gonna be delete. Uh, it's gonna be asynchronous. The timeout is um, 300,000 milliseconds and then the success we're just going to redirect okay so pretty easy so let's go ahead and reload and we'll say delete and there we go all right so we now have full create read update and delete functionality on both tasks and categories so i hope you guys enjoyed this project i will see you in the next one thanks in chapter four, we're gonna be building a web application built on Meteor.js. And Meteor.js is a platform that runs on top of Node and Express and uses MongoDB in both the server and the client side. All right, so we're gonna be building a photo gallery. So in order to use a photo gallery and store them in our database, we're gonna to need uh, to use GridFS. 
All right, so GridFS allows us to store images or, or any type of file in our MongoDB database. And we'll be using the FS collection media module to use GridFS and to be able to do that. All right, so project, project intro, uh, section two will be the GridFS and media install. All right, so we'll, we'll install and set up Meteor, and I'll also show you how we can use GridFS in the Mongo shell to store files. Um, and then in section three, we'll begin the actual web application functionality to be able to upload files. And um, in section four, we'll get the files, we'll get the images from the database and display them in our web app. So you learn how to install and use Meteor.js. We'll, you'll be able to use the FS collection module to upload images. We'll use the GridFS to store files in a MongoDB database. And we'll also be able to display images in the browser. Okay, so that's it. Let's get started. I'll see you in the first video. Hey guys, welcome to your next project. In this chapter, we're going to be building a photo gallery and we're going to be storing images in our MongoDB database. And one method that we can use to do that is by using GridFS. All right, so GridFS is a specification for storing and retrieving files that exceed the BSON, BSON document size limit of 16 megabytes. All right, so you can store files that are larger than 16 megabytes. And um, I'm not gonna go through everything here. Um, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to work with it in the command line at its core, and then we're gonna build an application using Meteor.js. Okay, so Meteor is a, an open source JavaScript web application framework, and it runs on top of Node.js. Okay, now Meteor uses MongoDB. In fact, I think it's the only, I think Mongo is the only database that it can use. And it's, it's pretty cool because it has, it works with your MongoDB on the server, but it also keeps its own local version of Mongo called Mini Mongo on the client side. So it's easy to interact with MongoDB from the client's end. All right, so we'll be, be building an application with Meteor and the way that we're going to implement GridFS is through this Meteor plugin here, um, Meteor Collection FS. And if we go down, this is a way to upload images and store images. And there's a few different methods, and GridFS is one of them. So let me see if I can find storage adapters. Uh, yeah, so we have uh, GridFS as well as the file system. You can use Amazon's S3 service and Dropbox. All right, so we're interested in the GridFS. All right, and this just basically just shows us how to install it. Um, this is how you can install any kind of Meteor package with Meteor Add. And then it gives us the usage. All right, so that's what we're gonna be doing. And before we start on the Meteor application, I just wanna show you uh, how we can use Mongo files. Okay, so Mongo files is the is the utility that comes with MongoDB that allows you to work with files and allows you to store them and uh, do different things. All right, so we should have Mongo files already installed. Okay, so you can see we're using version 306, and this is basically the syntax Mongo files, and then any options, commands, and then the file name. All right, so we're gonna simply just store a date, um, an image file in our database. So let's go ahead and just get a sample image. Okay, so I'm gonna download this and let's put it in the projects folder. Sample JPEG. All right, and now let's see. I think there should be some examples here. Yeah. Okay, so Mongo files. 
this would list all the files, I guess. If we say Mongo files D records list. Okay, so we don't have any. Um, and then let's see. Let's say Mongo. Actually, let me make this bigger for you guys. Oh, I can't, huh? There we go. That should be a little better. All right, so we'll say Mongo files, and uh, we want to say D, and then the storage adapter, which is gridfs, and put, and then we want the name of the file, which is sample.jpg. Okay, so added file, and now if we say list, um, huh, it doesn't list it out. Well, let's go into the Mongo shell and see if it actually added it. So if we do show DBs, okay, you can see we do have a, um, a database called gridfs. So we want to use that. And then we should, let's do show collections. Uh, what did I do? Okay, so we have, you can see we have fs.files. So we want to say uh, db.fs.files.find and let's say dot pretty. And there it is, sample JPEG. So by default, it gives it an ID, the chunk size, upload date, length, um, MD5 hash, and the file name. All right, so it's as easy as that to store files, not just images, any kind of file in MongoDB. All right, so now let's work on getting Meteor set up. Okay, so I understand that a lot of you probably have never used Meteor, so I'm going to keep this application pretty simple. Basically, we're just going to have um, a bunch of images, thumbnails, and we'll have a button to upload images, and then it'll show in that list. All right, installing Meteor is really simple. Let's just grab that curl command and we're going to clear this out. Oops, we're going to get out of Mongo. Okay, and we'll just go ahead and paste that. And if you're on Windows, there's, an, there's actually a Meteor installer that you can use. All right, so if everything installed OK, you should see this screen here. And you can see to create an application, all we have to do is media create and then the name of the app. So I'm going to make sure I'm in my projects folder and then say media create and I'm going to call this photos. All right, and it's as simple as that to create a project. Now we'll go into photos and we can run media and that'll start it up for us. Okay, and now if we go to localhost 3000. And this is our application. This is the, the boilerplate or whatever you want to call it that comes with media. And you see we have a button here. If I click it, it's just going to add to this paragraph right here. All right, and if I reload it, it goes back because it's not actually going into a database anywhere. It's just it's just in the browser. All right, now if we go to our project directory, let me just open this. Oops. Okay, let me close this stuff out. And Okay, so if we go to photos and you'll see these three files right here. All right, so we have an HTML file, we have a CSS and a JavaScript. This is the absolute most simplest uh, structure that you, you, you're you gonna be able to have with Meteor. All right, very easy, just an HTML file with some tags. Um, we have a template tag, which is really important because every view you have in your application is going to be in some kind of template. All right, the 
the top level tags that you can have in a media template are head, body, and template. Okay, anything you have needs to go in here and needs to have a name. All right, and then what you can do is you can in your JavaScript, uh, you can look right here. All right, and we have template.hello.events and template.hello.helpers. And you can see that the name of this template is hello. So this block of HTML is uh, referenced in these functions here. And helpers and events have two different um, functionalities. Helpers is basically you can assign things to be accessed in your template. For instance, a variable, or in this instance, it's a function called counter. And all it's doing is returning the session variable for counter, which we set up here. All right, and then in the HTML, we can access the counter in this syntax with these double uh, curly braces. Okay, and events. Events is going to be things like uh, a form submission, a uh, button click, like in this instance, uh, things like that. So we're saying click button. So this is going to run if any button is clicked. You can also put a class or an ID in here to, um, you know, use a, 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 an individual element instead of all buttons like this would do. And then it's going to equal a function. And all we're doing here is setting it and we're adding one every time it's clicked. And that's why you see this increment each time. Okay, now, as I said before, Mongo runs on the server and the client. So the two need to be, usually need to be separate. And if you want to use one file like this for both server and client, then you're going to want to use these conditionals. All right, so we're saying if client. All right, so if we're running on the client, then we're going to do this. All right, this one here, if server, then we're going to do this. All right, which doesn't actually do anything. We're just declaring a function. Okay, now the, I guess the proper way to do this is to create a server folder and the client folder, and then automatically whatever you put in the client folder is going to stay on the client, and whatever's on the server folder will stay on the server. All right, so that's what we're going to be doing. All right, and as far as working with a database, we're going to have to create a collections file where we specify all of our MongoDB collections. Um, in our case, we're just going to have um, a photos collection, which is going to be linked to GridFS through this um, this collection FS media um, package. All right, so hopefully that makes sense. I know it's kind of a lot, especially if you've never used Meteor, but I think you'll find that it's not it's not as difficult as it sounds. So in the next video, we'll start to create our application structure, which won't be that won't be um, that big. All right, so a couple folders, a couple more files, and um, we'll get that all set up. We'll get the Meteor collection package installed, and we'll go from there. So I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to set up our routes and our layouts. All right, and we're also going to install the packages that we'll be using in this project. All right, so let's start out by just installing these packages. So I'm going to go to my uh, terminal and just exit out of that. And let's go ahead and say meteor add and first thing I want to add is the router. So we're going to say iron router. Okay, that'll allow us to create different routes with different requests. All right, next thing we're going to add is bootstrap. All right, so we can actually install it and it'll, it'll get all set up. We don't even have to point to the CSS or anything. Okay, so we'll say meteor add. And then we want to say TWBS colon bootstrap all right next thing we're going to add is um, the collection FS package so that we can upload images to uh, to our database so we need to install two things we need the standard packages which is uh, we're going to say CFS and then we want to say standard packages all 
All right, now we need the grid FS package. Okay, so let's see, we're gonna say meteor add CFS and grid FS. And then the last thing I want to add is the toaster library, which just gives us some nice message formatting. All right, so we'll say meteor add, and it's going to be at Chris M. I think it's it's Beckett. I think it's B E C K E T T, and then we want toaster. And that should be it for packages. All right. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay. So we have iron router installed, but we don't have any route set. That's why we're seeing this, this area. Okay, and you also notice that the font and stuff up here has changed because Bootstrap is now implemented. All right, we didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to point to the, the CSS or JavaScript. It just works. So we're gonna have to set up our routes. So let's go ahead and uh, first thing I wanna do is just add our uh, layout files. All right, and we're going to change this structure around anyways. So actually, I'm going to open it through uh, through my file manager. All right, so I'm going to go to my projects, photos, and we're going to create a couple folders here. Oh, this is really slow. I apologize. All right, so let's create a server folder and a client and a lib. Okay, so automatically Meteor will run whatever we put in here on the client and whatever we put in here on the server. Whatever we put in here will get run on both. So let's start with the lib and we're gonna have two files in this folder. Okay, so the first one we're gonna have is our routes file. So we're gonna say route.js. Actually, I'm sorry, it's router.js. Okay, and then we're gonna have a collections.js. Whoops. Okay, collections, we're not gonna deal with yet, okay, because we're not gonna specify any collections yet, so we'll leave that. Um, let's go back to, what is going on? So let's go back to client. Okay, so in our client, we actually wanna bring our template uh, JavaScript file into that folder, so this photos.js. I'm just going to bring that right into the client. Actually, I'm sorry, I'm going to create a new folder. And we're going to call this templates. Okay, we'll paste that right in there. And the only other folder we're going to have in the client folder is style sheets. Okay, that's where all our, our CSS will go. So inside templates, we're going to create a couple HTML files. Okay, first one we want is going to be the, the layout. The layout file is what all of the other templates will be contained in. Okay, so this is like a wrapper. This is where we'll put things like our head tags, our uh, doc type, things that are going to be on every single page. All right, and then we'll create the rest of our templates. So we're going to want, uh, let's call this photos html this will be the main gallery also the home page all right let's also create add photos okay that'll be the page that we use to upload a photo uh i think is that it yeah that should be it really we basically have two views the upload view and then the the index or the photos view 
Okay, so what we want to do now is open the routes file. Okay, so we'll go to lib and then router.js and we're going to say router dot configure and then we're going to pass in an object and we want to specify the layout template okay and we called it layout html so we just have to put layout and then we need to map our routes so we're going to say router dot map and we're going to pass in a function Okay, and I'm going to say this dot route, and let's do photos. Okay, and then we're going to pass in the path, which is going to be the home page. So we just want a slash, and then we want to specify the template we're going to use. Okay, in this case, it's going to be photos. All right, and then we just have one more route, so we can actually just copy this. And this is going to be add photos, and it'll be at slash add, and it's going to call the template add photos. All right, and that's it. That's all we have to do for our routes. Now for the layouts, let's open up layout HTML, and all we have to do here is let's create our body tags. Okay, and in here we're just going to put in a little placeholder and say render page. Okay, now everything that we do now has to be wrapped in template tags. All right, so this template is going to have a name of layout. So if we want to show the main, whatever the current template is, if we want to show that content, we have to put in a yield. Okay, so we're going to put in a greater than and then a yield. Save that. Now we're going to open photos HTML and we need to have a template tag. I'm going to specify that the template is going to be the photos template. All right, and let's just say photos page, and then we'll open up add photos, and we'll say add photos page. Okay, save it, and let's try reloading. Okay, so now you can see down here we have add photos page. Um, I'm not sure why. Let me just check out. Uh, let's see. Let's look at the router. Huh. Actually, first of all, let's go. Let's let's um get rid of this photos HTML that's in the root. And also photos CSS, we don't need that. Okay, so now we're getting add photos page. Oh, because I we need to say add photos. Okay, so now we know we're on the, the home page, the photos route. If we go to slash add, that takes us to the add photos page. Alright, so the routes are all set. Now what we want to do is set up our template. All right, we're going to use Bootstrap, and I want to just get a boilerplate from this startup uh, startbootstrap.com. Basically, they just give you free starter templates. Uh, they're very simple, so you can kind of just add your own style to them. Uh, there's some more up here that are in more in detail, but we just want something really simple. So I'm going to go down. And let's see, we want, where is it? Did I pass it? This right here, thumbnail gallery. So I want to click preview and download. 
and let's go ahead and download it. All right, so let's open up the zip file. All right, we can close that tab. All right, so this is the zip file. We're gonna bring some files over. So let's go ahead and let's go Okay, so this thumbnail gallery CSS file, we're gonna put that right in client style sheets. Okay, we don't need to do the bootstrap because that's already handled. All right, and then I'm just gonna rename this to style.css. All right, and then let's see, I think that's, yeah, the index, we're gonna just open that up Actually, I'll just extract it first. Okay, and then we'll just open with Sublime Text. And we're gonna kinda just uh, grab some stuff out of here, all right? So we want the navigation. So that ends right here. Or is it, no, right here. Okay, so that's the whole nav bar. I'm gonna cut that. And let's go, now we could put this in layout HTML, but I don't wanna mess things up. I don't wanna make it look sloppy. So I'm gonna create a new folder in templates and I'm gonna call it includes. Okay, and then we'll create a new file and we'll save it as navbar.html. All right, and then we're gonna put a template and we're going to call it navbar. And then we'll just paste that code right in there. All right, we'll change a couple things. Let's change this uh, start bootstrap to photos. And then for the links, we'll have a home. And that's just going to go to slash and then we'll have an add photos or add photo and we'll change that link to slash add okay and then we don't need this all right so let's save that now to actually have this show up we're going to have to include it so right in the template layout We're just gonna put in navbar. All right, so I'll save that. Oops, that's the HTML. And there it is. All right, so now we have a navbar. Next thing, we're gonna go back to the index HTML from the template, and we're gonna grab, I think I wanna grab the whole container which ends down here. Yeah, let's grab that whole thing. Oops. All right, so I'm gonna cut that out and I'm gonna put that right in photos. Actually, you know what? Let's put that in layout. Okay, because we want some of this to be in the layout. So if we paste that in, okay, we're gonna want this container div and the row div. We're gonna want these to stay in layout, but everything in between here, we want to put in the photos template. So I'm gonna go and just grab everything that's in there. Cut that and then go to photos HTML and paste that in. Save it and then go back to layout. And what we're going to do is take this yield and we're going to put it, 
put it right in here. Okay, that way the container and the row are always surrounding the yield. All right, and then we'll just change the footer. Say, whoops. All right, and that should be good. So we'll save that. And now we have our thumbnail. Okay, so now we have a thumbnail template. Of course, these are all just static right now, but what we'll do later on is just replace these with images that are coming from the database. All right, but for right now, it's fine. So let's go ahead and add the add photo page now. So if we go to add photos HTML, let's go ahead and put an H1 tag and we'll say add photo. And let's create a form and we're going to give it a class. Let's give it a class of add photo form. And it's going to include an image upload, so we need to include an ink type, which is going to be uh, multi part slash form data. All right, and then let's put a form group. This is all just bootstrap, just to make it look decent. It has nothing to do with any kind of functionality. Label, we'll just say upload photo. And then we'll have our input. Type is going to be a file. And we'll give it a name of my photo. And let's also give it an ID of my photo. that's good and then under this div we'll put in our button okay it's gonna be a submit button and we'll give it a class we'll give it a bootstrap class of BTN and then BTN dash primary And then we'll also have a close link that'll take us back to the home page. And we can make this look like a button. All right, so let's check that out. And there we go. Okay, we have an upload form. Nothing's going to happen if we do it now because we haven't added the functionality, but at least we have the form. All right, so I think that's good for now. We at least have the routes all set. We have our layout. In the next video, we'll work on actually being able to upload a photo. Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we set up our all of our layouts and routes. So now what I want to do is make it so that we can actually upload a photo. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to create a collection, uh, okay? We need a photos collection. So, and that's that's gonna be in sync with our MongoDB collection, photos collection. All right, so we'll go to lib and then collections.js. All right, and this is gonna be available for the client and the server. All right, so let's say photos is gonna be the name of our collection. So we'll say new fs dot collection and then we're gonna pass in photos and then we have some options all right so we're gonna say stores okay remember grid fs isn't the only um, storage method or, or storage provider that we can use so we need to specify that that's what we want so we're gonna say new fs dot store dot grid fs 
and we're going to pass in the name, which is photos. All right, and then we can add some uh, filters here if we want, because we don't want just any file, we want just images. So we're going to say filter and pass that an object allow. Okay, so we'll say allow content types and all we want to allow is images so we'll say image slash and then an asterisk okay because this could be a, a, a gif it could be a jpeg it could be a png any kind of image okay and then after that let's say on invalid i'm gonna say function and pass it a message and then we're just going to um, send the the error so we'll say flash message dot send error message all right so that is the collection setup now in order to um, allow access to the photos we're going to say photos dot allow and then we're going to say in here will be an object and we'll say insert function and then we just want to return true so we want insert and also upload return true so we'll save that and that should be it for our collections file pretty simple now if we go to let's see let's go to our templates and let's go to add photos HTML and we're submitting a form here with the class of add photo form so we need to create inside photos JS we need to create an event for this all right so what we're going to do I'm going to say template dot and then the template name which is add photos dot events all right and then this is a submit event for the class add photo form all right so what do we want to happen we want a function to run all right and then we need to grab the actual file all right so we're going to say var file and we're going to set that and then we're going to use jquery to grab the actual um, file so it should have an id let's see input type file id is my photo so let's use that and we'll say dot get zero dot files because this gets sent as an array but it's only one image so we want the first one all right and then we're gonna check and see if the file was actually submitted and then an else for if it wasn't all right so in here we're going to say fs file is equal to new fs dot file and then we're going to pass in that file variable all right and then we should take photos which is the the model the collections that we set up and we'll say insert okay now we're dealing with uh, mongodb and we want to pass in that fs file value all right and then we'll have our function and this will have an error and a result and we're going to check for the error all 
right? And if there is, then let's just console log. And then we'll say else. And all we're going to do now is we're going to create a message with toaster. So we're going to say uh, toaster dot success. And we'll just say file uploaded. All right. And then we're going to redirect so we can use router. Say router dot go, and then we just want to go to the home page. Okay, and then else, so if there is no file, then let's copy this. All right, actually, let's. Well, we got to change this to error. And then we'll just say no file uploaded and let's go back to the form. So add. All right, and then down here we just want to make sure we return false because we don't want the form to actually try to submit. All right, so let's save that. And we can try it out. Okay, so I'm going to need to get an image. Okay, we'll just grab this one. And I'll put it in downloads. Okay, so if we go browse, downloads, open. Submit. All right, so media.wrapasync has been renamed uh, invalid key upload. Oh, did I put upload? Uh, okay, so if we go to lib. Oh, I did. It sh this should be download. All right. Let's try it again. Okay, add photo. File uploaded, all right. So there's no way for us right here to check and see if it was uploaded. But what is one of the coolest things about Meteor is that since MongoDB runs on both client and server side, we can actually use the console in the browser and I know it's really small, so you, I know you have trouble seeing, but down here we can say photos.find.fetch. And you can see that gives us an array. Click on that over here. You can see we have one object in this array, has an ID. And if we go to copies and then photos, you can see right here all the all the image info, the name, which is sample one JPEG, the type, the size, the date. All right, so it did work. It did get uploaded. Okay, so now the next thing we need to do is to query the collection and then spit out the images here using their paths. Now, if we grab the ID of this image and then up here, should be able to go to slash CFS slash files and then the collection name which is photos slash and then the ID there it is all right so we'll next in the next video we'll just loop through them and we'll output them as thumbnails all right so in the last video we made it so that we could upload images all right, through this form here. Now what we need to do is grab those images and display them in the thumbnail gallery. All right, so it's this is going to be really easy to do. All right, we're going to go to Photos.js, and we have our events here for add photos. Now we need for just the photos template, we need some helpers. So to do that, we're going to say template, 
dot photos dot helpers okay and this is gonna be let's say photos that's what we want to access and then we'll say function All right and we can return photos dot find and that's it that's just like we do in the mongodb shell we can use dot find dot insert dot update all those remove okay so that's basically all we have to do to, to bring the photos in so let's save that all right and then what we'll do is go to photos html and we have all this static HTML. All we want is one of these. So we'll keep that first one and then we'll get rid of the rest of these because they're going to repeat. All right. Now we're going to want to go right here and we're going to say each photos and then we're going to end it right here. All right, and then for the URL or the source attribute, we want to change that to, let's see, what was it? Uh, CFS, CFS slash uh, files. Actually, that should be lowercase. slash files slash and then the name of the collection photos and then we need the ID alright so we're just going to let's see how we're gonna do this let's put some single quotes here actually you know what I, should, I don't need to do that we'll just do um, curly braces and then underscore ID I think well, we might have to put photo I don't know let's try this unexpected closing template tag each all oh, this is because we need a, a number sign right here And there it is. All right, so let's try to upload another image, make sure everything goes smoothly. So we'll grab this. We'll view image. Save that to, actually wait, I want the bigger version. There we go. All right, so we'll save that, sample three. So we'll go back to add photo, browse, and submit, and there we go, file uploaded. All right, so what we wanna do now is we wanna be able to click on one of these images and have it take us to a page that just has that one image. All right, so to do that, we're gonna create a new route Okay, so we'll just copy this right here and let's call it just photo and the path will be slash photos slash and then we need an ID and then the template will also call photo all right so now let's go to templates create a new HTML file called photo And we're going to add our template tags. Name is going to be photo. All right. So before we can do anything here, let's go to our photos.js. And we need to add a set of, actually, you know what? Let's send the data through the router. OK, 
Okay, so what we can do is let's add data and that's going to be a function all right and what we're going to do is we're going to have some template data and we're going to set that and then we're going to set photo and that's going to be photos dot find one Actually, hold on a second. Is that what we called it? Collections, photos, yep. All right, so photos.find1, and then we want to pass in our query, which will be underscore ID. And you know what? Let's change this to underscore ID as well. And then right here, we want to put in this.params.underscore ID. Okay, and then we just want to return it. So return template data. All right, so now we'll go to back to the photo template. And let's put in IMG. And I want to see if this will work if we put in photo.url. Okay, and to get to that page, we're going to have to add the link. So we'll go to photos.html, and then right in this link right here, we're going to go to slash photos, slash, and then the ID. Okay. Okay, it looks like it's not getting the ID. Oh, it's underscore ID. And there we go. If we click on this one, okay, and it's the same size still, we can change that. Actually, yeah, let's change that in the CSS. So we'll go to Photos CSS and uh, let's add a class to this actually. So we'll say image class, we'll say main image. All right, and then Let's set let's set a max width to six hundred pixels. All right, and maybe we want to push it to the middle. We could say margin auto, and uh, we could display as a block and maybe give it a border some padding all right you can do whatever you'd want with it all right um, obviously you'd probably have some other information with the image if this was a real photo gallery uh, but this is just to show you just to demonstrate that we can we can store images in MongoDB so I think that's a good place to stop. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this project, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Thanks. Hi right, guys, welcome to chapter five. In this chapter, we're gonna be creating a to-do list using the server-side language PHP. All right, so we're gonna use PHP along with the MongoDB driver to allow us to interact with MongoDB. All right, and we'll be focusing on object-oriented programming in PHP. All right, so section one, you're watching. This is the intro. Section two, we're gonna go ahead and set up an Apache server. We're gonna install PHP. We're gonna set up the Mongo driver and we'll start to create the files and folders for the application. Section three, we're gonna make it so that we can get and display to-dos through the browser. Section four, we're gonna work on adding to-dos. And then in section five, we'll work on the update and delete functionality. So you'll learn how to set up an Apache server in Linux Ubuntu. You'll learn how to install PHP along with the MongoDB driver. 
You'll learn how to connect to and interact with Mongo through PHP, and you'll learn a little object oriented programming in PHP. Okay, so that's about it. Let's get started. I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome to your next project. In this project, we're going to be building a to do list and we're going to be building it using PHP. So, a little different than what we've been doing. All right, so PHP is a server side programming language and it runs on an Apache server and um, is used a lot of the time, it's used with a MySQL database, which is a relational database. But there is a really nice MongoDB driver that you can install to have it integrate with MongoDB. And that's what we're going to be using. So this page here is in the manual on the php.net website and gives us everything we need to know about the Mongo driver, how to install it, gives us um, all the classes, all the different types, grid FS so we can, we can save images um, and files, and then just a whole bunch of other stuff. All right, so there's that page, and then there's the one on the MongoDB website, shows us how to install the driver. Um, but before we do any of that, we need to set up PHP and Apache. All right, and we're just going to install the LAMP server or the LAMP stack, which is um, Linux, Apache, MySQL, and PHP. All right, so it's pretty easy. This is a, this is a guide that I find really helpful. This is on the Ubuntu site. All right, so we're going to open up a terminal and let's go ahead and update our package manager. So we'll say sudo app get update. All right, and then we can go ahead and install the whole, the entire LAMP server with this command here. So let's grab that. And yes. Okay, we'll let that install. All right, so this screen here is asking us to just configure a password for MySQL. We're not going to be using MySQL, so um, just, I mean, you can put what you'd like. And of course, if you wanted to, you could install any of these by themselves. Um, Apache gives you, gives you the steps on how to install Apache by itself, uh, PHP by itself, MySQL, but this is an easy way to do it. All right, and just to verify, we can say Apache 2 V, okay, gives us the version 2.4.7, and to check PHP, you can see that we have version 5.5.9. So we should now, let's check out our web server folder, which by default is in the var, folder and then www and HTML. All right, now if we go to localhost, we get the Apache welcome page, all right, which is this index file right here. All right, so if we create a new folder here, which we can't because we don't have permission. So we wanna add ourselves to the uh, www data group. So if we say sudo, add user and then your username www-data all right so I'm already a member of that group then we want to change the owner to that to www-data and how you handle permissions is you know that's up to you um, so I'm just going to change the owner here recursively www-data and uh, also slash var slash www all right and then we're going to say sudo chmod and we want to do we want to be we want to be able to write to this directory so we're going to say g plus rwx 
slash var slash www. All right, and now if we go back here, now we can create new folders and files. Okay, so let's create a folder in the HTML folder, and let's call this uh, to-dos. Pretty original. <laughs> All right, so in here we're going to create a new document, and this is going to be called index.php. All right, and we'll open that up. Oh, whoa, let me close all these. All right, so in this index PHP file, let's just say it works. Okay, so now if we go to localhost slash, whoops, slash to do's we get it works all right so this is our project directory so I want to put this in my uh, folders here all right so to do's and there we go all right so we have an index PHP file now what we need to do before we actually start writing any code is we need to install the MongoDB driver all right so I think this is a good is a good um, instruction set to follow. All right, so let's go back to our terminal and we're going to need Perl installed. I'm not sure if I have that or not. So let me, let's just try this. So P E C L install Mongo and that's not found. All right. And uh, so what we're going to do is run this right here. Now let's try that again, sudo pecl install mongo, and now we're good. All right, so build with Sire support, nope. And now we have to add the mongo.so extension to our PHP any file. And we can actually do that from the command line. So let's do sudo i so that we run this as root. And then we're going to say echo extension equals mongo.so. And then etc slash php5 slash apache2 slash php dot ini all right so that should do it um, and then we're going to do php i grep mongo all right so now we can restart apache so we'll say sudo service Apache 2 restart. All right. Now let's check the PHP INI file. So we'll go to uh, etc and Apache 2. Oh, not Apache 2. We need to go in the PHP 5. PHP. What the hell is it? Oh, PHP Apache 2. And let's check this out. Okay, go down to the bottom. And you should have extension equals mongo dot so. All right. So we get that. So what I want to do now is just create some of our file structure. All right, so we're going to go back to the web server. All right, so we have our index.php. Let's create a folder called classes. 
and what else? We'll do a folder called public, and we'll do includes and lib. All right, so classes, we're going to have a document. Let's call this to do.php. All right, so anything to do with to do and, and our functions, adding a to do, uh, reading them, we'll go in here. All right, lib, we're going to have our database file where we connect to MongoDB. So we'll just call this db.php. All right. And we have our index public. We'll have folder for CSS, JavaScript, even though I don't think we're going to have any, and images. All right, and we're going to use Bootstrap. So let's grab that. Okay, so we'll download. Okay, so we're going to bring to the public folder CSS. I'm going to bring over Bootstrap CSS. And in the JavaScript, we'll bring over Bootstrap.js. And we might as well bring over the fonts folder as well to the public directory. All right, so now let's go back to our index file. And let's just put in our HTML tags. Let's do the doc type. Title and we're going to use include so that we don't have to have this on every single page. All right, so body. Uh, well, let's link the bootstrap files first. So we'll say link style sheet. And this is going to be in public slash CSS slash bootstrap dot CSS. All right, and then the JavaScript will put at the bottom. Public JS bootstrap.js all right now let's go back to the bootstrap site and we're going to go to uh, basic template no examples and we'll just grab this one here the starter template and we'll view source and let's grab everything in the body except for the scripts and we'll put that right here all right so let's go back and reload all right so it's not it's not seeing the CSS file let's um let's remove the slash There we go. All right, so the nav bar, we're going to take away this uh, fixed top class right here. That's going to fix this issue. All right, so project name, we'll change that. We'll just call it my to do list. And let's see, we'll get rid of contact and let's, let's change this to add to do and this will go to slash add.php 
All right, and then down here, change this H1 to my to dos. And we'll change, we'll take this paragraph out and let's put a, an unordered list. We'll give it a class of list group. Okay, these are going to go to slash, uh, slash to do dot php, and then we're going to have uh, a query on here that will be the ID, and that'll be whatever the ID is. For now, we'll just put one. All right, I'll just say some to do. Let's actually take that slash off. Let's go, oh, these, um, these should have a class of list group item. So at least we have our interface down. But uh, before we go, I want to split this up a little bit so that we don't have to repeat HTML. All right, so everything from the top, from the doc type, down to uh, down to the container opening div. Let's cut that, and then we're going to put inside includes. We're going to create a file called header PHP header.php and I'm going to paste that in save it all right and then we'll go back to index and let's grab actually this starter template div I'm going to take that out all right and then from here the ending container div all the way down we're going to cut that out and we're going to create a file called footer.php and we're going to paste that close it save it or save it and close it all right and then this is going to be just our home page all right now in order to You'll see if I go and reload, we lose the header and the footer. So we need to include those. Okay, so up at the top here, we're going to say PHP include. And we're going to go to the includes folder slash header.php. Okay, and then we'll do the same thing with the footer. And now we got it back. All right, so now in every page we have, all we have to have is this line and this line, and it'll be included, all right? So it makes it much easier for us. So I think that we should stop here since we have the interface really. I mean, we don't have the add form or the edit form, but um, we'll get to that. So in the next video, what I wanna start to do is connect to MongoDB, make sure that the driver is working okay and we can actually connect to a database and we'll go from there all right so in this video we're going to connect to our Mongo database using the PHP driver that we installed um, but before we do that I just want to create a database and add a little bit of data to it all right so I'm in my Mongo shell and I've made this really big so you guys can see it all right and what we're gonna do let's say show databases all right, and we're going to want to create a new one. So let's say use to do's. Okay, so now we're in the to do's database, and we can say db dot create collection, and let's call this just call it to do's. All right, so now if we say show collections, we have to do's. All right, so let's insert one. We'll say db 
dot to do's dot insert. All right, and then we're going to put in, let's say, uh, name. So let's see for the name. It's basically just going to be the title or name, whatever you want to call it. Um, we'll say meeting with boss. All right, and then the next field, let's say category. Uh, category, we'll just say work. Okay, uh, next we'll say. Uh, let's say priority and for that we'll just say I guess important okay let's do the due date or we'll just say task date and for that we're gonna say new date and then just pass in uh, I'll say 9 20 2015 all right and then we'll have a description I'll just say have a meeting with my boss and what else I think I think that's good for now all right, so we inserted that. Let's let's do another one. So let's see. For the name, let's do a different category. Let's say we'll pick up kids from school. So the category, we'll change that to family. Priority, I guess that's pretty important to pick your kids up, so we'll leave that date we'll say 921 description description whoops okay all right so now we have two so we can say DB dot tasks dot find dot pretty uh, did I say tasks? I meant to do's. All right, so we have two to do's in our database, which is good. So back to our PHP script. Um, what we're going to do now is the database PHP file, okay, which is in lib. And this is going to be very short. All we need to do here is connect and select the database. All right. So we'll say PHP and then to connect, we'll say M is equal to a new Mongo client. All right, and then to select a database, we're just going to say DB equals M and then the name of the database, which is to do's. All right, and that's it. So if we save that, and now what we want to do is include that in the header, because the header is included on every other page. So that means it'll be on every page. So we're going to include, and that's going to be in lib slash db.php. Okay, and let's also include our to-do class as well right here. Okay, so that's going to be in classes slash to do dot php whoops okay so we can close the header file now let's go over to the to do php all right now if you haven't dealt with object oriented programming what it is basically we're going to create a, a to do class and that class can have both uh, variables and functions all right and we're just going to put it together creatively so that we have for instance an add an add to do function so we have a list to do function all right and basically the class will contain all the properties and functions of that particular class okay so we're going to say php 
and then we need to say class to do all right and then here's where all the variables are going to go all right and you can label they can be the private protected or public all right so usually you want your variables your class variables or properties to be private because you don't want people to be able to access them without going through the class um, but we are going to make the the database variable protected and what protected means is that only this class and other classes that extend it that are part of it or subclasses um, can use this all right if it's private then only this class can use it if it's public then you can access it outside all right so we're gonna have the database uh, we're also gonna have the collection and then we're gonna have all the fields which are gonna be private so we'll say private name and let me just paste these in all right so we have our name category priority description and task date okay so those are the class properties now for the methods or the functions okay these are going to be public because we need to access them from outside all right now if you've dealt with with object-oriented programming before you probably know what a constructor is um, but what it, what it is is it's just something that runs when you start when you instantiate the class all right so it runs every time and in PHP to create a constructor we're going to use the double underscore and then construct all right so this is going to run every time we create uh, a new to do instance okay and we're going to pass in the database okay or the database object and what we're going to do here is set the one that's passed in to this one to the the class database okay and to do that all we have to do is say this db is equal to db okay so we're setting this equal to whatever we pass in all right and then what we need to do is set the collection so we'll say this db, I'm sorry, this collection is going to equal this db and then the collection name, which is going to be to do's. All right, and you can see that that's what they're doing here, just not inside of a class. We're saying collection equals db cartoons. So it's the same thing, except we have this because we're referencing these properties. All right, hopefully that makes sense. I know it may be a little confusing, but you'll get the hang of it. All right, so next we're gonna start creating our functions or actions. So we'll say public function, and first one we're gonna do is get to do's. All right, and obviously that's gonna do exactly what it says. It's gonna grab the to do's from the database and give it to us so that we can use them as an, in an array. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is if we look over here, actually, you know what, let's look at, um, no, this is good. This is fine. So let's grab this right here. Find everything in a collection. All right. Put that there, except for us, we're going to use this collection. Find. Okay. So just as we did in JavaScript, when we did a dot find, um, here in PHP, we're using this character um, instead of a dot. All right, and then we need to return the cursor. All right, so let's save that. And now what we need to do is go to, actually, you know, one more thing I wanna do in the header file is I wanna make sure that we see all the errors that we get all right because by default all the error control all the errors uh, display are off so we're just going to set um, display errors to one you could also go in your PHP any file and set this but this is quicker so I'm just going to do it like this all right and then let's see let's try let's just reload and see if Okay, so we're having some errors. Unexpected end of file 
db line 6. Oh, we forgot to put the ending PHP tag here. Okay, so no errors, that's good. Now, we should be able to get all the to-dos. So let's go to index PHP and let's go right here. And we're gonna instantiate a new to-do. All right, so to do that, no pun intended, I'm gonna create a variable called to-do and I'm gonna set this to new to-do. All right, oh, we have to pass in the database. Okay, now this DB, this is coming from this. All right, since this file is included in the index file, then this is available to us. All right, and then we're passing it into the class, which is coming in right here in the con constructor. All right, um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here, I'm gonna get rid of all list items but one and then we're gonna we're gonna loop through and PHP to loop through an array we can use for each so we're gonna say for each and then we need to end it here we can say end for each all right and then here what we're gonna put is to do and then get to do's okay so we're taking this variable which is the to do object and we're calling the get to do's method which is right here all right and what that's doing is it's going to collect it's going to get all of the um, all of the records in the to do collection all right and then to display fields or values from the collection we're going to go right here and say echo um, to do and let's get the name okay so let's reload okay so we're having an issue with no error oh I'm sorry we did for each to do get to do's and then we're supposed to say as to do Undefined property, get to do's. Oh, this is a function, get to do's, so we need the parentheses. There we go. All right, so now this is coming from our database. And I realize if you don't know PHP, this may be a little tough to grasp at first. Uh, but if you do know PHP, this should be pretty easy. And then if we look at the link to do.php, and then we have ID equals one. We want this to be the ID of the to do. So let's replace that. Oops, to do. And this will be underscore ID. Do that right. Yeah, that should work. So let's reload this. And then when we hover over it, you can see down at the bottom here, we have ID equals and then the ID. If I click on it, um, right now it's not going to do anything because we haven't created that page yet. So let's go ahead and create that. So in our to-dos directory, we're going to create a new file. We'll save it as photo.php. I'm sorry, not photo. To-do.php. All right, so what we're going to want to do here is we need to include the header and footer just like we did in the index. So I'm just going to copy this whole thing. All right, and we can get rid of that. Okay, this will be the to-do name. Okay, so we're gonna wanna bring in a to-do object just like we did in index. 
But now what we want to do is, actually let's save this just to make sure that it loads. All right, now we want to grab this number right here, this the ID. And to get that PHP is pretty easy. All we have to do is use the super global get variable. So that'll be dollar sign underscore get, and it's an array. And to get that ID, all you have to do is pass in ID. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll set a variable called ID, set it equal to that. Okay, and then what we'll do is when we want to fetch data like the name, we'll do something like um, PHP echo to do, and then we'll have a function called get to do to pass in that ID and then we'll get whatever value we want. Let's say the name. Actually, you know what? It's not going to be in that format. It's going to be an array. So it'll be like this. All right. So now let's go and create this get to do. So we'll go back to the to do class. Down here, let's copy that. Get rid of the S. Okay, and let's see, we'll do cursor equals this collection, and then instead of find, let's do find one, and then we have to pass in. Now, in the past when we've used JavaScript, we'd go like this, and we'd, we'd create a JavaScript object. Uh, in PHP, it's a little different. It's going to be in an array form like this, and then we'll pass in underscore ID, and then we want to do this and if it's a Mongo ID we have to specify Mongo ID and then we'll pass in the ID and that goes here as well mm -hmm. alright and then we can return it alright so let's save that undefined function Mongo ID oh this should be new Mongo ID and there we go, there's the title. Meeting with boss, if we go back and say pick up kids, title changes. All right, so and you can see we only, this, this method is only two lines of code and one is a return, so it's not, not too bad. Decent, uh, you know, small amount of code for a lot of functionality. And obviously you don't have to use this format, you don't have to do all the classes and uh, object oriented programming, but I think it's it's easier in the long run and it encapsulates you know the whole to do in one class, which is nice. All right. So let's go ahead and just add the rest of the fields to the HTML file. And I guess we'll do an unordered list. Uh, list group. Well, all right, and then we'll just have our allies. List group. I right, Jesus can't type. List group item. All right, and let's do not name. We already have the name. Let's do category. All right, and then again, all we have to do is just grab this, put that right there, and then change name to category. There we go, category family. Uh, what else do we have? Date, we have the date. So let's copy this ally. I think we called that task date. And then what else? Priority. And then the description we'll put down here. Let's put a H4. All 
right? And then we'll just do a paragraph. And change that to description. Actually, let's put a class, put a class of well. All right, now the date here, we obviously have to fix that. So let's see. So PHP echo, and then we'll say new date, and then surround this. No, that doesn't work. Ah, uh, shoot. Uh, I think I forget how to do this. Let me let's make this wider so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, so we have get to do task date. Well, let's say I think we got to do something like this to make it to the seconds. Yeah, okay, so that, <clears throat> and then what we got to do is surround that with date, PHP echo date, and then that'll go like that, and then the format goes in the front, so the format will say y, YMD, and H I S. There we go. All right. Actually, we don't need, we don't want the time. All right, cool. So that's the task page. All right, we can go back. Actually, let's, what's that home link? Let's go to the header. Home is oh, okay. We just we got to change this to uh, index PHP. There we go. All right. So we can now read. We can get a list of to dos, and then we can click on one, and we can get all the information. All right. So in the next video, we'll work on adding to dos from our application. Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we made it so that we could, in our PHP script, we could get all the to-dos in the database, and if we click on one, we'll get all the information on a details page. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to add them. All right, so we need to create a new page, a new PHP file, and we're going to put that right in the root directory. All right, and we'll just save this as add.php. All right, and we're going to want to add our includes so that we get the header and footer. All right. So we're going to need a form. So we're going to go to get bootstrap and just grab this sample form right here, just so we have the structure and the right classes to make it look good. All right, and then we're just going to change some things. All right, so we have email address. Uh, we want to change that. Let's put the name of the to-do. And we don't need these uh, four attributes on the labels. And this is going to be a text field. We, I don't think we need an ID. And then placeholder, we'll just change that to say name. All right, so that's one field. And next, we have our category. So let's change this. Now, what we're going to do for the category is we're going to hard code them in a select list. All right, and the reason I'm doing is that doing that is because you can you could do this through MongoDB. You could have a, a categories. Um, collection and you could make this list dynamic but it, it would basically be the same exact thing we're doing with 
the to do's except we'd have to just do it over so I'm just gonna keep this static and if you guys want to make it so that categories come from the database then you could just pretty much do everything over again and just do categories instead of to do's all right and maybe we'll get to that if we have time all right so this is gonna be a select and let's see I'll have a class of form control and we'll give it a name of category and I don't think I, I didn't give this for the name field we also need a name attribute All right, and then here we'll say option value Okay, we'll have a few different options. All right, so let's say uh, work. Home, actually we'll say family. And other. So let's make these capital too. All right, so that's the category. Next thing, uh, what else did we have? Name category, we want a priority. So that will also be a select, so I'm gonna copy this. And we're gonna get rid of this, file input and checkbox. All right, so this will be priority. Okay, we'll change this name field. And let's see, let's say low and this one will be normal. Oops. And high. All right, and let's make normal the selected. Okay, so we got name, category, priority. Now we need a description. Okay, description will be a text area. I'm gonna copy this. Okay, so we're gonna change this to text area. no placeholder and the name will be description all right and then we'll have the the date and what was this called we have um, task date it should be to do date but it's fine Oh, what am I doing? We'll just call it, we'll just have the label say date. Uh, due date. Placeholder, let's change that. Actually, you know what? This is going to be a, um, an input with the, with the type of date so that we can have a date selector. And then the name, the name will be task date. All right, so let's take a look at that. So we should now be able to go to localhost to do's slash add dot PHP. And there we go. All right, so that's our form. Now, right now we have just a form tag here. So what we need to do is we need to specify the method, which will be post, and then we need the action. Okay, so we haven't created the route yet, but it will be, uh, let's see, actually it'll be this page. We'll just add the, um, we'll add the PHP up above. Now we could say just add.php, but there's a super global that we can use, and that's gonna be server, 
dollar sign underscore server and then php underscore self and what that'll do is if we need our php tags what that'll do is it'll submit to itself all right so now let's also give the button uh, let's see type submit let's give it a name of submit and what we want to do is we want to check for that button being pushed all right so up above here we're gonna say if now this is a post request and we're submitting the form so we can access it using the post super global all right so if post submit then let's just we'll just echo submitted all right so we'll just and this is just basic PHP uh, undefined index submit all right so we're gonna say if is set submit All right, so let's just put in whatever and submit, and we get submitted. All right, so we know that whatever we put in here is gonna happen when the form is submitted. All right, but before we can do anything here, we have to add it to our class. All right, so we're gonna add public function add to do. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna submit an array of information. All right, so let's just call this info array. And I just wanna see if they have a good example of this in the documentation. So right here we have documents, collection, insert, Actually, you know what? Let's change this to post because we're just going to submit the whole thing. All right, and then what we're going to have to do, we're going to take those post variables. So it'll be in, in an array. So we'll have like post name. And what we want to do is set this name equal to post name. All right, because then we're setting it to the actual class. Um, attribute or property all right we're going to do that for all the fields so let's grab that all right so we get all those now just to test things out let's just say echo this name Okay, and then we'll go back to, to add PHP. And we're gonna create a new to-do object. So let's grab this from index PHP. All right, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna say to-do, uh, to-do add to-do, and then let's just pass in post now this isn't the most secure way to do things I'm just passing in the super global post like this but uh, I don't want to get too much into PHP because it's a MongoDB course and I don't want to kind of you know have a uh, information overload here just want to basically show you how they can work with PHP all right so let's save this and we'll go ahead and reload Uh, oh, I have that going to just localhost add. That's why it's doing that. All right, so let's just reload. And then we'll put in whatever. Submit, and we get whatever. Okay, so it's, it's just, it's going through. We can see that it's actually calling the function. It's sending in post. 
it's assigning it to the class variables or the class properties and then we're just echoing out the name all right so we know we're good up to this point so now if we take a look at the, uh, the documentation we want to just copy this all right and what I'm going to do actually is the document let's put let's create a, a property for document and then down here we're going to say this document and then this is going to be this collection okay and then also this document all right and then what we need to do here is just change the stuff up so name and then it's going to be this name and let's put these on a new line just so we can read them all right so we get name category all right so we get those all right so we're creating the document here and then we're passing it into the insert function of the collection all right then we just want to redirect so for PHP to redirect we're going to use the header function all right, and we'll say location, and let's just go to index.php. All right, so let's save that. And let's change that menu too, by the way. We'll go to header PHP, and then for this right here, add to do, this should be slash uh, to do's slash add. All right, so let's go ahead and add something here. We'll say, um, let's see what we actually have. Okay, so we already have meeting with boss, pick up kids from school. Let's say dinner with parents. And that's family. Priority, we'll just say normal. Dinner with the parents. And this should be a date field. Um, all right, so we'll, for the date, we'll just type it out. We'll say 0925 and submit. And there we go, dinner with parents. Okay, so this here, the date, you can see it's not formatted correctly. That's why we're getting this error. And since we're not doing any kind of calculation with the date or anything, I'm just going to from now on enter them as a, enter the date as a string. All right. Um, so all we're going to do is let's go to where do I want to go? To do.php and right here we just want to spit out um, the task date. So let's get rid of this. All right, and all we're going to say is to do uh, get to do task date. Uh, oh, we're going to put the ID in. All right, so now we have the date. So in the next video, we're going to we're going to want to edit these if we want and then also delete them. So we'll take care of that in the next video. All right, so we can view to do's. We can add them. Now we want to be able to edit them and delete them. So we're going to put a couple buttons on the details page. All right, so let's go to to do.php and we're going to go down to the bottom but above the hooder the the hooder <laughs> the footer include 
we're going to put in some links. Uh, we'll say A class and we'll format them with bootstrap. This will be button primary. This will be the edit. Okay, then we'll have the delete. Delete is actually going to be its own form. Okay, it's just going to be a form with a button because we want it to make a post request. So we'll say uh, form action. And the form action is going to be itself. Okay, so we'll say PHP server PHP self. All right, and then the method is going to be post. Okay, and then we're just going to put in, let me put this on its own line. Okay, so we're going to have an input type is going to be submit. And let's give it not a class, let's give it a name. And we'll say delete submit. And class BTN danger, which will make it red. And let's also we want a, a, a hidden field because we want to pass along the ID. So we'll say input type is going to be hidden. And then the value is going to be the ID, which uh, we can get right here. So we can just pass that in. All right, so value PHP echo ID. All right, and we also got to give it a name. So we'll say name and we'll say ID, ID field. Cool. All right, and we're going to do the delete before we do the update. All right, so we're going to go up here and let's go. right here and then we're going to test to see if the form was submitted so we're going to say if post delete submit actually we have to say if it is set all right then we'll just go ahead and echo submit it. All right, so let's save that. Oh, we didn't put a value for this input. Uh, where is it right here? And then we'll put value delete. And we'll fix the position after. So if we say delete, we get submitted. All right. So what we want to do is when the delete is submitted, we're going to let's let's grab this. And then we're going to say to do remove to do. And actually this can go above it so that we can grab the ID. All right, then we'll just pass it in like this. Okay, now we'll go to the, the to-do class and we need to create that. So let's just copy that. And this is gonna be remove to-do. And we're going to change find one to remove. All right. And then we'll redirect. 
Actually, I'm sorry. We don't want we don't want this cursor here. So get rid of that, and then we're going to redirect back to index PHP. And yeah, that's I think that should do it. Yeah, so let's save that and let's reload this page. Dinner with parents. Actually, let's delete meeting with boss, delete, and there we go. Okay, pick up kids from school since we have the date. It's kind of weird here. Let's delete this. All right, so now we can add to do's, we can read them, we can delete them. Now we just want to be able to edit them. All right, so let's go back to todo.php and let's see, the, the delete form here, I'm gonna just add a class of pull write. There we go. Okay, so the edit, this is gonna just bring us to a new page. All right, so the link is right here we're going to have it go to slash uh, slash to do's slash edit dot php and we're going to tack on the ID as a parameter alright so we'll say ID equals uh, let's see this right here um, no not that yeah I'll grab that put that right here actually you know what we'll just put the ID like this um, PHP echo ID all right let's see if that goes to the right place okay so down below you can see uh, edit PHP and then we have the ID all right so now we need to go and create edit PHP All right, now the, the form is gonna be just like the add form, so let's just copy this whole thing for now. All right, and let's see what do we wanna do. This is good. Before we deal with submitting the form, we need to get the current values into the form. So that means we need to basically do the same thing that we did on todo.php. All right, so we're gonna copy this. And then, uh, let's see. We're gonna do this. All right, and then We'll grab that. Okay, so this will go in the name field value. Okay, so that should get us the name. Let's just try that out first. There it is, dinner with parents. Now for this, we have to do something a little different because it's a select list. So in order for it to be selected, it has to have the text selected. So we're going to put a conditional right here, and we're going to say PHP, and then we want to say if, and let's just grab this, and this is, we're looking at the category here. So if the category is equal to work then we're going to echo selected uh, that goes there all right so we'll copy that All 
right, and then for this one, this one will be if it equals family, and then this one will be if it equals other. All right, so now if we go back, okay, it's still saying, let me just check this out. Okay, so we're not getting that. If get to do ID category equals work, Oh, there we go. All right, so now it's at family. All right, so we're gonna do the same thing for priority. So we'll just grab one of these. And we're gonna put that right here. Except we're gonna check priority. And if this equals, what, low? And we want to replace this. Okay, so this will be if it's normal. And then this will be if it's high. All right, let's make sure we have no errors. I'm pretty sure it's normal here anyway. Let's see if these are selected. Yeah, down here is selected. And then this one. selected family all right so description we can just throw in there we'll copy this and we just want this is a text area so we want to put it right here and let's change that to description and then due date we can put that in as a value since it's really just a string. Oops. Okay, we'll just change this to task date. And let's check it out. All right, so we have everything there. So now when we submit the form, it's gonna go up here and it's gonna do whatever we put here. So we're not gonna do add to do because if we do that, it's just gonna create a new, a new, um, a new to do. All right, so we wanna update it. So we're gonna change this to update to do. All right, and then we just wanna pass in post, but we also wanna pass in ID. All right, so we'll save that and then we'll go to the class and we have to create the update. So let's grab this, it's pretty similar to that. And we're gonna change this to update. And then we wanna also pass in an ID. All right, so this is all the same, that's fine. That's fine. All right, and then we're gonna change that to update. And we still wanna pass in the document, but we want the ID. So up here in remove to do, I'm gonna grab this query right here. And we're gonna put that as the first parameter here. All right, so we'll save that. And then let's go back and see if we can update this. All right, so dinner with parents, you can see parents is lowercase. Let's make that an uppercase and we'll make this high and submit. And you can see now parents is uppercase and priority is high. If we click edit, priority is already on high for us. All right, so that's it really. As far as CRUD operations, we can now uh, create, read, update, and delete to-dos using the PHP driver, or the Mongo driver for PHP.
All right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed this project, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, in chapter six, we're gonna be building an invoice slash client management system using the mean stack. Okay, so the mean stack is MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node. Okay, so we'll be setting up, up a RESTful API, and this is something we've done before, but we're also gonna be implementing a front end using Angular, all right? So we'll have our back end RESTful API, and then our Angular front end, which we can use to get data, uh, insert data, update, and delete data. All right, and we'll be using Mongoose as our ORM, our Object Relational Mapper. All right, so Mongoose is basically a driver that allows Express to talk to MongoDB. All right, so we have quite a few sections here. Uh, the introduction, section two, will set up our ex Express uh, API and the customer model. Section three will be completing the backend API. Section four, we'll go ahead and start to create our client using Angular. Section five, we'll be, be able to display customers and invoices. Section six, we'll be able to add customers and invoices. And section seven, we'll be able to edit and remove customers and invoices. So you'll learn how to build applications using the very popular mean stack. You'll learn how to make HTTP requests using the Angular HTTP module, and you'll learn how to use the Mongoose ORM for Express. All right, so that's it, let's get started. I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome to your next project. In this project, we're gonna be building a client management app, an invoice management app called Invoicer and we're going to use the mean stack and if you don't know what the mean stack is it's mongodb express js angular js and node js all right so we use node and express for our server api and we're using angular for the front end all right angular is a front end web framework um, that is built on sort of an mvc uh, uh, model view controller design pattern and um, we're gonna use that on our client side. All right, and we're gonna build this from scratch. We're not gonna use any generators or anything like that. Uh, so let's go ahead and create a new folder and we're gonna call this invoicer. All right, the first thing we're gonna do, let's go into that. Uh, whoops, I gotta go into my projects and then invoicer. All right, so First thing, we need an app.js file, so let's create that. Okay, that's our main entry point to the server. Now, um, we've done similar things to what we're gonna do on the back end here. We're gonna, we're gonna create a RESTful API and um, communicate with it through Angular on our client side. So we're gonna want to uh, create a package.json file, which will hold all the information about our app as well as the dependencies. So we can actually create that using npm init. All right, so for the name, we'll just use the default invoicer version, description, just say simple client management entry point app.js author. All right, so that'll do. Now let's go ahead and open up package.json and we're gonna add our dependencies here. So we're gonna go right here. Dependencies. All right, so we don't have a lot. Um, we're gonna need, of course, Express. And we're gonna use Mongoose for our database, um, to connect to our database. All right, and then we're also gonna need the body parser. And that's so we can uh, basically get information, get submissions from forms and things like that. 
Okay, so that should do it for our dependencies, at least for now. So let's save that. And then to install them, we're going to go and do an npm install. Uh, what's this? Failed to parse JSON. What did I do? Uh, oh, we need a comma right here. All right. And this is the Angular website if you want to learn more about it. The documentation is pretty good. Um, there are a lot of terms that Angular uses, like directives and um, two-way data binding and a bunch of other things. Um, but it's actually really easy. Um, once you once you read a little about it and you start using it, it's it's, it's not bad at all. It's it's really helpful and you can do a lot of powerful things. All right, so let's see. We have our app.js package.json. Let's at least get this up and going. So we'll go to our app.js and we're going to require express. All right, uh, we're also going to need to um, instantiate it. We're going to create a variable called app and we're going to set that to express all right now we also need to require the body parser all right and also mongoose Now, to connect to Mongoose, I wasn't going to do this yet, but it's it's actually really easy. So it's just a couple lines. All right, so we're going to say Mongoose dot connect, and we want to put in MongoDB and localhost, and then what whatever we want our database to be called. In this case, it'll be called Invoicer. All right, then we need a database object. So we're gonna set that to mongoose.connection. Actually, no, no parentheses. Okay, now let's, um, let's add our client folder. All right, so we're gonna say new folder, client, and that's gonna be our static folder. But that's also where Angular is gonna go. All right. Um, so what we want to do here is say app.use. We want to specify that we want client to be our static folder. So we'll say express.static. Uh, dir name and then slash client. All right, so we also want, we want to be able to parse JSON. So we're going to say app.use. And we're going to use the body parser, and that's going to be body parsers dot JSON. All right, now just to get this up and running, let's create a route for the home page or the index page. just going to do uh, res.send okay and then we just need to do app.listen and we're going to listen on port 3000 and we'll just send a log started on port 3000 okay so let's go back to the command line and we're gonna run node app okay so it says it started on port 3000 so now if we go to localhost 3000 there we go now we've done we did the product catalog um, 
API. This is going to be very similar. Uh, but we put all our routes in the app.js file for that project. And I don't want to do that. I want to create uh, our own route files for the um, for the invoices, for the customers, and the invoices. All right, those are the two main objects. Um, we're not going to be using the home route because what I want to do to access these resources is slash API slash customers or slash invoices. All right, so for the home page, I'm just going to leave this route here and we'll just say, please use slash API customers or slash API um, invoices. And we need to restart the server for that. All right, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to create a folder called routes. And then in there, we're going to create a new file. And we're going to save this one as customers.js. Another one called invoices.js. All right, now in our app.js, we need to require these files. So we're going to say var customers equals require. Now we need to um, do a dot slash here. If we don't do the dot, it's going to automatically look inside the node modules folder as if it was um, a module. So we want dot slash routes slash customers. All right, and we're going to do the same thing for the invoices. Okay, and then down at the bottom, yeah, we'll go right here and we're going to say app.use. And we're going to specify we want slash API slash customers. And we want that to, to basically link to the customer's route, okay, which this is coming from here. All right, and then we want to do the same thing for invoices. All right, so basically we're making it so that any route we create in the customer's route file is going to have this before it. All right, so if we do a route to slash help, then really it's going to be slash API slash customer slash help. All right, so let's save that. Let's go into our customer's route file. And we're going to first require express again. Alright, and we need to use the router. Alright, so we're going to say variable router equals express dot router. Actually, that should be a uppercase R. Alright, and then we're going to want to bring Mongoose and, and the models in, but for now, we're just going to create the routes just so there we can access them. Alright, so first one will be to get all customers. All right, so we're going to say router dot get. Okay, we're using this just like as if we had app dot get in the app JS file. All right, uh, and this is going to be we're going to put a slash, but really it's going to be uh, API slash customers. All right, and then we'll have our function with our request request and response. All right, and for now, we're just going to send Okay, and then let's just test this out. Okay, it looks like we have an issue here. Router requires middleware function. 
auto.use. Oh, down at the bottom of our route files, we have to include module.exports equals router. Uh, that didn't fix it. That should work. Uh, huh. Okay, I know what the issue is. It's because our invoices route file is empty. So I'm just going to copy everything we have here. And we'll just change this to invoices route. All right, because we did require it in our app.js file, but it's just a blank file, so it's not it's not working right. So let's go ahead now. And now it starts for us. All right, so now we should be able to go to slash customers. Um, I do slash, oh, I'm sorry, API customers. All right, so we get the customer's route, and we should be able to go to invoices, and we get the invoices route. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to set up the model. Okay, so we're using Mongoose. That means we, we're going to create uh, a new folder called models, and that's where we're going to model our data. Okay, so we're going to have two files. We're going to have customer.js and invoice.js alright so we'll start with customer so we need to require mongoose and since we've done something like this um, I will be doing some copying and pasting just to move things along because we have both the front the back and the front end to do All right, so we need uh, Customer schema So we'll say var Customer schema is going to equal mongoose dot schema All right, we're going to have first name okay so the type is going to be string and we're going to set required to true all right so we'll copy that all right so first name last name and company we're going to allow the logo URL okay these are all strings that's not uh, company is not required neither is logo uh, then we'll have an email email will have required then we'll have phone that won't be all right then we're gonna have address and then the address is gonna be an embedded document itself all right so we'll have a street we'll have city state and zip all right and then the last one we're going to have is created at okay and that's going to be a date and i want it to have a default of date dot now okay no parentheses and that's just going to insert the current date and time Okay, so those are the fields or the properties. Now we're going to create our object down here. We're going to say var customer. 
and set that to module dot exports equals mongoose dot model and then we're going to pass in customer and also the schema all right so that'll be our object and that, that'll be accessible outside of the file all right now we're going to have all of our functions down here um, things like get customers and get customer by ID add customer uh, we could do this all in the route and we could deal directly with the database in the route but I think it's better to encapsulate um, all of our object functions down here so let's just create the first one um, this will be to get customers Oops. Why is it doing that? All right, so we're going to say uh, module dot exports uh, dot get customers, and that's going to be a function. All right, and the function will take a callback and a limit. All right, and then we're going to say customer dot find okay so now we're, we're dealing with mongodb and we're going to have a callback in there and dot limit this is totally optional if if, if they want to limit or not and then we're going to have let's sort it so we'll say sort all right and then in here let's sort by first name all right so first name and let's make that ascending and that should do it so we'll save that and then we got to go back to the customers route and we're gonna go in here and we have to bring the model in so we're going to set customer is going to be equal to require and we're going to go dot dot slash models slash customer dot js and we'll also bring in the invoice All right, so now we can use this customer object. All right, so in here in the route, we're going to say customer uh, dot get customers, which we just created. All right, and we're going to pass in a callback. Okay, this callback will have an error and customers. All right, then what we want to do is we'll just check for the error. Okay, if there is an error, let's just send it. All right, and then down here, we're just going to, if there's no error, we're just going to respond with JSON, and we're going to pass in customers. All right, so if we save that and restart the server, which we have an error date is not defined date is not defined oh that just needs to be an uppercase D all right so now if we reload customers or API customers we get an empty array okay so that's that's exactly what we should be getting because we don't have any customers yet all right, so I'm going to stop the video here now that we can actually fetch the customers if we had some. Uh, in the next video, we'll try to finish up the server side API uh, so that we can move on to Angular and the client side. Hey guys, how's everybody doing? In the last video, we created our base app and all the files. We created the customer model 
All right, so now what we want to do is we want to move on and create the invoice model, and then we want to try to be able to add, uh, at least add customers in this video. All right, because right now we can list customers. If we go to our API URL, it gives us back an empty array because there's nothing there right now. All right, so we want to be able to add them. Okay, so let's go to invoice uh, models and then invoice JS. But before we do that, let's just copy all of this so we have something to, to start with. All right, so we're gonna, just going to change all this stuff to invoice. Okay, so this will be invoice schema, and then we need the invoice fields. Okay, now as far as data modeling, there's a few different ways we could have done this. Um, we could have did without the entire invoice schema and just put invoice invoices as an embedded array in the customer schema. But that's the that's the method that we've been doing. So I wanted to show you a different way. All right, just so we can separate the two. So the first field here is actually going to be customer. All right, and it's going to be the customer ID. So what we're going to do is we're going to instead of just saying type string, it's going to be uh, mongoose dot schema dot types dot object ID. All right, so we're saying that this field is going to be an object ID, and then we're going to add a reference. Okay, we're going to add a reference to customer. All right, and this gives the two a relationship. It makes it easier to work with, and we can get invoices and customers from one command. All right, so next thing will be the service that the invoice is for. Uh, then we'll have the price. And then we'll have the due date. We'll just say due. Okay, and we're going to keep the date as a string just for simplicity and we don't really need the we need it as the date we're not doing any kind of calculations or anything uh, email we'll change this to status all right so status could be um, I don't know open or unpaid paid maybe overdue things like that and then we'll just have the created at, so we can get rid of these two here. All right, so that's our invoice schema, and obviously you could get much more in depth than this if you were building a, a professional production invoicing system. Uh, but this is just to just to show you the ropes and, and give you a foundation so that you can actually build those kinds of programs yourself. All right, so now we're going to change this to invoice. And this, a lot of tedious little changes, but it's still faster than typing it all out again. Invoice schema, and we might as well have the get invoice function or get invoice says. All right, and then this right here. All right, so this is coming from here which comes from the model above and let's see we'll sort let's sort by created at created at and let's say descending alright so that's good for now let's save that and let's just do the same thing we did with customer. If we go back to app.js, I'm sorry, not app.js, we want to go to our routes and then customers. And you can see we have this function here. Let's copy that. Actually, let's copy all that. Okay, and we're going to replace this. And then here we're going to say invoice dot get invoices function. It's going to give us back all the invoices, and then we're going to send that in JSON format. OK, 
Okay, so now let's restart the server. And if we go to API invoices, we also get an empty object, which is exactly what we want. All right, so let's move on to posting data. All right, now I'm not going to go and build the front end right now and build a form. What I'm going to do is just test with REST Easy just to make sure it works, and then we'll move on to that. All right, so let's go to the customer model and let's go down. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's do the single, um, getting a single customer. All right, so just copy this. So this will be get customers, and this will be get customer. We'll even call it get customer by ID. All right, and then it's going to take in an ID and a callback. We can get rid of the limit. It's just one. All right, and then we're going to say customer dot find by ID, and then we're going to pass in the ID. Still going to get the callback, and then we're going to get rid of this sorting and all that. All right, so easy enough. And then if we go to our customer route, let's copy this. And we'll just say get single customer. And this will be slash, uh, it'll just be slash ID or colon ID. Because since we're in the customer's route, it's actually going to be slash customers slash ID. All right, so then we're going to change this to get customer by ID. We're going to pass in the ID, which comes from the URL. So request.params.id. All right, and then let's just change this right here to just customer because it's only it's only going to give us one back. Same thing here. And that should do it. Now we can't really test it because we don't have an ID, um, but it's pretty easy, so um, I'm, I'm pretty confident that it's correct. And of course we'll just test it after. All right, now real quick, let's do the same thing with the invoices. All right, so we'll copy that and just change these. So now let's go to the invoice model and let me just copy the one from customer. So this will be get invoice by ID. And then we want invoice dot find by ID. Okay, so now we can move on to the posting. So let's go to our customer model. Now I'm going to paste this in. I'm going to be pasting um, a lot of stuff because we've already done it basically uh, and I don't want to just type it out because it'll take forever and we won't get to get to the front end. Alright so this is to add a customer. It's just called add customer. It's going to take in a customer object and then we're going to create another object called add and we're going to assign everything that comes in from the customer to each field here. And then we're going to run customer.create, pass in that add function and the callback. All right, so let's save that. And then we're going to go to the routes, the customer route. Let's go ahead and paste this in. Okay, so we're making a post request to slash customers. And what we're doing is we're taking the request body, which is everything that's inserted, and we're putting it into a uh, customer object. And then we're going to call the add customer function and pass in that object into the function that I just showed you. All right, and then it's going to go and it's going to just give us the JSON format. All right, so let's save that. And 
now what we need to do is try and make a post request. So if we go to the model, we can see these are the fields we need. So let's go over here and let's see, we want to go to localhost 3000 slash API slash customers. And we want to make a post request for the headers. Let's add the content type which is going to be application slash JSON and then the body. All right, so we're going to just create an object with all this. So I'm going to paste that in. All right, so what we have here, we have a first name, last name, company name, logo URL. This is just a, uh, an image of a stock um, royalty free logo that I got. Uh, email, phone, and then address, which is just some embedded data. Uh, we have the street, city, state, and zip. All right, so let's go ahead and try to submit this. Let me just copy this in case we need it again. Whoops. All right, so cannot post a. Oh, wait a second. Did we restart the server? I don't even think we saved this. Uh, so routes customers we have our post and let's restart the server all right and let's try that again okay so we got a 200 okay we got our response so now let's go ahead and check API customers and there he is all right, now if we want to test the single view or just getting one, we'll copy his ID, go like that, and it gives us John Doe. All right, so that's working great. Next we'll do the, let's do the edit. All right, so, um, so in the customer's model, let's go to that first. Uh, right under the add customer, we need the update customer. Okay, which is pretty similar. Uh, we're setting a query equal to the ID that's passed in, and then our update is just gonna match those fields, and then we're gonna call find one and update. All right, and then on the route side for customers, um, we're gonna need to do, one second, we're gonna, we're gonna need to make a put request Okay, so router.put, this is going to be slash customers slash ID. Okay, we're getting the ID from the URL. Customers coming from the body, from the form. And then we're calling update customer, which we just created. All right, so let's save that. And then we'll reload the server. All right, and then let's go over here. I'm going to change this to a put. All right, we're also going to need the, the user's ID or the customer's ID and we're going to put that here and then that can stay the same and then let's just change change them to Jane Doe okay so we got a response so let's check this and you can see now it's updated as Jane Doe alright so that's how we can update now we need to do the same thing with the invoices. All right, so let's go to our invoice model. And let me just grab this. Okay, so that's our update invoice model function. And then in the routes invoices. paste that in all right same type of thing so let's restart the server all right and we'll go to so we'll clear the whole the whole thing here and let's say HTTP localhost 3000 slash invoices slash and we're going to need to put the ID there. This is going to be a put request. Paste in the body we had before. 
and let's grab the ID. All right, and let's see, headers. Okay, now let's, do, do, let's just change computer repair to PC repair. Okay, we'll see what happens. Uh, looks like we didn't get any response. Oh, I have 300, should be 3,000. 404 not found, cannot put. Let me see, do we have that? Invoices router.put. Let's restart the server. Huh. Let's take a look at the query, make sure nothing's wrong here. Invoices. Oh, we've got the API should be API slash invoices. All right, so now we get a 200 okay. If we go back, now it's PC repair. All right, so that takes care of the update on both the customer and the invoices. Let's go on to the re removals or the delete. Okay, so we'll go to our customer's model and let's go down to the bottom. And we're going to just paste this in. Very simple. Remove customer, pass in the ID, queries the ID, calls customer.remove. All right, now in the customer route, I'm going to make a delete request. Okay, ID is coming from the URL. And then we're going to call remove customer, which we just created. All right, so we'll save that. And let's, let's see, let's clear this. And we're gonna need the ID of the customer. Okay, you want to put the ID in the URL and then we're going to make a delete request. Okay, we got a 404 not found, so I think we need to just restart. Two hundred okay. Go back here, reload, and it's gone. Alright, and we'll do the same thing with invoices. So we'll go to the model for the invoice. And let me just grab this. All right, same thing. And then we'll go to the routes of the invoice. And we're going to do our delete request. And we can test that out. Let's reload the server. All right, and what we'll do here is let's get the invoice ID. And we're gonna replace this with it. And then replace customers with invoices. All right, and that worked. So we now have full CRUD functionality in our application uh, for both customers and invoices. So in the next video, we're going to start to work on the front end. So I will see you then. Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we finished up our back end API so we can create, read, update, and delete customers and invoices um, using requests, using JSON requests. Now we want to build the front end so that we can actually have an interface to do that stuff with. All right. so. Our front end is going to go in the client folder which we've created and there's nothing in there right now so we're going to go ahead and start creating some files. 
All right, so first thing we're going to want is an index.html page, all right, which is going to be the, uh, the main HTML page for the, the front end. All right, we're also going to need uh, a new document, and we're going to call this app.js, all right. This is basically the entry to Angular, all right. So this is the client side entry file much like the app.js in the root is for the server side. All right, uh, next we're gonna need a folder called controllers. That's gonna handle our Angular controllers, which we're only gonna have one. Um, oh, I'm sorry, we're gonna have, no, we're gonna have more than one. I'm gonna have the invoices. Let's create them now, actually. Uh, we're gonna have invoices.js. We're gonna have customers customers controller and then we're going to have the dashboard all right uh, and then let's see what else we need we're going to need a CSS folder we will be using bootstrap but let's just create a um, custom style sheet as well Alright, we're going to have, uh, let's have an images folder, and also a views folder. Alright, we're going to have quite a few different views, but for now let's just create the dashboard. Now the dashboard, basically it's just going to be a landing page uh, for, the, for the, the interface. We'll have links to go to the invoices and the customers pages, which is where we'll be doing most of the work. All right, um, so let's go ahead and let's open up, let's open up the index HTML and also the uh, client side app.js file. Now we're gonna be using Bootstrap and we could just go and grab it and put it in our file structure, but I wanna use Bower, which is a, um, a client side package manager and we can easily install it with that. So let's go to our invoicer project folder and we're gonna CD to the client folder, which is the front end. And um, if you don't have Bower, just do NPM install uh, dash G Bower. All right, so what we're going to do is say Bower install bootstrap, uh, which I guess we don't have Bower. <laughs> That's kind of weird. All right, so we'll do npm install G Bower. Alright, so now we should be able to do Bower install bootstrap. Uh, say no. Now when you install bootstrap, it also installs jQuery. Uh, not installs, but it, it brings the jQuery script into the file structure for us. And you can see right here, jQuery 214. All right, so the next thing we want to install is Angular. Okay, so we'll say Bower install Angular. All right, and then the last thing we want to install is something called Angular Route. And that's going to allow us to have a router with Angular, which is um, really helpful. All right, so let's cd dot dot back out to the main folder. And if we go up here and we look under client and then Bower components, you can see all the things that we've just installed. All right. Now let's go to the index page and we'll start to create our main index file. OK, 
Okay, now we won't be having to type this stuff on every view. Uh, basically, we'll just have a placeholder for it inside of this file. Uh, let's see, title, invoicer, client, management. All right, so we're going to need to link to a couple things. Uh, we need our bootstrap CSS file. And the location of that is going to be slash bar components slash bootstrap slash dist slash CSS slash bootstrap dot CSS. All right, and then we also want to link to our style sheet that we created. And that's going to be, that's just going to be in slash CSS, slash CSS style. All right. And that should be good for the head. So let's create our body tags. Now we're going to go to the Get Bootstrap site. And if we go to uh, getting started, there should be some ex uh, sample templates. All right, and we want, where is it? This is like an admin one. Oh, you know what? I don't think it's at get bootstrap. Oh yes, it is right here. All right, so this is like an admin type template. Um, we're going to use this, but we're going to dumb it down. We're going to get rid of this stuff and uh, some of the other stuff. So let's do a control U and we want to grab everything that is in the body except for the script, the scripts at the end. So right here. All right. And we're going to put that inside of our body, save it. And then we need the CSS. So if we go up to the top and you'll see this dashboard CSS, we want to grab everything in there and we're going to put that into our style CSS file. All right. So now if we go and let's see, let's run node server. Um, I'm sorry, node app. And we'll go, let's close that, go back to localhost. And now we basically have that demo content. All right, so we're going to want to change a lot of things here. So let's go back to index. All right, and if we go to the top, let's first deal with this nav bar. All right, so let's change project name change that to invoicer and then let's see the links here let's change this one to add customer and then it's going to go to slash number sign customers slash add now that's not a route yet we're going to be creating that all right, and then this next one will say add invoice. And this one will go to slash number sign invoices slash add. And then we're going to get rid of these other two. All right, so that's that. And then this is the search form in the, in the nav bar. We don't want that. So we're just going to delete that. And then this part here, I believe. Yeah, this is for the sidebar. So we just want a couple links in the sidebar here. Uh, let's see. So overview. Let's change that to dashboard. And let's get rid of the span with the current.
and the link for now will just say slash number sign all right and then underneath that is going to be invoices and that's going to go to um, slash number sign invoices and then customers same thing all right and then we'll get rid of this okay then we're going to get rid of the rest of these ul's we don't want this or this all right so that should be the sidebar next is this main area um, we're not going to want basically from this h1 we don't want any of these things at the top so we'll go to here okay so that got rid of all this now we have the section title with the tables uh, what I'm going to do for now is I'm going to keep one of the table rows and delete the rest of them all right so for this let's change that to dashboard all right and then we'll save all right so much more simplified now the dashboard this isn't going to be on our index page this is going to be coming from a view now in order to be able to use views we need to set up angular at least the base uh, setup all right so for the dashboard let's copy this down to the ending table actually where's this end this div all right so that div ends here so let's grab all this we're going to cut that and then we're going to go to views dashboard oh, i'm sorry this should be dashboard html okay and then in there we're going to paste that and save it and close it all right so back to index we need to implement angular now so first of all let's go up to the html tag and say ng app is going to be equal to my app all right now right now angular doesn't exist in this application we need to include it so we're going to go down at the bottom right before the lat the ending body tag and we have a lot to include so i'm going to just paste this in make it a little easier and let's make this wider okay so first we have jquery okay and that's coming from bower components next is the the main angular js file also bower components uh, then we have the angular route then we have the bootstrap js which comes from uh, bower components then we have our main client side app js file which is this one right here all right and then we have all of our controllers all right, so you, all these things have to be included. All right, so let's go up a little. I think the only other thing we need to do is put our view placeholder. So basically anything that comes into the main area of the application, we want it to show up right here. All right, so all we have to do is create a div and we're gonna say, I'm gonna use the ng view directive. All right, so any view we create will show up right here. So we'll save that. Now we should start to get error messages uh, in our console. Or not yet, actually. All right. Um, let's go. Let's see. Let's go to our app.js because we haven't initialized our app yet. All right, and to do that, we're going to say var my app is going to be equal to angular dot module. All right, and then in here we'll have the name, which is my app. Okay, and now we need to inject our dependencies. And I've went over this in past projects. Um, if you know if you know anything about Angular, then I'm sure you know what dependency injection is. 
basically if we have other things that we want to bring into our app other scripts uh, whatever it may be we need to put them here and even if there are no other ones we at least need to have these brackets all right we are going to bring in one we're going to bring in ng route and that comes from that angular route file that we set up through Bower and it just allows us to use a routing system so we can send certain URLs to certain places and we can initialize certain controllers and templates all right and the way we do that is through a config so we're gonna say my app dot config and then in here we'll have a function all right and then for this function we're gonna pass in route provider all right and then we're gonna say route provider dot when and then we're gonna pass in whatever the URL we want in this case slash which is the home page okay so we're saying when it's the home page then we're gonna load a certain controller all right and that controller is gonna be the dashboard controller all right and then the template I'm gonna say template URL that's gonna be in the views folder and it's gonna be called dashboard.html which we have we've already created all right so that's how the routing system works and we can do this for whatever URL we want to do it for so let's see um, what I also want to do is let's get rid of that and then we're going to say dot otherwise okay and what this is going to do it's going to allow us to set um, it's going to allow us to redirect to a certain place if the, the URL that's typed in doesn't match anything that we put in here all right which we obviously want to be um, the dashboard all right so what we're going to do here is we're just going to say redirect uh, redirect to slash dashboard actually no we want redirect slash all right so we'll save that now we need to at least set up our dashboard controller so we're gonna go into controllers and then dashboard JS and once again we're gonna say var my app is equal to angular dot module and then we're gonna pass in my app alright and then we can take my app and call dot controller Oops. okay so controller then we'll put in the name which will be dashboard controller all right and then we're going to have all of our dependencies okay so we have a few we're going to need the scope that's what allows us to bind data from to and from the view we're going to have the http which allows us to make get and post and put requests and delete requests and all that and then finally the location which will help out with routing and redirections and things like that all right so those are the dependencies um, we also want to add let's add another comma and then we're going to add our function all right and then the function needs to take in those same parameters that we injected so all of these we're going to put in here but we don't want the quotes all right and then for now we're not really going to be doing anything in the dashboard because it's just basically a landing page so let's just say console.log and we'll say uh, dashboard controller initialized and we'll save that 
And then let's go ahead. We, sh we shouldn't need to restart the server because it's all client side, but sometimes I like to anyways. All right, and let's go ahead and reload. And down here you can see we get dashboard controller initialized. So that means that everything's running smooth, no errors. Uh, so we're ready to move on. So we're going to stop it here, and in the next video, we'll go ahead and we'll start to create our customer's controller, and uh, we'll be able to add our functionality for that. So I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we set up our initial client-side files and folders, and we have it so that our dashboard controller loads and just displays the template or the view to us. Um, now what we're going to do is work on customers so that we can uh, create our views for, for the customers and see them and add them and all that. So we're going to start in the client side app.js where our Angular routes are. And what we're going to do is go right here and we're going to say dot, dot when. Alright, and then in here we're going to pass in the, the uh, route, which is going to be slash customers. All right, and then we're going to have another parameter with the options. All right, so we need a controller. The controller we're going to want is customers controller. All right, and then the template URL is going to be views slash customers dot html okay so we'll save that and now we have to create those things so first off the controller let's copy the one we did for dashboard and then go to the con customers controller paste that in and change this to customers controller and then just to test it out we're going to log that all right so we'll save that now for the view we're going to create a new file and save it as customers.html and let's say this is customers all right just to test things out All right, so we'll go to whoops. We'll go to slash, and there we go. So you can see that the route and view are now connected. All right, now the dashboard view. I'm going to open that up. We don't want this table here for that. Uh, what we do want to use this for customers. So let's just copy this, and then we're going to just delete everything here but the heading and we'll just have a paragraph this is the dashboard area for invoicer please use the options in the side and top menu and I guess that's fine Okay, so save that and dashboard should now be. Actually, we just got to go to just the root URL. Okay, so that's our dashboard. Now, in the customers view, we're going to paste in that template or that table. And let's change this to customers. Move this over a little bit. All right, so let's edit some of this. Uh, the headers will have the customer name, we'll have the company, and the email. And we can get rid of this last one. All right, now down here we're going to have to loop through. Um, the response that we get but we haven't done anything in the controller yet so for now let's just save that how it is all right so customers 
and we need to get dynamic values into here. So let's go to the customer's controller. And what do we want to do right here in this view? We, want, we just want to get the customers. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say scope dot get customers. And that's going to be a function. All right, and this is where we want to communicate with our backend API. And to do that, we can use the HTTP module to make get requests. So HTTP get, and we want to get from slash API slash customers. All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to say dot success. Oops. And then in there, we're going to have a function. All right, and that function is going to take a response object. And then we're just going to assign scope.customers to that response. All right, and since we, we put this scope on the dot customers, that this is accessible to us in the view. So if we save that and then go back to the customers view. What we're going to do is we need a loop. And to do that in Angular, we're going to use a directive inside of this TR tag, because this is what we want to repeat for each customer. So we're going to say ng repeat. All right, ng repeat equals customer in customers. Okay, now this right here, this customers is coming from this right here, which is coming from the response that we get from making the request. All right, hopefully that makes sense. All right, now in here we can add our dynamic values. So we're going to have, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to have our ID. So we can say uh, we want to use double curly braces, and then we can say customer dot underscore ID. All right, next would be the name. So this would be customer dot name. Actually, is it name or do we have? Yeah, we have first and last name. So let's do first name. And we'll copy that. And then just space and then we'll do last name. All right, and then we have what company. So we'll do customer dot company and email and then we want to have our buttons okay we want an edit and a delete button and actually let's put an empty th up here just so it doesn't look weird all right and then the buttons will go here and i'm just going to paste these in all right, so we have a link going to slash customers slash details slash customer ID. All right, so we didn't make this yet, this route for details, but we will. And then under that or next to that, we'll have an edit button, which goes to customers, edit, and then the ID, and then a delete. And the delete has to be done through an Ajax request. So um, actually, no, it doesn't. You know what? It doesn't in this situation. Um, what we're doing is we're going to call a function in our ng click attribute called delete customer and then we'll take care of that in the controller all right so let's save that all right so we don't actually have any customers or do we let me just try let me make a quick request here Oh, we do have customers. All right, so let's take a look at this. Um, oh, we, you know what the issue is? If we look at the controller, we have a get customers function, but we're not running that. So in order to run that, we're going to go to this div right here, and we're going to add a directive called ng init. And that'll just run whatever you put in it. So we want to run 
get customers. All right, so now, now they show up. All right, you can see we have two customers. So now that we can see them in the table, let's work on the details view. All right, so let's see. Details should go to customers slash details. All right, so we're gonna need to create another route. So let's go to our client side app.js file and I'm gonna copy this. And then this one, this is gonna to go to customers slash details slash and then the ID. All right, and we are gonna call customers controller but we want the template to be customers or actually let's say customer details. All right, so we'll create that in the views folder. Let's create a new file and we're gonna save it as customer details.html. Now, before we can do anything here, we need to fetch the customer. All right, so let's go back to the controller. Let's copy this. All right, and we're gonna change this to just get customer, okay, singular. And then we need the ID, so we'll say var ID. And that's gonna be equal to, actually, you know what? We have to include another dependency up here and that's gonna be route params. That's gonna help us get stuff from the URL. So right here, we're gonna put in, oops, dollar sign route params. All right, and then be sure to add it to the function as well. All right, and then down here we can say route params and then dot ID. All right, now what we need to do is we're gonna say get uh, API customers slash and then wanna concatenate on that ID. And then we're gonna set scope dot customer to the response. Okay, so now if we save that, let's go back into the details template and I'm gonna go ahead and paste this in. All right, so the div that's wrapping everything, we put ng init and then get customer to run it. All right, and then we're gonna have an image. And if you look at the source, it's customer.logoURL. So whatever is there for that. Um, then we just have a clear fix. And then the H2, which is gonna have the customer's first name and last name. And then we have an unordered list of information for instance company email phone number basically everything that's in the customers collection all right so let's save that and hopefully this works and there we go so we have the the URL for the image all the information here um, I do want to make this image smaller though so let's go to our style sheet all right, and let's actually give that image a class. So in the details template, actually I did, image small. All right, so back in the CSS, we'll say dot image small, and we'll give it a width of 115 pixels. All right. So that's a details page. Now I'd like to do the same thing with invoices. All right, we wanna be able to view the table of them and then click on the details. All right, so let's go to our controller for invoices. And I'm actually just gonna copy the, the entire customer's controller. Whoops. And we're gonna put that in invoices. All right, and then we're just gonna change some things.
All right, and then this one will be get invoices. And we're going to call API slash invoices. Okay, it's going to get a response. We're going to set scope dot invoices to that response. And then for this one, this will also just be get invoice. IP, IP, ID is coming from the URL. And then this right here should just be invoice. All right, so we'll save that. Now let's go to the views. Actually, let's go to the app.js so we can actually create the uh, routes. I'm going to copy these two here. And then we're just going to change them to invoice. All right, then this one. This one template URL is going to be invoice details. All right, so I'll save that. Now for the templates or the views, when I say template or views, it's the same thing. So we're gonna save this one as invoices.html and we'll create another one and we'll save this as invoice details.html. All right, so we'll start with invoices. And I'm going to go ahead and paste that in. All right, so same as customers, we have a table. Uh, we're calling this get invoices function. And then we're going to do an ng repeat through each invoice. And then we'll output the ID, the first name, last name, all of that. Now, this isn't going to work yet, I, I don't think. So let me just, let's try this. Okay, it, it is working, but you'll notice that the customer isn't there. So what we need to do is we need to go to the model in the back end. So let's go to model and then invoice JS. All right, and then w when we see this um, get invoices, this is what we're using to get this page here. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add on to it. We'll go right after this limit and we're gonna say dot populate and then we want to pass in customer all right so what that'll do it'll make everything that's in the customer collection available to us so if we save that and restart all right so we're still not seeing it and I'm pretty sure that that's because of the way that we entered it because if we check it through here, okay, make a get request for the invoices, that actually calls the get invoices method, and you can see that there's no customer information. All right, so it's just something we're gonna have to deal with until we're able to add them through the interface. All right, so we'll just keep on going. Uh, let's take this active class off the sidebar. Um, so that's gonna be in, Say client index HTML and right here this class active let's just take that off okay so now what we want we want to get the, the uh, invoices details page all right and we added the route so you can see the URL is working um, so now we just need to add the actually let's look at the controller we have get invoice so that's good so we just need to go to the view which is uh, invoice details html and we're going to paste that in now again this probably isn't going to render how it should just because of the way that we added the current uh, records that are in there but we're going to have a div with the ng init of get invoice all right, so that'll get all the information for this particular invoice. And then we're gonna have an H3 tag with the first name, last name, 
um, company. Actually, this looks like we get first name and then first name. So we'll change that to last. All right, then we have the uh, street, city, state. We have the date, we have the status, and then we have the invoice info, like the service, the price, the due date. All right, so let's save that. All right, and as I mentioned, anything that's coming from the customer collection isn't showing up correctly. All right, so when we get to the functionality where we can add them through the interface, that'll all fix. So in the next video, we'll work on adding uh, invoices and customers through the interface, through these links up here. Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we made it so that we can see all of our invoices and customers, as well as the details view. Uh, now what I wanna do is I wanna be able to add them from here as well. All right, so we're gonna start out with the front end routes <clears throat> in the client side app.js file. We'll start with customers, so let's just add on to this. All right, so we're just saying when the URL says customers slash add, we're gonna use the customers controller and the view is gonna be add customer HTML. So we'll save that and then let's go add that view. Okay, we'll save it as add underscore customer dot HTML. And I'm going to pass this in because it's kind of a big form. All right, so we have an H2, add customer. Now, when the form submits, okay, this ng submit, it's going to call add customer, okay, which we need to create. And then we have the first name, last name, okay, company, logo URL, email, phone, address, city, state, zip, and then a submit button, all right. Um, now you can see as for the ng model for each one, um, for instance, we have for the company, it's going to be customer.company. For the logo URL, it's going to be customer.logo URL. Now the way our data is formatted, uh, this, the address is actually an embedded document. So for each aspect of the address, we'll have customer.address.whatever street. Okay, customer.address.city. All right, so just, just wanted to note that. All right, so let's save that. And then if we go to add customer. And we get the form. All right, now we need to create the function for when we submit the form which is this here, add customer. So we need to go to our controller and let's just copy that. Okay, so this will be scope dot add customer. And we're gonna get rid of this ID. And then instead of a get, we're gonna be making a post request. Okay, so we'll say post and um, we want it to go to API customers, no ID. And then success, actually I'm sorry, the second parameter is what we're passing in and that's gonna be the customer's object. Uh, so we'll say scope dot customer. All right, and if you remember all the form fields, they had customer dot whatever, that's all in this object right here. So we're passing that. All right, and then when that's done, we're gonna to wanna to redirect. So uh, we're gonna use window.location.href. And we wanna to go to slash customers. All right, and then on the back end, it should already be all set. If we look at um, routes and then customers, the one we're dealing with is this, we're submitting to this. All right, and the body is that customer object that we submitted. All right, so let's try it. So we'll add a customer, uh, let's say Harry Johnson, 
company, we'll say uh, one, two, three productions, whoops. Logo URL. All right, so let's just look for a stock logo. All right, so we'll just grab one of these. Actually, I don't want to say stock. Let's say free. All right, so we'll just grab this one here. So we want to grab the URL, copy it. Okay, email, phone number. We'll say School Street. Alright, submit. And it brings us back to the customers page and you can see that Harry Johnson now exists. And if we say details, it gives us all of his details. Alright. Now the next thing that we want is the ability to, to create an invoice. Alright, and I want to create an invoice and be able to also see the customer name here. Alright, so let's go to our routes to our app.js client routes and let's copy the last one we did okay this one is going to be invoices add okay controller is going to be the invoices controller and the template will be add invoice all right, so we can create that template or view. And I'm going to paste this in. All right, so we have a form. We have ng submit, and that's going to run add invoice. Now, we also want to run get customers. The reason for that is because we want to have a drop down of our customer names so that we can assign a customer to an invoice and you can see right here I have a select it has the ng model name of invoice dot customer ID and we have the options and basically we're gonna loop through every customer we have and then output that option the value is gonna be the customers ID but in the select list we'll see the the name and the company alright and then we just have the price the due date uh, the status and that's it. All right, so let's save that. And let's go to add invoice. Let's reload. Okay, and now customer. Okay, so that's not working. Um, so what we need to look at is get customers. All right, and the reason it's not is because we do have get customers in our, in our customers controller but that's not the controller we're using so we need to copy this and put it in the invoices because this is where it's looking okay so now now they're available alright so we're gonna choose Harry Johnson service um, we'll say I don't know computer network services price let's say um, 359.99 due date we'll say uh, 09 uh, 0920 status is unpaid okay so we submit and it's kind of just hanging let's oh we didn't create it yet we didn't create the add add invoices so let's actually copy the one we did for customers let me get out of this page okay so we have add customer let's copy that 
and then bring it to invoices and this will be add invoice okay we're going to post to API invoices scope dot invoice is what we're passing in that's all the form data and then we're just going to redirect to invoices All right, so we'll save that and let's try it again. Due date. Status is unpaid. All right, so now you can see that that was created and Harry Johnson is now displayed. All right, so it's working how it should. It's just that the way we entered them before didn't really work out too well. All right, not only that, but if we go and look at invoices, well, that's, we are looking at invoices. If we look at the details, now all of Harry's information, all the user information is there, all right. So what I want to do now is when we go to customers and we click on Harry, for instance, his details, it has all of his information, but I also want to have all of his invoices down here that he has. All right. So to do that, we're going to have to add to the back end a little bit. Um, let's see, let's go to our models and invoice.js and then let's go down to the bottom and I already have this here if you guys don't then make sure you do make sure you add it it's gonna be get customer invoices and it's gonna take in a customer ID alright and a callback and a limit and basically we're just gonna have a query and we're gonna match the the entered customer ID to the customer and then we're just gonna find it alright so make sure you have that we just scroll all the way over so you can see. All right, and save. And we need to have a route for this. So let's go to routes and then invoices. And I'm going to paste this in. All right, so the route is going to be invoices slash customer slash customer ID. All right, we're going to get the customer ID from the URL. We're going to pass it in to get customer invoices, which we just saw, and then just return the JSON. All right, so we'll save that. Now we're going to go back to the client side. We're going to go to our customer's controller. And let's see, let's just grab this. And we'll put it here. And we're going to call this get customer invoices and we need the ID so let's copy that and then we're gonna pass in API slash invoices slash uh, customer slash and then the ID alright and then we're gonna say scope dot customer invoices all right, so now this right here should be available to us in the view. So we'll save that. And then let's go to views and customer details. And we want to be down here. Now this div should actually end down here. So I'm going to do that. All right, and then I'm going to paste some stuff in here. All right, so what we have is a heading saying customer invoices, then we have a table, and the table has an ng init attribute, and that's gonna run get customer invoices, which we just created. All right, then we have just our table. We're gonna ng repeat through customer invoices, and then just output the invoice information along with the buttons, just like we have on the main invoices page. All right, so let's save that reload and now you can see down here we're gonna list all of Harry's invoices and we can 
see the details. Uh, this particular, actually one second, his details should work because if we go here, okay, so I think it's seeing the wrong ID. We got F94, it ends in, and in this one, it ends in F93. So let's take a look. Uh, okay, so what we do, what we have here is we're using the customer ID in the details path, which is wrong. Uh, we want just uh, let's see, we want customer invoice ID, I believe. Yeah, we want this invoice ID. So let's change. Where is it? Change this to invoice, okay, along with these ones as well. That one. And I think, yeah, that should be good. So let's save that and try it again. Okay, so if we say details, there we go. So it brings us to Harry's invoice. All right, great. So in the next video, we're going to learn how to edit these uh, customers and invoices and, um, and delete them. And that really should be it. All right, then we'll have a full client management system. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. In this video, we're gonna focus on being able to edit and delete invoices and customers. All right, so let's start with customers. Um, what we want is when we click on edit, obviously it doesn't go anywhere because we don't have the route set, but we want it to go to slash edit slash and then the ID. All right, so let's go to our front end routes, which are in the client folder in the app.js file. And we're gonna go down to the bottom here and let's grab, let's copy, this is for customers, let's copy this one. All right, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna say when customers slash edit slash ID, we're gonna use the customers controller and then the view is gonna be edit customer. All right, so we'll save that. And now let's go to views and we'll create a new file and we'll save it as edit customer dot HTML. Now I'm going to go ahead and paste this in and we'll go through it. Okay, so we just have a heading, a form. The form has this, an ng submit of update customer. Make sure that you change that. If you're copying your ad form, make sure you change add customer to update customer. Now we also need to add an ng init and that should be get customer because we need to actually get the customer to pre-fill the form. All right, and then each one, we just have our ng models, which are gonna be customer dot and then whatever that field is. All right, and then we just have our submit button. So pretty simple, let's save that. Now what we need to do is create this function here, update customer. All right, so let's go to our client side controller for customers and let's see we'll go ahead and uh, let's just copy I guess we'll copy add customer all right and we're going to change that to update now this is going to be a put request since it's an update so we're going to say HTTP put API customers and we need an ID, all right? Now this update customer doesn't have an ID passed in, but we can use it from the scope, okay? So instead of um, just API customers, we're just gonna add on to that and we're gonna say scope, scope.customer. Dot underscore ID, all right? And then the rest, yeah, the rest can stay the same. All right, so let's save that. And I think we should be able to do it now. So let's reload. 
All right, and let's just stick with Harry. That's the one that we created in the app. So we'll say edit. You can see all of his information. And let's change his name to Henry. All right, submit. And we have Henry Johnson. All right. So now let's do the same thing for the invoices. <clears throat> All right, so we're just going to go back to the app, app.js client file. And let's copy that. And we're just going to change customers to invoices. It's going to use the invoices controller. And it's going to use the edit invoice HTML. All right, and then we're going to go to our views and let's create a file called edit invoice.html and let's paste that in. Okay, so we have form, the ng submit is going to go to update invoice and we're also calling get invoice so that we can fill all the fields. Now another thing you'll notice is we're also calling get customers. The reason for that is we need them for the select list. Okay, we're gonna loop through the customers, spit out the, the ID as a value, and then the first, last name, and company as the text. All right, and then the rest, pretty much the same as the add form. So let's save that, and then we're gonna go into our invoice controller, and we'll go ahead and copy this. Oops. Okay, so this is going to be edit invoice, or I'm sorry, update. And we're going to call HTTP put. And we just want to add the scope ID on the end of this. Scope dot on um, scope dot invoice dot underscore ID. All right, and then pass in scope invoice redirect and that should be good all right um, let's go ahead and reload this we'll say Henry Johnson's invoice we'll edit um, okay so it looks like ev everything from the invoice collection is showing up but we're not getting the cust customer and that's because it's a select list so what we want to do is we want to go up to get invoice. That's what's being used to, to bring in the information here. Um, we're going to underneath this. <clears throat> we'll say fill select. So we should be able to say scope dot invoices. I'm sorry, scope dot invoice dot customer ID equals response dot customer dot underscore ID all right and then we'll say scope dot invoice dot status is equal to response dot invoice dot status Okay, and now we have the information. All right, so let's edit, we'll just say networking services paid. All right, and now you can see that networking services and it's set to paid. Okay, so last thing we wanna do is delete. All right, so let's go, let's start with the customer. All right, so we're gonna open up the views and we wanna open up customers.html. And then down here we have a button and we have ng click delete customer and then we're passing in the customer ID. All right, so all we have to do is go to our customers controller and say scope dot delete customer equals function and then we're going to call a delete so let's just 
throw that in there and we'll see HTTP delete and then we want API slash customers slash and then actually we should be passing in the ID alright and then we just want to change this to just ID alright and then we don't want to pass anything in like that alright so we'll delete it and that should be that okay so we'll save that now I think it's all set on the front end if we go to routes and then customers yeah we have our delete alright so let's try it let's delete one of these alright so that's not working oh we're in invoices that's why we'll go to customers there we go Ben Franklin he's gone alright John Doe gone so now for the invoices we're gonna do the same thing so we're gonna to go to uh, views and then invoices and just make sure that it has an ng click it's calling delete invoice and we're passing in the ID so we'll go back to the invoices controller let's actually comp copy the one from customers and put that right in here this will be delete invoice. Okay, HTTP delete invoices. All right, so we'll save that. Let's go to invoices, delete. There we go delete alright so that's our application we can pretty much do whatever we want for invoices and customers alright so hopefully you enjoyed this project and I'll see you in the next welcome to chapter 7 project 7 in this project we're going to be creating a CDN repository application alright so CDN is a content delivery network um, for instance, jQuery, Bootstrap, they all have their own CDN links um, so that you can include the project without actually having to download it and include it. Um, it's going to be a much more simplified version of a site like cdnjs.org. Um, we'll be implementing MongoDB on a Windows 8 machine. All right, up until this point, we've been using Linux, and now I'm going to show you how to set up MongoDB on Windows. All right, and we'll be using the mean.js platform. Okay, so mean.js is a prepackaged um, file and folder structure that includes uh, a lot of different things. It includes Grunt, the task, man task manager. Um, it includes its own routing system, things like that. Um, so we'll be using that. So section one is the intro, which you're watching now. Section two, we're gonna go ahead and create our Windows environment. Section three, we'll work on the module server files. And what that means is when you're working with mean.js, things are separated into modules. All right, um, we'll be creating a CDN module. So we'll create the server files. Then in section four, we'll, we'll create the content or the front end files. Section five will be formatting the views, uh, and then section six will work on searching and filtering CDNs. So you'll learn how to set up MongoDB in Windows. You'll learn how to build an app using the mean.js package. You'll learn how to create custom modules in the mean.js package, and you'll also learn how to use Angular filters to search and filter through data. Okay, so that's it. I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome to your next project. In this project, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to be using Windows. All right, so we've been using Linux Ubuntu up until this point, and now I want to show you how to install quite a few different tools um, and software onto Windows. All right, so I'm using a Windows 8 machine, 64-bit. All right, so we're going to need a couple things. We're going to need Node.js. 
because we're going to be building an application that uses Node. Uh, of course, MongoDB we're going to install. And the app we're going to build is going to be similar to, to the cdnjs.com website, which is a library of CDNs that you can use in your projects to include things like jQuery or Bootstrap, um, front end libraries. And um, we're going to build something like it, um, a little more simplified, just basically a directory of different libraries and the links to include. All right, um, so let's say we want jQuery. Okay, we get a bunch of results that pop up. And ours is going to work kind of like this. It's going to have us um, an input at the top, and we'll be able to filter results. All right, so that's what we'll be, built, be building. And we're going to use we're going to be using the mean stack. And if you don't know what the mean stack is, it's MongoDB, Express, Angular, and Node.js. All right, now we've already built an application using the mean stack, but in this in this project, we're going to be using mean.js which is kind of like a pre-made package um, or like a boilerplate that you can use and uh, it does a lot of the, the difficult things for you um, routing, uh, database connection, uh, front-end angular controllers uh, it pretty much gives you a, a starter app to work with so we're going to be using that and there's, a, there's <clears throat> quite a few steps to getting it up and running um, a lot of dependencies you need to install. For instance, we're going to need to install Python. All right, so uh, if you're on Windows, Python is really easy to install. It's just a, um, just a standard Windows installer. And we're going to download version uh, 2.7. Where is it? If we go to downloads, we're going to get uh, 2.7.10. All right, and in addition to Python, we're going to need some kind of version of Visual Studio. And I would suggest using, if you don't have it already, Visual Studio Express uh, 2012, because that seems to work really well with what we're doing. All right, so let's go ahead and get some of this installed. All right, so we'll start with Node.js. It's just a large download button right on the home page. Really easy to set up. Okay, so we're just going to run it. Okay, so we'll just go through this process really quick. Accept the agreement. Default directory is fine. All right, so while it's going, there is another tool that we're going to need now. Um, if you are a Windows user and you have uh, a shell um, program that you can use whether it's Windows command prompt or PowerShell that's fine but I'm gonna get something called um, it's a tool that comes with git for Windows and it's called git bash and it's basically a command line tool and it gives you additional tools to work with um, different types of Linux tools that aren't available um, through Windows command prompt alright so we're gonna grab that Wow, this is really slow, this machine. I think, yeah, where is it? Uh, git-scm.com is where you can get it. All right, so this also comes with git, just the version control system, if you want to use that. All right, so let's get the 64-bit. It automatically starts for us. All right, Node.js is still running. Okay, so we want to say yes. All right, so Node has been installed. Now let's install this. I'm going to open it up. Okay, really easy, same kind of thing. Okay, so we'll just go next, next leave that okay now this option here um, I always choose the last one because it gives you git gives you um, the command line tool but it also adds extra Unix tools um, that that you can use so we're going to choose the last option and then this one we can leave the default this one too 
All right, and while that's installing, let's download Python. Okay, so we want um, Windows Debug. Oh, right here. Windows 8664 MSI installer. All right, so that's all set. Now, uh, let's see, let me close up Sublime here for a minute. So I want a shortcut on my desktop. So let's, so here's the search. There we go. All right, so let's search for Git. And it's not showing up here, so I'm gonna go to the file location. And we want this git bash shortcut. Let's put that there. All right, and if we open that up, brings us to the utility. And just to make sure that nodes install, we can say node v. See, we have version 4.1.0, and we should also have npm 2.14.3. All right, so we have that. Next thing. Let's go ahead and in Paul in Paul <laughs> install Python. So we'll open that up. All users is fine. Default directory is fine. All right, so click finish. That's all set. Uh, next thing is the Visual Studio 2012, and this could take a while. Uh, let's see, we want the exe. All right, so wow, that was quick. And if you already have a version of Visual Studio, then you should be fine. If you don't, this is, pro this is probably the lightest um, version you're gonna get as the Express. All right, so we'll agree to this. I don't want to join the program. Install. And there's a few different um, node packages that you need this for. For instance, bcrypt, which is uh, it's a package that allows you to encrypt passwords. That needs Visual Studio. Uh, there's a couple generators that need it. So it's a good idea just to get it installed, get it over with. And this could take a while, so I'm gonna pause and I'll be back. All right, so that's all set. I don't wanna launch it, so I'm gonna close it. All right, so now for MongoDB. All right, so out of the things that we're doing here, this is probably the most difficult. Um, just because we have to run some command line uh, tools. So what we're gonna do is, it should already be selected, we're Windows 64 bit, so we're gonna download that. All right, this is kind of a big file, it's almost 80 megabytes, so it could take a couple minutes. All right, so that's all set. So we're gonna run that. And just like the other ones, we're just gonna go through. Uh, we'll choose the complete install. All right, so finish. All right, so we have MongoDB installed, but we have to set some paths. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're not gonna open the git bash tool that we downloaded. We want this, the, the standard Windows command line, and you want to make sure that you choose to run as administrator, or this won't work. All right, so before we do anything here, let's just go to the, the root, to the C drive. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to open up my C drive, and I'm going to create a new folder called MongoDB. All right, so this isn't the installation folder, this is for the data and the log files. So inside MongoDB, we're gonna create 
a folder called data and also a folder called uh, log. All right, and then in the data folder, we're going to create another folder called db. All right, this is where all the data in our databases are going to be held. And then in the log file, uh, we're going to create a file, a text file, and this is going to be called Mongo, uh, let's call it mongodb.log. All right. So now what we need to do is we need to tell MongoDB that this is where these folders are. So we're going to go to the command line and let's go into the actual MongoDB uh, system folder, which is, uh, I think, should be in program files. And yep, so CD MongoDB. And then we want to go into server and I think it's 3.0 3 and then into bin. All right, now what we're going to do is add those paths. So we'll say, we're going to say mongod and we're going to add a couple of different flags here. So the first one is directory. It's going to be directory per db and then also another uh, double dash and then db path and then we're going to specify our c drive okay so c drive slash mongodb slash data slash db all right and then the next thing we want is the log path and for that, C drive slash MongoDB slash log slash MongoDB dot log or whatever you call that file. All right, and then I'm going to add a couple more things. We want log append, we want rest, and we want install. All right, and the install is what's going to allow us to install it as a service so that we can have it run in the background. All right, so let's go ahead and run that. All right, so, uh, yep, that's good. So now we should be able to start the service. So to do that, we'll say net start MongoDB. Okay, and you can see MongoDB was started successfully. All right, and if you want to stop it for some reason, you can do net stop MongoDB. And we should be able to log into the shell. We say Mongo. All right, so now you can see that this changed to a, a um, greater than sign. So we can do things like show DBs. Okay, that shows us the databases. Uh, the only one that we have here is local. Now, if we want to see what DB database we're in, we can say use DB. I'm sorry, not use, um, just DB. And you can see we're in test. So this is the same exact thing as the, the shell that we used in Linux Ubuntu. Okay, you can do the same commands. All right, so let's get out of that. So that's all set. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we need to install this mean.js. All right, so let's go to the docs. All right, and there's a few things we need. We need uh, node and NPM, we already have that. MongoDB, we already have that. Uh, we're gonna need Bower to install front end packages. All right, so let's go just to our, actually I'm gonna create a folder in my C drive called projects. All right, and that's, that's where we're gonna create all our Windows projects. All right, so let's install Bower globally with npm install g and Bower. All right, now we can use the git bash utility for what we're doing now, but this is open, so I mean, it's same thing, really. All right, so that's all set. Next thing we're gonna need is the grunt task runner command line tools. 
So we're going to do npm install g grunt cli. All right, so that's all set. Now what we're going to do is we're going to grab the mean.js repository. All right, so we want to say git clone and we want to say github.com slash mean.js slash mean dot git and then we want the name of our folder. So the name of the folder and application is going to be CDN find. All right, so now if we go to our projects folder, we now have CDN find and you can see it, it created a whole bunch of uh, files and folders for us. Okay, so next thing we want to do is run npm install. Oops, I'm sorry, we want to go in that directory first. All right, so what that does is it's going to install all of the, the all of the node dependencies that um, mean.js needs to run. And hopefully we don't have any weird errors. All right, so that went through. That actually took quite a while. It took about five minutes or so. All right, and we do have some permission issues at the end here, so I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. So let's try and run grunt. Um, unable to find local. I'm pretty sure that um, it uses grunt. Uh, let's try node server. is not defined using development environment that's fine okay so we want to allow access all right so let's check out a local host and we want port 3000 All right, so we have a blank page and I've had this happen before and I think if we open up the console, we're probably going to see an, an angular error. Uh, put that down there. Yeah, see angular is not defined. So this has to do with Bower not running. So let's go ahead and stop this. Let's try and run power install and then we want to add on allow root uh, no all right so you can see it's grabbing a bunch of different libraries Alright, so now let's again run node server and let's try it again and there we go. Alright, so this is basically just the, um, I guess the sample site or the boilerplate site, whatever you want to call it. Um, there is a resource for articles, so it basically gives us uh, example CRUD functionality for articles. Now we're not logged in, so we can only choose to show them. Um, if we click create one, it's going to bring us to the login. All right. So what's great about this package here, this mean.js, is that you already have your entire login and registration system enabled. Um, and that includes a local username and password. And then if you want, you can use these social ones, but they're not set up right now. In order to set them up, you have to go and create an app, let's say at Facebook, and you have to get your um, API key and all that stuff and enter it into uh, the config. All right, so if we try right now, it's going to give us some kind of error. All right, so I'm thinking that we probably won't use any of these uh, and we can get rid of them so that we only have the local username and password. 
uh, but we'll get into that after. The main thing is now we got everything installed and we got mean.js set up. So in the next video, we'll start to look at um, you know the user interface and then we want to be able to create our own module for the CDNs. All right, and we can do that through generators that are available. All right, so I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we set up our environment in Windows and we also uh, created our starter app here with mean.js. All right, so now what I wanna do is we're gonna have to create a new module and that's gonna be for the CDNs, all right? And luckily we have an articles module that we can kind of mimic, all right? So we have articles, we can list them. Uh, if we wanna create one, we're gonna to have to log in. So let's first go ahead and sign up. And username. And this is new, this is cool, the pa uh, password strength bar. This wasn't there the last time that I've used this in, uh, in a past project. So let's go ahead and sign up. Uh, okay, looks like the password's not strong enough. Let's do Actually, let me start over. Okay. So we signed up and it automatically logs us in. And now if we go to articles, now we have the create articles option and we can create one. Let's just say test article and we can submit it and there it is. So now we have a route that goes to slash articles slash and then the ID. And if it's ours, then we will have these buttons here where we can edit it and we can also delete it. So we basically want that same kind of functionality uh, for the CDNs. And then there's also a chat example here. All right, and that works with WebSockets and Socket.io. We're not gonna really get into that. All right, so what we're gonna do is, let me open this in, a, in Windows Explorer. Okay, so everything's gonna basically be in the modules folder that we're gonna be working with. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and create a folder and we're gonna call this CDNs. All right, and if we look in articles, we have a client and server folder, so everything's separate from the front end and the back end, and then a folder for tests, which we're, we're really not gonna get into. Um, if we go into the server, we have a couple different things. This is um, basically like an MVC design pattern, model model view controller. And if we go to controllers, we have articles.server.controller. So what I wanna do is let's copy, let's just copy the entire server folder and we're gonna bring that into our CDNs module. All right, so now if we go back here, let's open up the routes first of all all right and we're gonna have to rename all these okay so we'll rename this and it's gonna be cdns.server.routes all right so there's gonna be a lot of changing of files let me make this a little wider all right so let's see articles policy all right so we're gonna change that to cdns policy and then we're gonna require policies slash CDNs. And let's see, let's change this. All right, and then um, our routes. Okay, so we got app.route and it's slash, all the server side stuff is gonna be in slash API. So this will be API CDNs. We'll change this to CDNs policy is allowed dot get. And then this is gonna be the list. That'll just give us a list of CDNs post. This is so that we can create new ones. 
And let's see, single CDN routes, uh, API slash CDN slash, and then we'll have CDN ID. And this is to get the single post to read it. And this is to update and then delete. All right, and then this is going to be CDN ID. And then this will be CDN by ID. All right, so that's the routes. All right, so let's just make sure we didn't miss any articles. All right, so let's save that. All right. So next thing I want to do is the policies. You can see with that we have a few references to the CDNS policy. So let's go into policies. We're going to want to rename this. All right, and then let's see. This has to do with uh, permissions and uh, access control. All right, so this is going to be CDN permission. So uh, let's see, acl.allow rules admin resources. So this will be API CDNs. So the, basically, all admins will get to do any, everything, they'll have all permissions. All right, let's change that. And then this. Okay, now uh, people with the roles of a user, they'll get to get, so they'll be able to, to see all the articles and they'll be able to post. All right, so let's change this. And this one will be API slash CDNS slash CDN ID. Okay, permission get and then we have the guests which are uh, users that aren't logged in and all they'll be able to do is get all right so they'll just be able to read the CDNs all right and then let's see see if CDNS policy allows all right so that's good So we're going to change this to request.cdn and this right here. All right, and are any roles allowed? That that can be that can stay how it is. Yeah, I think that's good. All right, so let's save that. Close that up. So now let's, let's take a look at the config. Okay, we're gonna have to rename this. Okay, so this will be cdns.server.config. All right, and then uh, that's it. We don't really need to change anything here, at least right now. So let's save that. Just make sure, I mean, close that, but make sure that it's saved as cdns.server.routes. Um, I'm sorry, dot config. All right, and then let's take a look at the controller. So let's rename this. All right, and then we're going to change a few things here. The model. Okay, so we're going to have a model um, called CDN. All right, and then we have our error handler. That's that's fine. And then this right here is going to create a CDN. So exports.create. And this will be new CDN. We don't have the model yet, but we will be creating it. All right, and then we're going to say cdn.user equals request.user. 
and then we're going to call the save method and then we're going to return the JSON. All right, next will be to show the current CDN. So exports.read function, and we're just going to put here request.cdn. Okay, so to update, change that, and then this is where we're going to put all of our fields. All right, so um, let's change title to name. And that's going to come in from a form that we're going to create. Um, and then we'll have the URL, of course. Quest.body.url. All right. And then uh, let's see. Let's do description. So CDN description is going to equal request dot body dot description let's do a version so cdn dot version all right uh, now let's give it a type because it can be either a it could be CSS or JavaScript or something else. Uh, CDN, whoops, not version, we want type. And we'll set that body.type. And I think that's good for now. We could always add more later. All right, so we'll do cdn.save. Okay. And then we're just going to return. All right, so now delete. Uh, let's see, let's change that. That's going to be request.cdn. And then we're going to call cdn.remove. Okay, same stuff we've been doing, really. All right, and a list of CDNs. So this is going to call cdn.find. We're going to sort by created. Um, and we're, we're going to add the username as well. So that's available for us to us. All right, uh, change that to CDNs. And let's go over here and also, this should also be CDNs. All right, and then we have our middleware. All right, so we're gonna say CDN by ID. And let's see, I'll say CDN is invalid, and then so this should be a capital. Um, CDN dot find by ID, populate user. Okay, then we're gonna change this. <coughs> Excuse me. And else if there is no CDN, I'm just gonna change these. All right, so I think that's good. All right, so let's save that. That's the controller. Now, the last thing in the server that we need to set up is the model. All right, so let's rename this to cdn.server.model. Okay, so we're using Mongoose <coughs> and we're setting up a schema. So this is going to be called CDN schema. And let's see, we're going to keep the created. That's just the current date. And then this will be the name. String default is nothing. Trim is true and it's required. All right, next we're going to have the URL. Type string. Okay, that looks good. Uh, let's make this required though. Okay, user, this is going to give us the, the current user which we want, so we're going to keep that. But we're going to add a, a couple more things here. All right, and if we look in the controller, we have um, 
a description, version, and type. All right, so let's let's actually just copy this. Like that. All right, so this is going to be description, and I'm not going to make that required. All right, and then we're going to have a version. We could do a number, but I'm going to keep it as a string. And let's not make it required. All right, and then what was the other one? Type. All right, so I'll change this to type. It's a string required. Uh, no, it's, let's not make it required. All right, so that looks pretty good. And then down at the bottom here, we're going to want to change this to CDN and then CDN schema. All right, let's save that. All right, so that does it for the server part of the module. And we're not going to be able to test it yet because it's not it's going to give us an error because we're missing um, a bunch of other stuff. All right, so if we go to API slash CDNs, we're going to get a server error. All right, so in the next video, we'll go ahead and create the rest of the folders and um, the client side stuff as well. So I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, we are back and in the last video we created all of the CDN module server files. Now we have to do the client files. So uh, let's go ahead and open up the project folder. All right, and we're gonna wanna be in modules and let's grab the client folder from articles and we're going to copy it and then paste it into our CDNs folder. All right, now we can go ahead and open it up in here. And let's take a look at this right here. Um, we're going to have to rename this. Okay, so this is going to be uh, cdns.client.module.js. And this is going to register the module for us. So let's just replace that. All right, and that should be it for that file. All right, so now the config, let's start with this. I'm gonna rename it. So cdns.clientconfig, and we're just gonna replace all the instances of articles. Okay, and what this does here is, this is gonna add it to the menu. Okay, uh, menus.addmenuitem, top bar is obviously the top menu so we we are going to add it so we'll change this title to uh cdn cdns and change the state okay type drop down we'll keep that um, add the drop down list item and the title say list um, I don't really like list CDNs let's let's have this say list libraries I think that sounds a little better uh, state is going to be CDNs dot list and then here we'll have the create link Okay, so here we'll say library and let's make this, we'll say add library, makes more sense because we're not actually creating it, we're just adding a link. All right, so this will only show if the, the person is a user, which means if they're logged in. All right, let's just change that. All right, so that should be good. Let's save that. 
All right, and then the other config file, this is for the routes, so let's rename it. All right, so this is going to be CDNS and so state provider dot state is going to be CDNS. Let me just copy this because we're going to have to swap quite a few. Uh, the URL will be slash. Oops, I just copied that again. Slash CDNs. Uh, let's see. So we're, we're going to want cdns.list and the template URL. This is going to be in our views folder, which we'll create next. So the name of the view or template will be list cdns. All right, and let's change that. Okay, so URL slash create, change that, and then this will be create CDNS. All right, so to create, they'll have to be either a user or an admin. All right, and then this one here, let's change that, and this will be CDN ID. And this is for the single view, just to see the single page. All right, uh, and then the edit. This will be edit CDN. Actually, for these ones too, uh, I just want it to be just CDN. So view, create. All right, so that all looks good. Let's save that. All right, so we'll close that up. Next, let's go to the control. Actually, let's go. Let's check out the services file. All right, so we'll rename this. This will be cdns.clientService. Okay, let's change this. All right. Resource API slash cdns slash cdnid. And then this will be cdnid as well method put for update. All right, so that looks good. Okay, next let's do the controller. So we have to rename this. All right, and just switch out all the articles. So cdns.controller and then we'll call this cdns controller. Okay, passing in all the dependencies and then let's change this right here. All right, whoop, sorry about that. Okay, so now to create a new one, scope.create equals function. Um, and then if it's not valid, we're going to show the CDN form. Okay, down here, create new. So this will be just CDN equals new CDNs. I'm keeping the same formatting as far as um, uppercase and lowercase and all that. All right, so here is where we're going to have to change some stuff. So remember, we changed the title to name. All right, and then we have a URL. All right, and what else did we have? Description. This dot description. 
uh, we had a version. So this dot version, and we had a type. This dot type. All right. Um, Redirect after save, so we're going to call cdn dot save, and we're going to want to go to cdns slash, and then the ID. Here we're going to clear the form fields, so we got to change these. So name okay, so we'll also have description will be version and this will be the type all right keep going down here remove existing CDN so scope dot remove we're gonna pass in CDN and then we're gonna check for it and if it's there we're gonna remove it all right and then we're gonna say for we're going to have a for loop this is going to be scope dot cdns and then we're going to say if scope dot cdns i is equal to cdn then we're going to remove it so scope dot cdns splice uh, and then this one cdn.remove and then redirect to cdns. Okay, this one here is an update. And let's change this over here because this is going to go to our cdn form. I know it's kind of tedious guys going through this and changing everything, but it's it's a lot easier than retyping it all which would just take way too long. Uh, so scope.cdn Okay, the location Okay, and this one here is going to find a list of CDNs. How many times do you think I've said CDNs in this episode, in this chapter? All right, so this will be cdns.query. Okay, so this will be the find one, and it's going to say scope.cdn. This is cdn ID. Okay. Now let's just make sure we hit all the articles. Yeah. All right. So let's save that. All right. And then we have our views. Okay. So we have a couple different views. We have one to list them all. We have one to view just a single one and we have a create and edit. So let's start with the list. So let's rename this. It's going to be list CDNs dot client dot view dot HTML. All right. And this is going to be the CDNs controller. And it's going to, when this section and this controller initialize, it's going to run the find function. All right. Okay, so here we're going to repeat. Okay, we're going to use our CDN object. And then we'll change these. Let me copy this. Uh, wait a minute articles ng repeat CDN let me just go back for a sec article in articles and then this is going to be up okay so that's going to be plural so CDN s dot view and then we'll pass in the CDN ID all right 
And now this is going to change afterwards. Um, right now it's just going to look like the you know the articles resource views, but we're going to change it after. I just want to get it. I want to get the functionality down first. So we're going to bind cdn.created and change this to cdn.user.display name. That'll give us the user that added it. And then this one. Now there isn't, uh, this is tricky because there isn't a title and content. That's That has to do with articles. So let's change this to name. And like I said, we will change this stuff after, but let's just change it to name and description for now because we know we have those fields. All right, so alert if cdns.resolved. Dot length, and then we'll just say no, no libraries yet. Why don't you create one? So we'll change that, and then let's change create to add. All right, cool. So we'll save that. Okay, that's the list view. Let's do the regular. Um, single library view so we're going to change that all right I'm just going to go through and do this guys I'll pause it and I'll be back all right so I went ahead and I did the view article client dot view all right so just changed everything all right and then I went and did the create article client view and I changed this to CDN as controller uh, and then change to CDN form and then down here we have all the fields so we have the name okay that's the name and then we have the URL we have the description which is a text area and actually this right here I need to change this shouldn't be a text area for the URL so let me just grab this input Put that there and then change this to URL. ID. Okay. Now, the edit form I didn't do yet, which is pretty much the same, but let's change some of this CDNS controller. And you'll notice that this one is going to call find one because we need that this particular CDN so that we can add the fields and add the, the form values. All right, so let's say edit CDN library, and this is the CDN form. Okay, and then the rest of these look pretty similar to the create form, I think. Yeah, it looks like they're the exact same as far as fields and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy from create uh, from field set to the ending field set. All right, so let's do that. Field set to field set and paste. All right, now we don't need a value attribute for these inputs because with Angular, we're using ng model, which allows us to have uh, data binding between the controller and the view. All right, so that should be good. Let's save that. And what we need to do is, is um, change the, so view article, that needs to be changed to view CDN. And same thing with create and edit. Now chances are guys we're probably going to have some errors because that was a lot of code, a lot of HTML um, that we just did. So we're bound to get some kind of error. So just to warn you, but we'll figure it out. So edit CDN. All right. And let's just look over these, make sure everything's renamed. 
um, the model on the server is the only one actually I guess the routes too no the routes just the model has CDN dot all right the rest are plural not the views but for like the controllers you can see CDNS same thing for the routes config so all except for the model and then some of the views all right so let's try let's see what happens let's stop the server and then restart it all right and then let's reload the home page okay now let's go we can see we have our menu item so let's say list libraries okay so it looks like we do have one um, and then add library all right so that, that's actually pretty good I, I thought we'd get some view errors um, now I'm gonna open up the Mongo shell all right so I'm gonna open up a command line okay let's whoops didn't want to do that get me out of here not a fan of of Windows 8 <laughs> Okay, let's go back. Ah. There we go. Okay, so let's open up a command line as administrator. All right, and we're going to go to the Mongo DB system directory. So it's uh, program files slash MongoDB. And then we're going to go to server 3.0 slash bin. All right, and we'll run Mongo. And let's first show DBs. Okay, now when we, cre when we created the mean.js app, it created a database for us called mean dev. All right, so let's use that. All right, and let's say show collections. So we get articles, sessions. Okay, so what's going on right now is it's showing we have one listing and what it's doing is it's looking in the articles collection. It's not looking in the CDN's collection. Let's go ahead and look in the model and we're going to search for the word article because something something was skipped. Um, let's see controller uh, maybe the client oh okay now that's for create huh all right, so uh, the submenu item add this add we'll add library. We need to change this to cdns.create. All right, and then let's see. In the client controller, looks like we passed in the articles as a um, dependency injection. So let's change that to cdns. All right, save that, and let's see if anything changes. Okay, so now we don't have anything here, which is good. All right, so let's try and add one. All right, so here's our form. Um, and what I'm going to do is let's just open up cdnjs. I think it's .org. Nope. Oh, I guess it's just a security check thing. All right. So 
let's search for jQuery. All right, so we'll just grab this one and let's go to our form. Stupid thing. All right, so name, let's say jQuery. And then we want the URL, which is, let's grab. Now these don't have to be from Cloudflare. Um, obviously they have their own repositories. We could add one from, we could add the jQuery CDN or the Google, whatever. Uh, but for this listing, let's just use the Cloudflare. All right, and then description, we'll copy this. I don't know why that won't go away. Okay, version is, uh, this is for 3.0. Oh, this is for the alpha 3.0, whatever, it's fine. Let's just put that in the title. And then type, this is gonna be JavaScript. Okay, submit. Name cannot be blank. Okay, so I think we have an issue with the form. So let's go to, on our client side, views, create CDN, and okay, so everything is still title here, so we need to change that to name. All right. Placeholder name ID okay this should be name as well all right so that should be good I think yeah so we're gonna have to restart the server all right and then let's see if we can just Oh, you know what? That's on the client side, so we do have to re reload the page. All right, so let's try again. So jQuery 3.0. Uh, we'll grab the description. Okay, we'll grab the URI or URL. Okay, version, we'll say 3.0, and then type is JavaScript submit and there we go there's our listing okay it doesn't look very good I mean we're gonna change how it looks but the functionality is working if we say list libraries all right so that's not coming up so we're gonna to have to look into that in the next video um, or I'll look into it and we'll continue in the next video um, but we can in fact add a library we know that if we go to our Mongo shell and we say show collections we now have a CDNS collection and if we say DB dot CDNS dot find you can see that our jQuery 3.0 CDN is listed alright so at least we have that going on alright so yeah I will see you in the next video hey guys welcome back um, before we get to formatting the views and all that and doing any more testing, in the last video, we weren't able to get the CDN libraries. We know we have one in the database, but it's not showing here. And then if we, we go to API slash CDNS, which should return JSON um, and all the CDN fields, we get a server error. All right, and the issue is really simple. It's in uh, the server folder so if we go to modules and then CDNs and then server and then the controller file down here at exports.list we're supposed to actually fetch all the CDNs this right here is supposed to be an uppercase C alright so that ruined the whole script so let's save that and then we're going to restart the server And now let's go back to CDNs, I'm sorry, API, 
slash CDNs. Now we get our response. All right, and we should also be able to go back and go to CDNs list libraries, and there we go. All right, so before we get into the views and the look and all that, let's see if we can edit this. Okay, so when we click edit, it's a blank form, so we're going to have to fix that. Um, let's see, we're going to want to, let's go to the view, so we'll go to uh, client, let's close that up. So client, and then views, and then edit CDN. And what I'm going to do is match this form up with the articles module edit view which is right here so I'm going to open that as well because if you remem remember we copied all the fields from the add form so there must be something here and I think that it's the ng model okay so you can see we have article dot title if we go to the CDN edit view and look at the ng model it's just title okay so we need to replace actually for the edit view this should these should be name anyway just like the add form. So let's change all these to name. Placeholder. And you're bound to have stuff like this happen. Okay, so for ng model, let's change this to cdn.name. All right, we want to add that to all the ng models. Okay, so URL, that'll be cdn.url, description, version, and type. All right, so let's go ahead and reload. Okay, so now we're getting the, the correct fields. All right, so let's test the update function. So we'll change this, let's say jQuery dash version 3.0. All right, and then submit. And you can see that it, it went ahead and it updated. All right, now last thing to test for our CRUD functionality is the delete. So let's go ahead and try to delete and there it goes. All right, so we have full CRUD functionality. Now we just want to deal with um, how this looks. All right, for one thing, the home page, I want to be the CDN list page. All right, so let's take a look in our routes. I'm going to close these up. All right, and we're going to go to our, let's go to our client route, which Actually, we don't have a route. Oh, yeah, it's in the config. All right. So, actually, let me check. The core module is, is what takes care of the home page and all that. Actually, this is articles. Sorry if it, this is a little confusing. Um, I want to open up modules, CDNS, config, and then uh, CDNS client routes. Okay, I want to open that. And then I'm also going to open the core module, which is right here, and client, and then config, and routes. All right, and if we look here, let's see. It, we have this um, URL route provider dot otherwise. So what this is saying is, if, it, if the URL doesn't match any routes, then we're going to load up the home page. All right, so uh, actually, no, this one, this is set to redirect to 404. All right, you know what? That's fine. Let's just change the route. All right, so for this here, um, home, let's change that to just slash home, just, just to get it out of the, the home page. And then if we go back to the 
CDNS client routes, we want, what do we want? Let's see what the, what the exact route is. Slash CDNS, all right, which is this here. So let's go ahead and change this to just the slash. And I think that that should make it our home view. All right, so now if we go to our home page, and now it's CDN Libraries is now the home page. All right. So uh, let's change the look of this a little bit. And one way to eat, to do that easily without having to do write any code is to use a theme from a site called Bootswatch. All right, and this basically is going to give us a, um, a tweaked version of the Bootstrap CSS file. All right, and you can see we have a bunch of different themes. All right, and I've noticed that some of them by default, when you implement them, they don't look like this exactly how they look here, uh, but they're pretty close. So let's get, I don't know, let's just get this one. So if we go to download, it's going to give us some CSS options or less or, or SAS, whatever you want to use. We're going to grab bootstrap.css. All right, and then we're just going to copy the whole thing. And then we're going to go to our app and let's go in modules i'm sorry not modules public and then lib and then we have this bootstrap folder and let's go in dist css and then bootstrap.css and we're going to just replace it all with what we just copied all right now that itself should update it Whoops, let's not go there. Uh, all right, so I, I don't really like the look of that one. Let's, let's find a different one. And actually, you know what I think is going on is it's also using this here, this theme file. So this, um, Bootstrap theme CSS. I'm just going to remove all this. There we go. That that doesn't look too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's keep that. All right. So when I click on the the mean JS here, it brings us to slash home. We don't want that. Um, we don't want this page to be accessible through the navigation. So let's go to modules and then core and views and then I think header. Yeah, this is where the navigation is. So let's see right here. Okay, you can see it says UI SREF and that's going to home. We want to change this to CDNS and that should change it all right so if I click on mean JS it's going to take us to the home page all right um, or to the CDNS page now let's get rid of for one thing let's change this text and then get rid of the articles and chat all right so to change the text we'll go right here and we'll call this CDN Finder. All right, now to get rid of the menu items, this is they're dynamic, so we're not just going to erase them from the uh, nav bar. We have to go into the module. So let's go into articles and then client config. And then we're just going to remove. Uh, let's see. Let's remove all of these. OK, 
right so that got rid of the articles now for the chat same thing we'll go to chat client and then uh, config we'll just get rid of that now the reason I don't have to restart the server is that these are all client side files all right and now what I want to do here is instead of having this drop down since this is the home page let's get rid of list libraries and let's just have an add library link right here alright so we'll go to the CDNS module and to config alright we're gonna get rid of these sub item and then this add menu item let's see we're gonna do title Add library. Um, let's change the state to CDNS dot create, and then type. We can get rid of that, and I think that should do it. So let's save. Okay, so now we have add library. Click that, and it brings us to the form. Um, shoot, this should actually go. This should go home. Huh. Let me check out that. All right, so let's go back to the header clients. And let's see. Instead of using this, let's use an actual href. And let's just go to the actual address. All right, so we should be able to, okay, so that brings us home. That brings us here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add a library. See what else we got for jQuery. Uh, Alright, looks like it, it returns the 3.0 alpha version. That's that's kind of strange. Huh. Alright, so let's let's add one ourselves. We'll get the description. So description and let's just say jQuery and then let's use the Google CDN. So we're going to grab this right here. And we'll put that in the URL. Okay, so version 1.11.3 type is JavaScript. Submit. Okay, so it's taking us to page not found. Let's see if it actually, okay, so it did go through. Um, okay, so it looks like the regular, the single CDN view isn't quite working. So if we go back to our routes file, let me close that. So we're in uh, modules, CDNS, config, and then the routes. All right, and the issue is we made this state, the CDNS state, to the home page um, and I'm guessing if we put this back to how it was CDNS and reload this then it works but now if we go to the home page we're gonna get page not found alright so what we're gonna do to fix this is we're gonna go to the core route so we wanna go to CDNS um, I'm sorry client 
um, actually let's close that up we want to go to modules and then core and then core dot client dot routes and you see where we have this otherwise and what it's doing is it's going to bring us to a 404 error page uh, which is this right here page not found well, what we're going to do is change this okay so I'm going to get rid of that whole function and all we're going to do when we say otherwise is we're going to just going to go to uh, slash CDNS all right so if we save that and let's go back make sure this still works which it does and then we go here it's going to take us to the home page to CDN libraries all right so the last thing I want to do is shaping up these views a little bit all right so we have the title or the name we have the date it was posted by who we have the description we don't have the URL though so let's go ahead and add that all right so where we want to go is to modules and then CDNs and then client views and view CDN HTML all right and let's put this down below the description and we'll put a line break and then we'll put an input and we'll give it a class of form control Oops. all right and we're gonna have a value and the value is gonna be the URL so to insert that we just need our double curly braces and we should be able to do CDN dot URL all right so let's take a look at that and there we go so the user can just copy that um, and then I think we just have the version we should put the version next to the title or next to the name all right which which is where right here CDN name and we can't put it in the bind element so let's just go next to it and we'll do a small and we'll say version oops uh, CDN dot version All right, let's see how that looks. Okay, so that's good. All right. And then for this page, we don't need the posted by and all that. So let's go to our views and then go to list view. And let's see, it's this small right here. Get rid of that. Then we'll go under this paragraph right here. And we're going to put in CDN dot URL. And let's actually let's put that in an input as well. So it sticks out more. So text class form control. And then this will be a value. Okay. Whoops. Wait a minute. Oh, you know what? We have a link surrounding this entire thing, which I don't want. So let's remove that closing a tag and let's see it starts oh it's using the a tag as the re the ng repeat all right so you know what we're going to do is change the the a to a div like that and let's take this link right here this oh this attribute this ui s r e f we're going to cut that all right and then we're going to just put the link around the h4 so we'll have a and then we'll have that attribute and then we'll end that right after the h4 okay 
right so now they can copy it here they can click on the title that'll bring them to the main individual uh, CDN page all right so that looks pretty good uh, I think we'll, we'll stop there and then in the next video what I want to do is we'll have some filtering options uh, so we can search and filter through the CDNs okay so we'll do that next hey guys welcome back uh, in the last video we went ahead and made the views look a little better we changed up the template a little with boot swatch so I think it's starting to look pretty good um, I, had, I ended up adding a couple of libraries just so we can see what it looks like and I think it looks pretty good alright so what I want to do now is we need a way to filter through these results alright so what I want to do is I want to have a search box up here that we can uh, we, we can utilize angular filters with so that we could say start typing angular and then anything that's not that doesn't have the word angular in it would disappear and it would filter through those results with just angular alright and then I'd also like to have a select list so that we can filter through uh, JavaScript and CSS libraries alright so first thing I'm going to do is add a form to the uh, to the list view all right, so we want to be in modules, CDNS, views, and then list dash CDNS.client.view. All right, so we're going to go ahead and put this form um, right below the page header div. All right, so we're going to say form, and <clears throat> this is a bootstrap form. We're going to give it the class of form inline because it's going to be it's going to have a um, horizontal orientation. All right, and let's see what else we want to do. Let's go ahead and put in our form group div. All right, and then this is going to be the search text box. So we'll say search input type is going to be text uh, we're going to give it the bootstrap class of form control and we're going to give this an ng model of search text all right and then what else I think that's it let's put a placeholder and we'll just say filter libraries all right so that's one input now let's make another div with the form group class all right and this is going to be a select list Let's say filter by type. And then we'll have select. Form control. And we're going to give this an ng model. An ng model of filter item dot type. All right, and then we're gonna put in our ng options. Um, actually, you know what? Uh, I mean, there's only two options. There's gonna be JavaScript and CSS, but if we wanna be able to filter through it the way I want, we're gonna have to not just put in the static options, but we're gonna have, it, have this come through from the controller all right so what we're going to do here is we're going to say item uh, yeah item dot name item dot name for item in filter options okay filter options dot types I think that's what I want all right, and then we'll just end that. And those will be 
the, the options will be put in there dynamically. We don't have to put them in. All right, so let's save that and just check it out. All right, uh, let's put a line break underneath the form. Okay, now for the search text, this is actually really easy. All we have to do is go down to the element that's actually going through the CDNs, so with the ng repeat, and we're going to add on to that. We're going to put a pipe character in, and then we just need to say filter, and then the name of the field, which is search text. All right, so if we save that, that should be all we need to do to do this. So let's say Angular. And you can see everything else disappears. All right, uh, bootstrap. All right, and this can be in any field. Let's say this one has the word less. So we'll say less. It's still going to come up, which is just one, one, in my opinion, one of the best features of Angular is this, is this binding. Um, so that's all set. Next thing, we need to be able to um, filter by JavaScript or CSS type. So we're going to have to add some stuff to the controller here. Uh, yeah, CDNS client controller. And we'll go down to the bottom. Let's see, that ends there. All right, so like right here. And let's, what we're going to do is we're going to say scope dot filter options and we're going to set that to an object and we're going to say types and then in here will be the different options so name okay so this one will be javascript all right and then we'll have another one this will be CSS. All right, so those are our filter options. And then right here, we're going to say scope dot filter item. And we're going to set that to type scope dot filter options dot types and we want the first one so we want zero all right and then let's see we're going to create our custom filter now so custom filter uh, actually this needs to be scope scope dot custom filter and this is going to be a function and we're going to pass in data, whoops, data. And we're going to do a conditional here. We're going to say if data dot, if data dot type is equal <coughs> to scope dot filter item, filter item dot type dot name. Okay, so we're, we're referring to these. Okay, so if that equals that, then we're going to return true. Um, and then we're going to say else. It's going to return false. Okay. All right, so now let's save that and go back to the view. And where we put in filter search text, we're going to put in another pipe character and we're going to say filter custom filter. And we'll save that. All right, so let's reload. All right, so we have JavaScript. All right, so JavaScript is selected. We see all the JavaScript, CSS. 
Now, this is working great except for one thing, and that's that JavaScript is the default. So when we first visit the page, that's all we're seeing. So all we have to do to fix that is we need to add another possibility here. All right. Um, and actually, before we do that, let's go back to the view to the select list. Actually, no, we're not doing it in the select list. We're doing it in the controller. So we want to just add to this. Okay, so we're just going to add another option. And this is going to be, uh, actually, let's have it be show all. All right, and then we're going to say, whoops, show all. And then let's put right here. Else if. All right, so we're going to say else if uh, this right here. So if that is equal to show all, then we're going to return true. Okay, so now, now we have all four. And if we want to filter by JavaScript or by CSS, we can do that. All right, so that just shows you how easy it is in Angular to, to do things like this. And there's no page reloads or uh, form submissions or anything like that. It's just instant. So I think, I think this is a pretty nice app. You know, I mean, it's really simple, uh, much more simple than the, the cdnjs.org. But, you know, we did it in a, in a very short amount of time. So uh, hopefully you guys like this project and maybe you'll look into mean.js a little more and, um, you know, create some, some really nice applications with it. All right, so that's it. I'll see you in the next project. Hey guys, in chapter eight, we're going to be creating an airport finder application called AirFind. All right, so this will be an application that will list airports and will be able to search and filter airports by state as well as the proximity to a specified address. All right, so we'll be working with geospatial data and geojson, which basically is just, it allows us to deal with objects using um, certain location fields like uh, coordinates and things like that. And it can get quite complicated, but we're just going to scratch the surface and learn the basics. All right, so section one is the intro. Section two, we're going to go ahead and create our express file structure. Section three, we'll work on the back end API routes. Section four, we'll work on the front end airport display. All right, we will, we'll be using Angular for this application for the client side. Section five will do the search by state and proximity range search. All right, so if you want to type in an address and then say, find me all the airports within 20 kilometers from this address, then that's what it's going to do. All right, so you'll learn the very basics of geospatial data and geojson. Uh, you'll learn how to implement basic search as well as searching by proximity. And we'll also be using re reverse geocoding using uh, the Express Geocoding API module. Okay, so that's it. Let's get started. I'll see you in the next video. Hello, in this project, we're going to be dealing with geospatial index and queries. All right, now this MongoDB offers some features that allow us to make queries based on location data and coordinates. Um, things like that and this is it can be really complicated some of this stuff here um, we're basically not not even going to scratch the surface I just want to get a project in that deals with some of this stuff okay um, at the at the most simplest level all right so basically um, there's two types of surface types that MongoDB can use and that's spherical and flat all right, so we can calculate geometry over an Earth-like sphere and store location data on spherical surface 
and use 2D, a 2D sphere index. All right, and then for flat surfaces, we can use a 2D index. All right, now there's something called GeoJSON, which um, is basically JSON for objects that have to do with geography and certain types of um, mapping and location. All right, uh, you can see down here, these are the different GeoJSON objects that MongoDB supports. All right, point being the, the, the easiest ones, the one that we're going to be working with, which just is just a point on, on the Earth um, using coordinates. Then we have line strings, which can represent one point to another. We have polygons, which can represent um, multiple points and, uh, you know, in kind of like a polygon shape. Uh, multi-point, multi-line string. These are, uh, I don't even understand some of these. It's it's really, can get really difficult. Um, query operations. Okay, so we have inclusion. MongoDB can query for locations contained entirely within a specified polygon. Um, intersections. Proximity. We'll be dealing with proximity. Um, and let me tell you a little bit about the app we're going to be building. Uh, it's going to be really simple. We're going to be ha we're going to have a database full of airport locations, and we're going to be able to query those using um, geospatial indexes and um, GeoJSON. All right. So uh, let's see. Two D sphere, and then we have this page here, which has our query operators. Okay, we have geo within, which is going to select geometries within a bounding ge geo JSON geometry. Wow, it's like a tongue twister. Uh, geo intersects, which will select geometries that intersect with geo JSON geometry. Near, which are going to return objects in proximity to a point. Okay, so that's what we're going to be dealing with mostly. Um, and then there's some more geometry specifiers. Uh, we're going to be using max distance. Okay, if we're going to do a proximity search, we want to specify the maximum distance if we want something within whatever 30 kilometers of a certain point. Um, this page here is all about GeoJSON objects. Uh, we have a point. We already went through this point, line, string, polygon. This just gives you some more information. But basically, this is what a point would look like. Okay, It'd be an object with a type of point, and then we'd have its coordinates. All right, so really simple. And then a line string, you'd have a couple different coordinates. Polygon, you would have multiple coordinates. All right, now this page here is a blog post about MongoDB geospatial features, and um, it's really it's really nice. It's it's easy to understand. And I just wanted to kind of use it as a reference. Um, again, it shows you how to mark a point, a line string, all that stuff. But if we go down here, it gives you a download. Where is it? Right here, which is a data set of airports. All right, so you'll get two data sets. You'll get airports and then U.S. states. And what we're going to do is we're going to import these into a database, a MongoDB database, and we're going to query them so that we can have an application where we can select a state and it'll pull up, pull up all the airports for that state. And then we'll also have another input where we can just put a straight address and then a proximity in kilometers and it'll show, up, show us all of the airports within that proximity. All right, so that's what we'll be doing. And down here is some really nice examples. Uh, we're actually going to use some of this code in our model. All right, so basically right here we're creating a variable. I don't know if you guys can see that. We're creating a variable called cal, which uh, we're going to query the states collection to find one with the code of CA for California. And then we're going to call db.airports.find. And then in, within the loc uh, loc field location, we're going to say geo within and then geometry cal, which is this variable here, dot loc. All right, so we're going to pass in the state and we'll want to get the name, the type, the code, and the ID back. All right, and then this would be the result. We have the name of the airport, we have the type, and the code. All right, and 
You could go a step further and mark these on maps, on Google Maps or whatever, uh, but we're not going to get into that. It gets a little too complicated and it begins to, to veer away from MongoDB, which is what we're focusing on. All right, and then down here, simple find. And let me see, I want to show you this right here, the proximity. All right, so basically we would plug in uh, some coordinates here, latitude and longitude, along with the maximum distance, and it's going to return all the airports within that distance from that point. All right, so we'll be implementing that. And we'll be using Express along with Mongoose and then Angular for our front end. All right, so that's what we'll be doing. I know it's it, if you've never dealt with this stuff before, it can be a little overwhelming. I'm going to try my best to explain what's going on, but we're really doing the the easiest, you know, the easiest stuff that we can do with this um, subject matter. So if you go to this site here or this blog, um, and if you can't see the link, all you have to do is Google uh, geospate MongoDB geospatial and it's like one of the first ones um, and then down here we have the data set so it says download from here okay if we click that I'll also include this in the files and we're gonna download alright we'll open that up and we have a folder called geo and then we have a couple different things here um, the two that we're gonna we're gonna need here are the Beeson files. So airports.beeson and states. Don't worry about system index or any of that or the metadata files. All right. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a MongoDB database and I'm gonna show you how to import these into the database. All right. So let's go ahead and um, open up the Mongo shell. open up my Windows command prompt. Now I'm going to go to my MongoDB system directory, which for me is in program files. And I think I want to say MongoDB slash server slash 3.0 slash bin. All right, and we're going to use the uh, mongo restore command. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to grab these files, airports and states, and actually this is a compressed folder, so let's just open up. Uh, we'll open up a new folder, and I'm going to go to that directory, which is MongoDB. Oh, I'm sorry, program files, MongoDB server 3.0 bin. All right, and I'm going to bring these files over. All right, that way we don't have to type in any kind of paths or anything like that. Now, before we go ahead and import those files, let's create the database. So we're going to open up our Mongo shell, and let's see what we got for databases. Okay, so let's create a new one. We're going to say use, and we're going to call this air find all right so that's going to create it and it's going to switch us to it now we're going to log back out of the shell with control c and we're going to say mongo restore we want the collection to be airports and then we're going to say the db air find and then the file which is airports.beeson all right so let's go check that out we'll go back into the shell and we'll say use air find and then we'll say show collections and you can see we now have airports so let's do db dot airports dot find dot pretty and you can see we have a lot of airports all right and they're all formatted with the geo geojson you can see that there's a type actually there's there's two types one is the the actual type of the airport which doesn't have to do with the the location object but then we have this loc field right here which is a embedded data and that has a type of point because this is a single point 
and then we have the coordinates. All right, so let's do the same thing with states. Okay, so we'll exit out of there, and we're gonna say Mongo Restore Collection is gonna be called states. All right, database air find, and then we're gonna change the name of the file to states.bson. Okay, so log back in, and we'll use air find, and let's do db, yeah, db.states.find.pretty. And then we have just a, a whole bunch of coordinates for the different states. All right. So our database is basically ready. All right. So all we need to do now is create the application to interact with it. Okay. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go to my projects folder and create a new folder. I'm going to call this air find. All right, we're going to be doing a lot of stuff that we've already done. We're basically going to create an express JSON API where we can um, we can fetch all the the airport data. All right, and then we'll implement Angular on the front end so that we can search and filter through it. All right, so let's start to create our back end. So we're going to create our app.js. And let's create, what else do we need? We're gonna need our client folder. Um, what else? This is gonna be, we're gonna use Mongoose, so we need a models folder. Okay, so we'll have an airport model and a state model. Might as well create those files. Okay, so we'll have airport, dot js and also state dot js all right and then let's see we're going to need a package json file so let's let's go ahead and open up a i'm going to open the git bash utility here and we're going to do an npm init All right, so name airfine, that's good. Version 1.0.0. Description, uh, let's say airline or airport search app. Entry point is gonna be app.js. Uh, let's see, author, you put your name. Yes. All right, so that should create package.json. So let's go ahead and open up Sublime Text. All right, um, I'm gonna get rid of this and then I'm gonna bring in the new folder, which is my C drive and then projects air find. All right, so package.json, all we need to add here is our dependencies. So we're gonna go right here. I'm gonna say dependencies. All right, so we're gonna need body parser. Uh, of course, we need express. Okay, we're gonna need mongoose. And we're also gonna need something called Express uh, Geocoding API. And what that's gonna do, it's gonna allow us to enter an address into an input field, and then it's gonna allow us to reverse geocode it to uh, coordinates so that we can use it with our geospatial index. All right, so it's going to be express uh, express geocoding 
API. All right, and we'll just get the latest version. All right, and that should do it. So let's save this. And then we'll go ahead and let's run npm install. Okay, looks like we have an issue. Couldn't read dependencies. Okay, failed to parse. Weird. Oh, we need a comma right here. I always forget that comma. All right, so we'll run npm install again. All right, so let's go and open up app.js, which it looks like it's, it's app.js.txt. Why did it do that? Oh, okay, so I haven't used this um, virtual machine very much. So what's going on is Windows is hiding the, the real extension. All right, if, if your machine is doing that, then you wanna go, let me see, where is it? Um, is it properties? No, it's not properties. Let's see, view, no. Where is it, customize? That's not it. No. Okay, so view and then options, change folder and search options. And then under view, you can see, where is it? This is checked, hide extensions for known file types. You wanna make sure that that's unchecked. I don't know why it's like that for the default. But uh, now you can see that it's actually a TXT file, so you just wanna get rid of that, and make it the app.js. All right, so now we'll open that up. And we're gonna do our requirements up here. So express uh, we're gonna need uh, the express geocoding API. So express geocoding API. Let's see, body parser. And let's initialize express with app. All right, and then mongoose. So to connect to Mongoose, we're gonna say mongoose dot connect. All right, and this is gonna be MongoDB localhost slash airfind. Okay, and then we're just gonna create our database variable. And that's going to equal mongoose dot connection. All right. Let's set up our middleware. Okay, so we just need to create our client folder. So app dot use. Okay, we're just going to tell the system that we want the client folder to be the static folder. So express dot static. And then we're gonna pass in the path. Uh, and then we're just gonna go slash client. All right, and then app.use. And we wanna use the uh, body parser JSON. So body parser dot JSON. 
All right, and let's just create a route for the home page. Oops, what am I doing? This needs to be a function. Ah. Okay, all we're going to do here is say res.send. And I'm going to say please use airports or uh, states endpoints. Or actually, it's going to be slash API. All right, and then let's do app.listen and the port is 3000 and then we'll just do a console log all right so let's check that out see if that works okay so we're gonna have to say node app Okay, started on port 3000. Let's check it out. All right, so there it is. So the the home the home page or home route, whatever you want to call it, is just going to give us a message to say that you get to use either states or air or airports. All right. So in the next video, we'll go ahead. We'll set up our models, and um, then we'll set up our backend routes and get that all set so we can start on the client. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. All right, so in the last video, we set up the backend file structure for our Express backend, and we created um, a models folder, and we have an airport JS and a state JS. All right, so let's start with the airport. All right, so the first thing we're gonna wanna do is bring in Mongoose. Okay, so we're going to require mongoose. All right, and then we're going to create our airport schema. All right, so we're going to say var airport schema is going to be equal to mongoose dot schema with a capital S. Make sure you have that. All right, and then we're going to have uh, the loc field or location, and then everything is going to be inside of there. So we're going to have a type. All right, and then I'm going to say type string. Um, we're going to need the coordinates, and this is going to be type array. Because we're going to have two coordinates, one obviously one for longitude, one for latitude. Um, we're going to have a name, okay, name, and then type is going to be string, and then we'll have code type string, and let's do a created at. Okay, so that'll be type date. And let's also give it a default of date dot now. All right, and then down here, let's see, we wanna go after the schema. All right, so we're gonna say var airport and let's set that to module dot exports mongoose dot model airport and then the schema all right so that's that's the structure that's the uh, all the properties of an airport okay we're gonna have some methods or functions as well for now, let's just do uh, a simple one to get all the airports. Oop. All right, 
So we're going to say module dot exports dot get airports will equal a function. All right, that function is going to take callback and an optional limit, and then we're just going to say airport dot find one. And in here we want to put just ID and callback. All right, let's also do. Uh, actually, that's yeah, that's that's good for now. Let's save that, and we'll go back to app.js, and let's go ahead and create our airport object from that file. So we want to require it. Okay, we're going to say dot slash models slash airport dot js. All right. Now, there's one thing we forgot to in order to use the API, which we're not going to do right this second, but there is some middleware that we need to add. So I just want to add that real quick. All right, so we'll just say app dot use, and we're going to say express. Geocode API, um, and then we just want to pass in geocoder, and we just want to specify the provider, which is going to be Google. All right, so I just wanted to get that in there. Okay, so we have our airport. Now let's make, let's copy that. And let's create a route to just slash airports, get request. All right, so what we're gonna do with that, we can delete that. And we're gonna say airports dot get airports, which we just created. And then we're gonna pass in a function all right, and that'll take in uh, an error and the return documents. Okay, and then if there is an error, then we're just going to send it. And if there's not, then we're going to say res.json and we want to pass in the documents. Okay, so let's save that and then we're going to restart the server. Uh, what's this? Geocode API is not defined. Express. Oh, I'm sorry, it's geocoding API. All right, so now let's go to slash. Actually, you know what? It's going to be slash API slash airports. Okay, so we'll just need a, a restart. All right, and then we want to go to API airports. ID is not defined. ID. Um, get API airports. And let's see what we have here. Oh, find one. Oh, I'm sorry, that's that's not right. This should be find. Okay, that should be find, and then it should just be callback. All right, so we'll restart. All right, and then let's reload this. And then we get all the airports. So there's a lot of data here. So what I want to do now is let's create the state model. All right, so I'm going to copy everything we have in the airport model and paste it in here. And then we'll just go ahead and change some of this stuff. Okay, so this is going to be the state schema. Uh, let's see. We're going to get rid of this loc. So these are all on the top level. 
All right, and we just want name code. We can get rid of type. We can get rid of. Well, coordinates is going to go inside of loc. Actually, I shouldn't have got rid of that. Let me undo that. All right, because we still do want loc, and all that's going to have is type and coordinates. We want to take these out. Let's copy those, and then we're going to paste those above loc. All right, so name code. Uh, we don't need created at. I think, yeah, that should be good. All right, and then down here, let's change this to state. State schema. And then we'll say get states. And then this will be state.find. All right, so let's save that. And then if we go back to app.js, let's copy this here. And then this will be API slash states. And then we're going to do state dot get states. And the rest is fine. So let's save that, reload. And now we're going to visit API slash states. Uh, let's see. Oh, we need to include it up here. So now we get all the state information. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to get the airport, the, all the airports by state. All right, so I want to be able to say something like API, API slash states slash MA, and that will give us everything from Massachusetts. All right, so let's go to our model. Let's go to our airport model. say module dot exports and let's call this get airport by state all right and that's going to be a function all right and then that's going to take in a state code callback and an optional limit All right, so we're going to have to interact with the state model as well. So um, let's see. Let's go up here and let me just go to app.js and I'm going to copy this. Okay, let's. Um, we'll just put this right here. And we're already in the models folder, so we just need to get rid of this. Okay, and it should be dot slash state dot js. All right, and then down here, let's say, let's see, what do we want to put in here? Let's do state dot find one, and then we're going to pass in code equal to state code, so whatever is passed in, and then the function. All right, and then this function will take an error as well as state. All right, and then we're going to assign the variable state to state. And then we should do uh, airport dot 
find. All right, so this query is going to be a little strange. And if we look at that blog post, we have a good example of that, which is this right here. All right, so we want to say dot find, and then we're going to look in the loc, and we're going to say geo within, geometry, and then whatever's passed in for the state code. All right, so uh, let's see. So find. All right, and then we're going to do loc, and we're going to say geo geo within and geometry state dot loc. All right, so this obviously coming from this, which is coming from um, up here, whatever, whatever is returned from the state dot find one. All right, and then let's see, below that, we're gonna go right here and add a second parameter and open up another object. And we want name one. This is just what we wanna return, type one. Uh, we want the code. And we don't need the ID, I'm gonna say underscore ID zero. All right, and then we're gonna go here and we want our callback. Uh, callback, and then let's add the optional limit. And then let's sort. All right, so we can sort by name and let's make that ascending. All right, so that's our query, which looks just like this, really, same thing. And you can see the result here that we get. We should get the same kind of result. All right, so get airport by state. Let's save that, and then we'll go to app.js and go down, create a new route. All right, so this is going to be slash API slash airports slash state, and then the actual state that we pass in. All right, so let's see. We're going to say airport airport dot get airports by state. Okay, that's what the thing that we just created. Is it airports or just airport? Whoops. Okay, get airport by state. And then we're gonna pass in whatever's in the URL, which we can get with request.params.state. And then we have our function going to give us some documents. We're going to pass the documents through JSON. All right, so let's save that. And let's go restart. And then we're going to visit the URL. We're going to go to API airports slash state, whoops, slash state slash MA. All right, so let's see. Callback is not defined. We got uh, request.params.state, and then we have our function get airport. Oh, <laughs> put an L there. All right, so. Hopefully that works. Okay, good. So you can see these are all of the airports in Massachusetts. If we change this to New York, it gives us all the New York airports. All right, so very helpful. And the last thing we want to do is be able to get 
the airports by proximity. All right, so if we go back to the blog post and go down to proximity, okay, it's going to look something like this. We're going to we're going to need to pass the latitude and longitude in to coordinates, as well as the amount or the distance that we want to query. Now this is going to be in kilometers, so uh, twenty thousand here is going to equal twenty kilometers. All right, so in our programming we'll put whatever is entered times a thousand. Okay, um, we're not going to in our form have to enter latitude and longitude that wouldn't be very user friendly so what we're gonna do probably in the next video is we're gonna implement a reverse geocode um, using the API what is it the express geocoding API so that we can enter an address and it will automatically give us the, the coordinates and then we can plug them into there alright but for now let's just enter the the model function here alright so I'm just gonna copy this all right, so we're going to get airports by proximity. And we're going to change the name of this to get, we'll say get airports by proximity. Or, yeah, by proximity. And then we're going to say, we can get rid of this. Actually, you know what? Let's clear all this out just so we can start fresh. And as for parameters, we're going to have the location, or it's going to be a location object that we pass in, and then the callback, and then the limit. All right, so we're going to say airport dot find. All right, and then we're going to pass in loc. And then in there, we're going to say near. Uh, geometry. And in here is where we're going to put the type. And the type is going to be a point. It's so just one point. And then the coordinates. All right, and the coordinates is an array. And just for, just to put something for now, let's just grab what they put here. All right, and then let's see, after geometry, we're gonna do the max distance. All right, max, max distance, let's put in 20,000, which is will be 20 kilometers. Uh, and then let's see. We want to go right here. Actually, no, we want to go after the loc and we want the type. Okay, this is the type of. Actually, no, we don't need that. We don't need to specify the type. So let's bring this up and then we want comma here and then we're going to pass in name okay we'll get the name uh, code and then ID is going to be zero all right and then let's put in the callback Bring that up like that, and then we're going to say dot limit. All right. So that should do it. Let's save that, and then we'll go back to the app.js. And this is going to be a post request. All right. I'm going to put this right under the API airports. All right, so we're gonna say app.post and it's gonna be to slash API slash airports slash prox. All right, 
So we're going to get the location object first, and that's going to come in through the body. So request.body, all the fields that are entered, which is the address and the distance, they'll be in that location object. And then we're going to call airport dot get airports by proximity. All right, and then we'll pass in the location. And then we have the callback. Okay, callback will get an error and the documents returned. And then we'll check for the error. Let's just copy this here. All right. So that should do it for the back end. Um, I mean, we may have to make a couple changes here and there, but in the next video, we're going to start with the client side and we're going to set up Angular along with Bootstrap and anything else we need to set up in the front end. All right, so we have our back end API set up along with the models. Um, what we're going to do now is work on the front end. And right now we have this message saying to use these endpoints and these shouldn't be here. These should actually be at if we just go to slash API. So um, let's just change that real quick in the app JS. Uh, let's see. So this right here, this should be slash API because we want we want to have a front end to our application. All right. So let's restart that and then in the client folder this is where we're going to be working so let's go ahead and open that up in Windows Explorer alright so we're gonna have a few things here we of course want our index file and and that's pretty much it as far as HTML files it's gonna be a single page application alright uh, we're gonna need a controllers folder We're going to need a CSS folder. And then we're going to be using Bower to install all of our front end libraries. So that'll create its own folder. And we might as well go ahead and do that. So let's go to the client folder. All right. And then we're going to do Bower install bootstrap. That'll also install jQuery. All right, so we're also going to need Angular. And that should be it for now. So let's go back into the AirFind folder. And let's see. So in in controllers, we're going to create one file and we're going to call this app controller. All right. So in Sublime Text, let's go to index.html, open that up, and let's just do a test, make sure that it loads. All right, good. So we're going to be using Bootstrap, like I said. Uh, let's create our basic tags here. Okay, so we'll have our head. And inside the head, we'll do a title. References to our style sheets. So I'll paste that in. Actually, I can't. Yeah, I can't paste it in because of the virtual machine. That's all right. We'll go ahead and type it out. OK. 
Okay, so this is going to be href. This is going to be the bootstrap um, CSS file. So we're going to need to go to Bower underscore components slash bootstrap slash dist slash CSS slash bootstrap dot CSS. All right, and let's copy that. And then we're going to have this one go to just slash CSS slash uh, style CSS. And I don't think we created that yet. Let's go ahead and create that. This is just for any custom styles we might have. Uh, and that should be it for the head. So let's go ahead and create the body. Let's go ahead and just grab a sample from Get Bootstrap. All right, so we want to go to Getting Started and then to Examples and then this one here. Okay, we're just going to grab everything in the body. All right, and we're going to remove a class from the nav bar. This right here, nav bar fixed. I'm just going to get rid of that. Nav bar fixed top. All right, and then for the project name, we'll put in air find, and then we're not going to have any any uh, links. So let's get rid of these list items. And then down here, get rid of the starter template and everything in that. And let's just make a row. Okay, so we're going to have a row for the search, the search bars that we're going to have. And then we're also going to have a row for all the results. All right, so for the search, Actually, the search is going to have two rows as well. Because what we're going to do is we're going to have a row with a select list of states so that we can search by state. And then we're going to have another input box or two more input boxes, one for the address, one for the proximity. All right, so two different forms. So let's go ahead and add those forms. So this one, let's see, we're going to have a couple columns. This will be the select list. So we're going to have a six column div. And then we'll just put another six column. That'll be the button. All right, so let's say input. Actually, it's not going to be an input. It's going to be a select list. All right, but we need a select list full of states. All right, so let's grab this. You can see it has the value with the code and then the text for the, the actual option. So let's grab this. And we're going to paste that. In here, I know it's quite long. <laughs> All right, and let me just—I'm just going to put a heading right here, an H4, and we'll just say search by state. All right, and then for the select tag right here, we're going to need an ng model attribute. And that's going to be state code. And then let's give it a class of form control. All right. And then in the next column over, the sixth column is going to be our button. OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna say button. Let's give it bootstrap class BTN. All right, and this one's gonna have an ng click. And when this is clicked, it's gonna call find airports. All right, so let's take a look at that. All right, so that's good. So now we can do the next form below. And this is going to have div class call md6. All right, and then we're going to have the uh, distance, which will be another input, and that's going to be a four column. And then the button will have a two column. All right, so let's put in this input. Type is going to be text. We need an ng model. ng model is going to be location. Uh, location dot. What was it? Uh, location dot address. All right. We'll give it class. Form control. And then let's give it a placeholder. We'll say enter address. Okay, so that's one input. Then we're going to need another, so let's copy that. This one is going to be location.distance. All right, and we'll say enter kilometers. Okay, and then this one here is going to be a button, so let's copy this button. This one, this function is going to be find airports by find inputs by prox. All right, let's look at that. Okay, you might want to just put a line break. So that's one. All right, and let's put our heading for the next form as well. Oh, did I even put, I didn't put a form tag with that one, did I? All right, so right under this row, we're gonna say uh, H4. Search by distance. And then we're gonna have our opening form. And then down here, let's see, we have form. All right. All right, let's take one of those line breaks out. Okay, so those are the, the search forms. Now down here, we just wanna have a bunch of airports, okay? When we just first come to the page, nothing selected. All right, well, even if they're selected, they're not gonna show up if we don't submit. But we just want all the airports. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create our controller. So we're gonna go to appcontroller.js and we're gonna say my app equals angular.module my app. And then we need our uh, dependencies, which we don't have any, but we still need the empty brackets. All right, and then we'll say myapp.controller. 
and this is going to be called app controller. All right, then we need our dependencies, so we need our scope. Uh, and our HTTP module so that we can make get requests and post requests. All right, and then the function. And then these uh, dependencies also have to be included here. So we need scope and HTTP. All right, and then for now, let's just do console.log. So just to test it out, we'll save that. Now in the index page, we're going to need to include all these. Uh, so down right above the ending body tag. I am going to paste this because it's kind of long. All right, so we're just including all of our scripts. We have jQuery, which is all in the Bower components. Um, we have the Google Maps. Actually, we don't need that, at least not yet. Uh, and then we have Angular. We don't need this one. Okay, so we just need uh, jQuery, Angular, Bootstrap, and then our controller. Okay, so let's save that. And make sure the controller is in the controllers folder. It's not with the, the Bower components. All right, now up here, we just add, need to add our standard Angular uh, directives. So we need ng app. And that's going to be set to my app. All right, and then let's see the controller. We're going to put that onto the body. So ng controller is going to equal app controller. All right, so let's open up the console in the browser and reload. Okay, so app controller is not a function, got string. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so the issue is this bracket shouldn't end here. And it actually needs to wrap around everything, so it goes down here. All right, so now down here you can see app controller initialized all right so that's all set so let's at least get our airports to show so if we go to the app controller and let's create a function in the scope so we're going to say scope dot get airports and that's going to be a function all right, and in that function, we're going to make a, a get request. So http.get. And the request is going to be to our API slash airports. All right, then we're going to say dot success. And a function goes in here. Okay, that'll take a response object. And then what do we want to do with the response? We just want to add it to a scope variable called airports. All right, and then this airports variable is going to be accessible to us in the view or in the index.html file. So we'll save that. Let's go to index.html. Okay, so this is where the main body is going to go. I'm going to add to this div right here. I'm going to give it a um, directive called ng init. And that's going to take in get airports. And ng init just means that it's going to run it. It's going to initialize whatever we put here. All right, and since we're initializing that, then that airport variable should be available to us. Actually, let me see. This should be scope.airport. All right, so let's do div. We'll do a 12 column div. All right, and let's
let's put each one inside of a well, which will just give it a darker background. All right, so well, and then we need to do our ng repeat. And I was wrong, that shouldn't be airport, that should be airports, should be plural. All right, so we're gonna say airport in airports. Okay, so for each airport, this div will repeat. All right, and let's put in an H4. And this is gonna be the name of the airport. All right, and then under that, we're just gonna have a UL. Okay, this, let's see, let's say strong. And this is gonna be the, um, the type. We don't have a, a, a ton of info on the airports. Um, if this was a production application, you'd probably wanna have more fields, but this is just, just to show you how to do it, really. Um, so type. Right, and we'll do the code as well. So let's copy that. Say code. And that should do it. So let's save that. And there we go. See, we got all the airports. We got the name, the types, and the code. Let's put a space here to separate that form. All right, so that's it. We get our airports. In the next video, we're gonna make it so that we can filter these by state, and then, of course, by distance. So I'll see you in the next video. All right, so our application is coming along. We, we have all the airports listed, all right, and there's quite a bit, but we wanna be able to, to search them and filter them by state. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. All right, and if we look at the, the form, you can see that uh, actually down here at the bottom, we have a button and it's gonna, when clicked, it's gonna call find airports. So that's what we need to create. So we'll go into app controller and let's copy this. And this is gonna be find airports. All right, and then what we're going to do is make a get request to uh, API airports slash state. All right, and then we need uh, the state code that we pass in through the form, which we can get with the scope. So we'll say scope dot state code. All right, so state code was the ng model value on the select list. All right, so let's see, success function scope airports equals response. So that should do it. All right, so let's save it. And we'll go back and reload. Okay, we'll go ahead and choose uh, Arizona, find, and now it's only airports from Arizona. Let me do Massachusetts so I can actually identify some of these. Okay, so it is working. All right, so it's as easy as that to, to limit it by state. Okay, now the distance is a little bit more complicated, but not much. All right, so what we're doing with that is when we fill that form out, we have a button that when clicked, it's gonna call find airports by prox. So we have to create that. So let's copy this. And change that to find airports by prox. All right, now we're gonna to have to get both fields. All right, so we have 
the address field which is location dot address and then this one is location dot distance all right so we need to grab those and we're going to create a variable called location to represent that object and let's do the distance so location dot distance is going to equal whatever we type in there all right now this this with this part we need to use the what was it called the express geocode api all right and let's just test that out since we installed it we should now be able to go to slash geocode slash location and then an address all right and let's just set this to whatever let's say 11 main street Amesbury mass all right and you can see that that gives us all this information just from that address and two two of those fields are latitude and longitude all right so that's what we want to grab so we need to make a get request to this to be able to get to transfer or convert the address into coordinates all right hopefully that makes sense so right underneath this let's change this get request uh, let's change it to geocode uh, geocode slash location and then we want uh, question mark address equals and then the address so we're going to change this to scope dot location dot address all right and then success uh, we're going to have two we're going to we're also going to make a post request so i don't want them both to have the same variable response so we're going to call this one loc response all right next thing we need to do is get that latitude and longitude so to do that we're going to say location dot lat is going to equal loc response dot locations and it's the first one dot latitude okay this one will do the same thing for longitude so we'll change this I'm sorry we'll change this to um, lawn and then this will change to longitude All right, so we get those two. Now we need to make the post request. So let's get rid of that. All right, so we're going to say http.post. All right, and we're going to make a post request to slash API slash airports slash procs and we need to pass in that location object okay remember the location object contains the distance the latitude and the longitude so we're passing all that in all right and then we're going to say dot success and in here we'll have our function okay just like the rest of them it's going to have a response All right, and what we all we want to do here is just we'll just console log the response. Actually, I'm sorry. We want to set it to the airports. So, I'm just going to copy that. All right. So, now let's go to the back end because we haven't did we handle that? Oh, we did. Where is it? Prox right here. So this is where it's going to go. Then it's going to call that airports by proximity in the model, which is right here. Okay, so we do have to change some things here. Let's make sure it's coming in from the body, which which it is. Okay, location 
equals request.body. That's the location we're sending, and then we're passing it into the model function. All right, so let's go back there. By proximity, passing the location in. So I should be able to replace these with location dot lawn. Actually, no, we don't need these. What am I doing? Location dot lawn and then location dot lat. All right, and then the max distance is going to be location dot distance and we're going to do times a thousand okay so let's go ahead let's restart the server okay and we'll reload the home page all right um, enter address Let's say 89 West Main Street, Merrimack, Mass, and kilometers from, uh, let's keep it safe and just say 200, find. Okay, so it did return. I mean, it, it's finding the right amount because I'm pretty sure there is three but the content's not showing, so let me see what we're doing wrong here. All right, so I looked into it a little bit and the issue is not in our code. The issue is that we, we need to create an index on uh, this field right here, this loc. All right, so to do that, we're gonna go into the Mongo shell and let's run Mongo. Okay, we want to use airfind. And what we want to do is create an index. And it's going to be a 2D sphere index. All right, and I believe if we look at the blog here. Yep, okay, so he has it right here. Now, this is. Um, depreciated this ensure index we now want to use create index all right so we want to do that for the states and the airports all right so let's see we're going to say db dot airports dot create index all right and then we're going to put in actually we don't want to do that we want our curly braces and we'll say loc, and that's going to be 2D sphere. Okay, you can see um, number of indexes before was one, after is two, so it went okay. All right, let's do the same thing with the states. So db dot states dot create index loc. All right, so now let's go and restart the application. All right, and I'm going to reload. Okay, put in the address, 200 kilometers, and there we go. Okay, so these are all airports that are within 200 kilometers of this address. Let's change this to, say, 50. All right, now we get three. So that's working, the search by state's working. One very last thing that I would like to do is just change the look of it a little bit. So the easiest way to do that is using a theme like Boot Swatch, or one of the themes at Boot Swatch. So let's grab, let's grab one of these dark ones. Okay, so all we need to do here is, actually I don't want that. I want the bootstrap CSS. I'm going to copy it and then we'll go into Bower Components, Bootstrap, Dist, CSS, and then Bootstrap CSS. All right, and I'm just going to replace the whole thing, save it. 
Let's go back to our application, reload. And there we go, that looks much better. All right, so we now have an application where you can search for airports by state and distance. So uh, obviously you could go on and add a lot more to this, this application, uh, the ability to add airports and such. Uh, but my main goal was to just introduce you to GeoJSON and um, Geospatial indexes. Obviously, there's a lot more to cover, but that's the absolute basics. So hopefully you learned something from this project, and I will see you in the next one. Hello, and welcome to Chapter 9. In this chapter and project, we'll be building a really simple chat client using MongoDB along with socket IO and the Node.js native MongoDB driver. All right, so socket IO basically allows us to communicate through web sockets and we can implement real time data. All right, so this is ideal for chat programs because um, no matter what you're doing, if your browser is open, it's going to update. You're not going to need to refresh the page or anything like that. It's just going to automatically update. All right, and for the application, the user will be able to, to enter a username and a message, and that will get saved to MongoDB. All right, so we have the, the intro. Section two, we're going to uh, enable server socket events. Section three, we're going to connect to the client and get messages. And section four, we're going to be able to submit messages from the client. So you'll learn how to use the native MongoDB Node.js driver, uh, and you'll also learn about WebSockets, Socket IO, and how to implement real-time data. All right, so that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome to your next project. In this chapter, we're going to be building a simple chat client. All right, we're going to utilize a couple different things here. One is going to be Socket.io. All right, so socket.io allows us to send data back and forth over web sockets. And what's great about this is everything is done in real time. All right, so if we're in a chat room and someone sends a chat or a message, anyone who has a browser window open is going to see that update. All right, it's not like how it would be typically where they would have to refresh the page to see the updated message. It's just going to it's just going to pop up. All right, so it's it's ideal for chat applications or anything that has to do with messaging and real time data. All right, and it's really easy to implement as well. Um, now, in past courses, I've I've done chat clients using Socket IO, but never using MongoDB along with it. Um, just basically using sessions and things like that. Um, so what we'll, we'll do is every chat that's posted will get put into the database so that it stays there uh, even if you exit the application. All right, so we're gonna do that. And then as far as interacting with MongoDB, we're gonna use the, the native Node.js driver. Um, it's, it's really simple to use and it's mostly used for, for, for basic simple types of queries. Um, there's not a whole lot to it like it's not and there's not as much depth as something like mongoose um, but I figured we should use it in a project and you can see it's it's really easy collection to find the collection collection dot insert um, updating a document you can see collection dot update it it's pretty much as if we were using mongodb in the shell all right so we'll be using that and the structure for this app is going to be extremely simple. We're just going to have a main app.js file, an index file, and that's pretty much it. We'll be using Bootstrap, but I'm just going to use a Bootstrap CDN so we don't have to um, download it or anything like that. All right, so let's go ahead and open up our projects folder. And let's create a new folder. I'm going to call this Mongo Chat. All right, and we're going to create our app.js. All right, and let's also create our index file. All 
right and let's let's also create um, our package.json file but we'll do that through the command line so let's open up the git bash utility all right and we're just going to do an npm init all right so mongo chat is fine for the name versions good description simple chat client entry point is app.js don't need any of those and put your name all right so that was created for us let's go into sublime and so let's see I'm gonna have to move that and add this project let's see mongo chat all right, so in the package.json, we just have two dependencies we need to add. Okay, so we're going to want MongoDB, which is the native MongoDB driver. And we also want socket.io. All right, and let's put a comma right there. And that should be good. Let's save that. And then we'll go back and let's do npm install. All right, so that's all set. Now let's go open up the app.js. And we'll just set some initial values here. Let's we're gonna set Mongo to require MongoDB and we're gonna add on to this dot mongo client. Alright, and then we're gonna have a variable called client and we'll set that to require oops. Okay, so we'll require socket.io and then we want to add on to listen and let's listen on port 3000 dot sockets all right so that's setting up for us to use web sockets now everything's going to go into our mongo.connect okay so we're going to pass in here the URL or the URI, sorry, um, MongoDB, and it's going to be uh, on our local host. So we'll say 127.001, and let's call it Mongo Chat. All right, and then we have our function, and this function will have an error and a database object. All right, now if there is an error, then we're just going to throw it. Okay, if there's not, then we're going to we're going to connect to our web sockets. So we're going to say client.on. Okay, and the event is connection. So on connection we have a function and we're going to pass it a socket. All right, let's create a variable called chat and I'm going to set it to db.collection and we want to pass in the collection which is going to be chats. All right, so that's we'll use this to do our insert and find and, and that kind of stuff. All right, then we're going to, let's say, send status, and we're going to set that to function, and let's pass in S, and we'll say socket dot emit status. 
I'm sorry, that should have quotes. Socket dot emit status, and then we're going to pass in the S as well. All right. So this has to do with the status message. We so when someone posts a chat, we want it to say message sent or or whatever. So we're going to catch this uh, this status emit in the index file in a little bit. All right. So next thing we want to do is we want to be able to find all the chats in the database. All right, so we're going to go and we're going to say chat.find. All right, and then we're going to uh, let's add limit and we'll get the last 100 chats. We'll sort sort by um, ID. So ID 1 and then we want it to array All right, and then in here we're going to pass in a function. All right, and that function will have an error and a response. All right, so if there is an error, then we'll just throw. If not, then let's say socket dot emit. Oops. Socket dot emit output. And we're going to pass in the response. All right, so again, we'll deal with this on the index on the client side. Basically, I just want to get the app.js file complete before we go on to the index file and, and the client side JavaScript. All right, so um, a lot of this stuff, you might not know what's going on, but that's fine, we'll get to it. Next thing we wanna do is we wanna catch the input that comes in from the index page. All right, so we'll go under this chat find and we're gonna do socket, socket.on input and we have our function. All right, and we're gonna grab the data that's sent. All right, now let's put that data in a variable. So we'll say var, um, we'll say var name. Okay, it's gonna represent the user's name. And we're gonna set that to data.name. All right, and then the message will equal data dot message now we want to make sure that the name and the message are passed so let's do we'll do an if statement and we'll say if name is equal to nothing or message is equal to nothing then we're going to send status and we're going to send please fill in name and message all right and then we'll say else then we're going to insert it into the database so we'll say chat insert uh, let's see chat insert and then we want the name and we also want the message all right then we'll have our function and we're going to emit the output so client dot emit output and data all right and then right under that we're going to send status okay we're going to send status message is going to be 
message sent. And let's also set clear to true. Oops. And then the only other thing I want to do is I want to be able to clear the chats. So we'll say socket dot on clear. So function data and we'll call chat remove. Okay, so this is going to remove everything. And then we'll do a socket dot emit cleared. All right, so that'll just clear all the messages out. All right, so let's save that. And we can't really test it yet, but let's see if it runs without error, which it does. All right. So in the next video, we'll go ahead and create the index file. Um, we're going to implement Bootstrap and um, work with the other side of the of the web socket. Because basically, we're just sending events back and forth with the socket on and then the socket emit. All right, so we'll do that next. Hey guys, we are back. In the last video, we handled our app.js file and all the server-side socket events. And now we're gonna work on the index file. So let's open that up. And we're gonna add our HTML structure. title all right so we're just going to use the bootstrap CDN so let's grab that real quick okay we just want the CSS so we'll put that in a link And that should be all we need for the head. So now let's open the body. All right, so let's make a container. Okay, we'll have a row. And let's do column. Okay, so this is going to be call, this is going to be a six column div, but I want to offset it three so that it's in the middle. So we're going to say call, call MD offset three. All right. And let's put in an H1. And let's give it a class I want it centered so we'll say class equals text center and we'll just say mongo chat all right and let's let's put a button there for clearing chats as well so we'll say button and we'll give it a class uh, BTN BTN danger and let's also give it a class of clear BTN and also actually that's good okay and then under the H1 is gonna be our status okay so for instance, when we submit a message, it'll say message sent. So let's say div class status. All 
right? And then we'll have our chat. So this chat class will surround everything, the input, the name input, and the chat window. All right, so first thing we'll have is the, the name input. So let's say input and the type is gonna be text. Uh, let's give it a class of username as well as form control just to make it look good. And let's give it a placeholder. And we'll just say what's your name? Let me make this let me widen this a little bit so you guys can see better. All right, so that's the name input. Then we'll have a line break, and then we'll have our messages, our message window. So let's say div class messages, and I'm also gonna give it the bootstrap class as well to give it a gray background. All right, we actually don't need anything inside there. It's gonna be put, put in dynamically. All right, so that's that, and then we'll have a text area and let's give this a class of form control. All right, and we'll give it a placeholder. And we'll just say enter message. All right, so that's the, the entire form and the chat window. So now we need to deal with our JavaScript. So we're going to go right above the body and we'll start by including our web sockets. So we'll say script source is going to be HTTP 127.0.0.1 3000 slash and then we need the uh, socket dot io slash socket dot io dot js all right let's try and just um, run this so we'll say node app and then we'll go Mongo chat, and I'm just going to open this index page up with Chrome. All right, so uh, what's going on here? It's kind of strange. So the text area, oh, we didn't put the ending text area. All right. So if we do a uh, control U and click on this socket IO, all right, good. Just to make sure that it's actually connected. So that's basically what it'll look like. I know it's not too pretty, but it's, the, it's not about how it looks really. It's just the functionality that we're trying to focus on. Okay, so let's create a new set of script tags to work in. All right, and everything is gonna go into a self-calling function. And we wanna add our parentheses at the end here. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is let's set a variable called element and we'll set that to function and we're gonna pass in a selector. All right, and then we're gonna return document dot query selector and pass in selector. All right, we're not using, we're not gonna use jQuery or anything. We're just using straight JavaScript. 
All right, so we're going to put the different elements here. All right, so first we'll have status and we'll set that to element and class of status. Okay, which we have where is it? Right here. All right, so that node or that element represents this. All right, next we'll have the message window, which we'll just call messages. Okay, so we'll set that to dot messages. All right, and then let's see, we'll say text area, that's going to represent the input. And we're going to set that to just chat text area. All right, and then we'll have the username. And that element has a class of username. And then the clear button. All right. Actually, I'm sorry. These should be these should be commas. Oops. Not quotes, commas. All right, and then we're going to say status default. We're going to set to status dot text content. All right, next we'll have our function to set the status. All right, and we'll pass in S. And we're going to say status. Status dot text content is going to equal whatever is passed in. All right, now. Let's say if S is not is not equal to the default then we're going to set a variable of delay and we'll set that to set timeout which will then run a function and then we'll say set status to the default status Fault, and let's put that. We'll say three thousand milliseconds, so three seconds. All right, because we want when the status shows and it says message sent, we want it to disappear after we don't. We don't want it to stay there. All right, so now let's see. Let's now um, create our socket variable and we're going to set that to io.connect. All right, and then we want to pass in the URI, which of course is our local host, and it's port 3000. All right, so let's see, we're going to say if. We'll say if socket is not undefined, then what are we going to do? We're going to set our output. So socket dot on output. Then we have our function. Okay, function gets data and let's say as long as data has a length then 
then we're going to go ahead and loop through it. So I'm going to say four. Uh, and now this we're saying socket dot socket dot on output. All right. If we look at our app JS, we're dealing with uh, right here where we're emitting the output. Okay, from whatever we find in the database in the chats. All right. Now to loop through, we're going to say we're going to use a for loop. We'll say if var x equals zero. All right, and as long as x is less than data dot length, okay, as long as there's still data there, and then we're going to increment. We're going to say x uh, x equals x plus one. All right, and then in here, what we're going to do is we're going to set a variable message. Okay, let's set that to document dot create element, uh, and we're just going to create a div. All right, and then we're going to set an attribute. So we'll say message dot set attribute. And the attribute that we're going to want to set is a class, and we're going to set it to chat message. All right, and then let's say message dot text content. Okay, we want to set that to data, and then the current iteration, which is going to be x. And then the name, the username. All right, and then we're going to concatenate. Let's put a colon in between them. All right, and then we'll concatenate the message. So say data, whatever the current iteration is, which is x dot message. All right, and we want to append. All right, so messages dot append child message. All right, and then we're going to say messages dot insert before message, and then we want the first child. So messages dot first child all right and that that should do it so so basically what this does is it just loops through the data that we have in the database which are the, is the username and the message and it's going to spit it out we're going to have the name colon and then the message so what I would like to do now is enter some data through our mongo shell all right, so let's see what the database, the collection. I mean, the database is Mongo chat, and then we should have chats collection. So we need, let's add some data to that. All right, so let's open up a command line. All right, so we're gonna go to the MongoDB directory. Okay, we want to go to the bin folder. All right, so let's say show DBs. Okay, so we're going to have to create the database, which is Mongo chat. All right, so let's say use Mongo chat and we'll do DB Actually, let's do a DB dot create collection. All right, and the collection, I think we're going to call it chats, right? Yeah. So create collection chats, and then we'll say DB dot chats dot insert. 
and let's put in a name. So we'll say John Doe. All right, and then we also want a message. We'll say hello world. Okay, so that's inserted and now Oh, did we save it? No, we didn't save it. Oh. All right, so let's see. Unexpected token. Uh, find 50. Oh, we're going to say if socket. There we go. All right, so now we're getting the message that's in the database. So that part's worked out. Um, let's just add another one just to make sure everything's okay. So we'll say hello. We'll say how are you? And let's make that Steve. All right, now we do have to reload if we enter it through the shell. All right, so that's good. So in the next video, we're going to make it so that we can actually enter our name and message through here as opposed to just through the shell. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome back. In the last video, we made it so that we could read our database entries or our messages in our application. Now we need to make it so that we can enter a name and a message and submit to the database. All right, so we're gonna go, let's see. Let's go under this um, socket.onOutput, which is right here. All right, and then we're gonna deal with the status. All right, so let's say socket.onStatus. Okay, so this pertains to, uh, let's see, where is it? Right here, send status, it's gonna emit. Okay, so we're gonna say socket on status, and then we want the function. Okay, we'll pass in the data. And then we're gonna call the set status function. So set status, and then inside here, we're going to say type of data should be equal to object. All right, and then we're going to say data dot message equals data. All right, and then <clears throat> After that, we're going to test to see if um, it should be cleared. Okay, if the text area should be cleared. So we're going to say if data.clear is equal to true, then we're going to go ahead and say text area.value is equal to or equals nothing. All right. Okay, now we need to add an event because we when we when we add a message, we're going to click the enter key to send it. All right. So we have to have an event listener. So we're going to go under this. So right here and we're going to set our key down event. All right. So text area is the node we're dealing with. And then we're going to say add event listener. And we want to listen for the key down event. Okay, so we'll say key down and then a function. And we're going to pass in the event object. All right, and then we're just going to say var self. 
is equal to this. All right, so basically that's just getting whatever we put in the text area. And then for the username, we're going to say name equals username dot value. All right, and then we're going to test to make sure that it's the enter key that's pushed. Okay, so we're going to say if event dot which is equal to 13 oops, um, and event dot shift key is equal to false. All right, and then we're going to say socket dot emit. So we're going to emit input. All right, and we'll pass in the name. And then we'll pass in the message, which is going to be self dot value. All right, and then we're just going to prevent the default action. Oops. Yeah, we want event dot prevent default. All right, so let's see what that does. I'm going to restart the app.js. All right, and then we'll reload this and we'll put in a name. We'll say Jim. And we'll say hello everyone. And there it is. And you can see the message disappeared after three seconds. All right, so let's add another one. We'll say Greg. Okay, so message sent, and it should disappear. And this stuff over here connected and input. Ignore that. That I was just testing it out. So yeah, that shouldn't. I don't want that there. All right. So the last thing we want to do is just to be able to clear the chats. So we have a button. Where is it? We have a button with the class of clear button. All right. And then we set that here to a variable called clear button. So let's go down. Let's see go down to here all right and we're just gonna say clear was it I don't think it was a uppercase B so clear button and then we're gonna add an event listener here as well and the lift the event that we're listening for is a click And then all we're going to do here is emit. We're going to say socket dot emit clear. All right, now we have to catch that on this side, which did we do? We did. All right, so when that goes through, it's going to call chat remove. And then it's going to emit from here an event called cleared. All right, so then we have to just catch that. So we'll say socket, socket dot on cleared. And we're just going to set messages dot text content. And we're going to set that to nothing. All right, so let's reload. If we click clear, they all go away. And if we reload, they're still gone. They're gone for, from the database. So that's pretty much it. It's a really, really simple application. But um, again, I just wanted to kind of get you introduced to WebSockets and how they work. Basically, you just emit. It's socket.emit and socket.on. And you can just send data back and forth without any kind of without needing any kind of page refresh or anything like that so um, yeah really helpful so hopefully you enjoyed the project and I will see you in the next one 
Hello and welcome to your last project. In this project we're going to be building a search engine. Alright, so this search engine is going to give us websites, website info, as well as news articles. And we'll be able to implement full text search by using a Mongoose plugin. Alright, so we have the project intro, section 2, we'll be generating, generating an express app and what that means is we're going to install something called the Express Generator that will create a file and folder structure for us to work with. All right, section three, we'll, we'll be building the website model. We'll also add the functionality to be able to add websites to the database. Section four, we'll add the functionality to be able to search websites. And section five, we'll be uh, adding and searching the articles. So in this project, you'll learn how to implement full text search using Mongoose. We'll learn how to use the Express Generator and check out the files that it creates for us. And we'll also be using the foundation framework for, our, for the HTML and the presentation part of the application. All right, so hopefully you enjoy this last project and I will see you in the next video. Hey guys, welcome to your next project. In this chapter, we're gonna be building a website and article search engine. All right, so we're gonna be using Express, and we're gonna use Express on the front and back end because we're gonna be using the Express generator, which will generate an entire boilerplate for us, and it includes a template engine called Jade. All right, so Jade is, it's not exactly HTML, it's an HTML, um, It'll generate HTML from its own syntax. And let me just pull it up real quick here, just so you can see what it looks like. All right, so on this side, we have regular HTML. We have our opening and closing tags. This side is Jade. So you can see that there's no tags. There's no um, greater than or less than character. All right, and you'll also notice that there's only one. There's no opening and closing tag. For instance, the title, we don't have a closing title. The, how we tell the structure of this document is by indentation. All right, so right here you can see the H1 is indented from the body. That means that the H1 is inside of the body, just like it is here. All right, same thing down here. We have, uh, actually, yeah, we have a container, and then we have the paragraph that's inside an if statement and the if statement is inside the container. All right, so it, it deals with indentation rather than opening and closing tags. All right, now for search, we're gonna use something called the Mongoose Search plugin. Um, and obviously we'll be using Mongoose, so we'll create our models just like we have in the past, except we're gonna implement this, which is really easy. All we have to do in the model file is require it and then we're going to define the plugin and the fields that we want to be involved in the search and then just create our search function which is just a query all right so we'll be using that and then for the front end template we're going to use um, foundation instead of bootstrap i just figured i'd change it up a little bit um, it's really this is a really good front end responsive framework but i mean the design we're not really focusing on that it's just something to to make it look not horrible. All right, so what we're going to do is go to our projects folder, and I'm actually going to open the git bash utility in the projects folder. All right, because we're going to be using the express generator. Okay, so if you don't have express installed globally, make sure that you do that. We're going to have to do npm install, and then make sure you, ha you add the g flag, and then express. Okay, that'll install Express globally so that you can access it from anywhere. All right, so next thing we want is the Express Generator. So we're just gonna say install G Express Generator. All right, so now that we have that, we should be able to generate an app. So let's say Express, and then the name of this is gonna be Site Search. All right, so it created all these files and folders for us. So let's go to Sublime and let's get rid of this. I'm gonna add that folder. So projects, site search. 
and you can see these are all the folders it generated all right so we have our bin we don't have to touch anything in there um, public is our static directory gives us uh, style sheets a JavaScript folder and an images folder we have our routes all right so in this structure our routes are broken up into their own file all right and then we have our views which are jade files and we have our main app file and our package.json all right you'll notice this there isn't a node modules folder because we need we still need to run npm install so that we can install all the dependencies all right so before we do that let's open up package.json and let's add some dependencies all right first off let's change the version to version one uh, and these are all the dependencies that are going to be installed okay body parser a cookie parser a debug program uh, of course express jade morgan and serve favicon which deal with the uh, icon the favicon all right so we're going to add a few to this okay we're going to add mongoose We're going to add a mongoose search plugin. Let's see, what is it right here? And that should do it. So let's save that. All right, and then we'll go back to our git bash utility and we're going to cd into site search. All right, and then we're just going to run npm install. Okay, that'll go ahead and install all the dependencies. Now, if we go to um, the app.js file, we have a few things to do here. So we're going to require mongoose. And then let's go ahead and connect. So mongoose connect, and then we're going to put the location of our database, which is going to be mongodb slash slash localhost slash, and then the name of the database, which will be site search. All right, then we need a database object. So we'll say var db equals mongoose dot connection. All right, now you can see that our routes are in their own files. All right, so this right here represents the index route or the, the, the bottom level route. So if we go to, let's say, slash search, that's going to be in the index route. Okay, now a user's route comes, I guess, as an example um, for creating another route. So we would have routes users, which is right here. All right, now this slash, although it's just a slash here, since it's in the user's route, this really means slash users. All right, so if we say slash add, that's actually slash users slash add. All right, so that's how that works. Now we're not going to have a user's route, so let's go ahead and change that. All right, we're going to have a website's route. So we'll change that and we'll change this to websites. And then down here, we're going to change these. All right, and we're also going to have an articles route. So we'll copy that. Change that to articles. And then down here. All right. Now we'll get an error if we start the app because we we're including these routes, but we don't actually have them yet. So let's go to the routes folder. And we're going to rename users to websites. All right. And then for this stuff, we'll just leave it as it is for now. 
and let's go ahead and create another folder in routes or I'm sorry another file and save that as articles.js all right and then I'm just going to copy what we have in websites for now All right, so we should be able to run the app. So let's go ahead and with the express generator, it sets it up so we can use npm start. But what I want to do is I want to install something called node mon, which will allow us to run the application, but also it'll, no matter what we do, if we update our programming, it'll auto update so that we don't have to restart every time we save something, uh, every anytime we save server side programming. All right, so to install that, really easy. We're just gonna say npm install, and you wanna make sure you do this globally. So add the G, and then node mon. All right, so now that that's installed and we're in our site search directory, we should be able to run node mon. All right, and now if we go to our browser, and let's go to localhost 3000 and there we go our app is up and running now this here is coming from our index jade file all right now with jade we have a layout which surrounds everything surrounds all of the other views all right so this is where the head the html tags the um, css reference links all that stuff goes Okay, this block content right here represents any other view that's in the layout. All right, for example, this is the index. So if we go to index, every single view that we have has to have extends layout and block content. All right, and then under that, you can do what you want. In this case, we have an H1 and we have a paragraph. Now this here, this title, this is a variable and this is getting passed in from the route. If we go to the index route and we go to the home page this slash represents the home page you can see we're rendering the index view or template which is index.jade and we're passing a variable called title which we set to express all right so where it says welcome to title you can see it's welcome to express because that's where what it was set to right here all right so it's just a rundown of how this um, route view relationship works all right so what I want to do now is implement foundation all right so if we go to uh, foundation.zurb.com we want to go ahead and download I'm just gonna click download everything all right and if we open that up we have a file structure here and I'm gonna open up the application that we're building as well site search and what we want to do is in the public directory we want to go to style sheets and we're going to bring over the foundation CSS file all right that's all we really need we don't need uh, any of that we don't need the JavaScript file now we need to use Jade because that's the template engine we're using uh, but if you don't want to just type straight jade what you can do is type out the HTML and then we can use something called the jade converter all right so this is really helpful all we have to do is paste some HTML in here and it'll give us the jade code all right so let's go ahead <clears throat> and create the HTML so I'm just gonna create a blank file for now and we're gonna start in the body because we already have the head if we look at layout.jade basically um, all we want to do here in the head is add the foundation CSS file so we can just paste that in and say foundation alright so next we want the body now all we want really on the home page is a search box alright so we'll make it look a, a, a little presentable but it's not going to be anything special. Um, so let's go back to that untitled file and let's create the HTML. So we're using foundation so we can have rows and, and columns. So let's create a row. All right.
right? And this will be a uh, it'll stretch 12 columns. So we'll say div class equals large 12 columns. All right, and all we're going to have here is our h1. So kind of like the logo. So we'll say h1 and I want it centered, so let's use text center. All right, and this will just say site search. All right, so under that, let's create another row. All right, and then get rid of this and let's put a panel, which will give it just a gray background. All right, and then in the panel, we're going to have our form. We'll add the attributes later. And then we're going to have another row. All right, and let's see. Let's have a 10 column div for the input. And then we'll have a uh, two column for the button. All right, so in this one, let's go ahead and put input type is going to be text. Uh, and then we'll give it a placeholder. We'll just say search. And then we'll give it a name of search text. All right, and then this column, oops, this should be a two. And this column will have the button. So it'll be an input type is going to be submit. We'll give it a class of button and also tiny. All right, and then we'll give it a name of what are we going to call this? Actually, this doesn't need a name. It's just the button. So type submit class, uh, we'll need a value. So for the value, we'll just say go. All right. Now we need a way for them to choose if they're going to search for a website or an article. So let's go right above this 10 column div. And I'm going to create a div and I want this to be aligned in the center. So we'll give it a class of text center. All right, and then we're going to have an input type is going to be radio. Uh, we'll give it a value of website. And let's make this checked by default. Then we'll just say website. And then we'll create another one. And this one's going to have a value of news. And let's get rid of the checked. Change this to news. All right. And we also have to give, uh, we have to give these a name. So let's put that right here. And we'll call this search type. Okay, I got to do it for the other one as well. You guys already know this. <laughs> All right, whoops, I didn't mean to save it. So that's pretty much it as far as the home page. Uh, so let's go ahead and grab everything, copy it, and we'll go ahead and paste it in here. And it's gonna give us our J code. All right, now it always gives you HTML and body. I don't know why it does that, but we don't need that. So just grab everything below it. All right, and we're gonna go and paste it into our layout above the block content. Now, when you make indents, you can use a, a space or you can use a tab, but you can't use both. You have to be consistent or it's gonna throw an error. All right, so we're just gonna use spaces. 
All right, so we'll paste that in, save that, and then go back, reload, and there we go. Now this should be on the side. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Uh, let's see, we have a large 10 columns, two columns. That's really weird. Oh, is it because this is too small? Yeah, there we go. All right. Now down here we have the index and I don't want anything on the home page except this box. So all I'm going to do is on the index page I'm going to get rid of this. Get rid of the heading, the heading and the paragraph. All right. So this is our search engine landing page. And I think this is a good place to stop. In the next video we're going to start to work on the models and what kind of data, all the fields that we're going to have for websites and articles and things like that. Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go ahead and create our models for our data. Okay, so we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this models. Okay, we're going to have three files here. One is going to be category.js. Now, there's, the categories really only play a part in uh, when we create an article, we get a, a drop down of all the categories. That's pretty much the, the, ex the extensiveness of categories in this application. And feel free to, to do more with them, maybe list all the articles in a specific category, uh, but that's all we're gonna do with it. All right, let's create article.js. And of course, website.js. All right, so let's go ahead and start with categories just because it's the easiest. So we need to uh, require mongoose. All right, and we're going to set up our schema. going to equal mongoose dot schema all right so we're going to have a title and we'll give it a type of string and let's make that required as well all right then we'll have a description Actually, you know what? We don't need a description. Let's just do a title. We'll do a title and then we'll do a created at. Okay, so created at, it's going to be a date. And then let's give it a default of date.now. All right, and then we're going to create our category object. And this is going to be available outside of this file because we're using module exports. So here we're going to say mongoose.model category. And then we need the schema. All right. And then we're going to create one function for this called get categories. So we need to say module dot exports dot get categories is equal to a function. All right, and let's see that function will take a callback and an optional limit parameter. And we're going to say category dot find pass in the callback. And then let's add dot limit and we'll sort it. Let's sort by title and ascending. 
All right, so that's pretty much all we need for now. Let's save that. And then we're going to copy this. And let's go to website. And we're just going to switch all this out. All right. We'll do the fields after. Let's just get this taken care of. So website, and then the model is going to be called website. We'll have a get websites. Actually, you know what? We don't need get. We're not going to need that. Eh, you know what? We're going to have a search websites function. So let's just replace it with that. And for right now, let's just, we'll pass in the parameters. Okay, so we're going to have the search text and then a callback. But I'm just going to get rid of this for now and we'll deal with it after. All right, so let's take a look at the schema. All right, so we're going to need a title. We're going to need a description. Okay, this is just like the results you would get from Google as far as the information, which is basically just a title, a URL, and a description. Okay, so this will be the URL. And then the description. And let's make, actually, we'll, we'll keep them all to, to required. All right. Now let's implement the plugin. So if we take a look at that, looks like we need to require it, first of all. So let's grab that. OK, search plugin. And then let's see, we have our schema, which we already have. We're going to need to put this. We'll put this down here. All right, now we're going to change this to website schema. Dot plugin, search plugin, fields, title, description, and then we'll just change tags to URL. Okay, because we want to include all of these in our search. All right. Um, and then I think that's it besides making the actual search. Yeah. So we get that. This is going to go. This dot search function is going to go down here and search websites. So let's yeah, we can put that in now, I guess. All right, so we'll say website dot search. All right, and we're going to pass in our search text. And then we're going to say title, whoops, title one. Description one. And URL one. Okay, we want all of these things. Then let's see, we're going to have another parameter with an object, and we're going to specify conditions. Okay, so title, and then we're going to use this exists. So exists true. All right, and then we'll have description. That'll also have exists true. And then, let's see, is that right? Yeah, and then we'll have URL. Exists true. All right, now let's go here. And we're going to have another parameter. This is going to be sort. 
So I guess we can sort by title. And then we'll set a limit. Let's say let's just say limit 50. All right, and then finally we need our callback, which we'll set in the route. All right, so that's the entire search function. So we'll save that. We're also going to need a, a function to add a website. All right, so let's do that. We'll say module dot exports dot add website. Uh, oops, we don't need that. So to add the website, it's going to take in the website object and a callback. All right, and all we have to do here is say website dot create and we'll pass in the website and the callback. All right, that's it. So let's go to the website's route. Actually, before we do that, let's create the form, the add form. So in the views, we're going to create a couple things here, actually. Let's go ahead and create um, add website dot jade. And then we'll also create add article. We'll have uh, website results. And also article results. All right, now our form for add website, it's going to have a drop down of categories. So what I want to do is insert some categories and I'm going to do that through the Mongo shell. So we're going to go to our Windows command prompt. And I'm going to go to my MongoDB bin directory. DBs. We shouldn't have the database set up yet. Okay, so let's set it up. We'll just say use site search and let's say DB. Actually, this is going to be a long one because I'm going to paste in a bunch of categories. So let me grab that. So this is what it's going to look like. Okay, so we're just pasting in uh, a title and then a created at. All right, so let's db.categories.insert. All right, so you can see we've inserted 15 entries, and now we have categories. So I'll get rid of that. Now let's add the form. I'm going to go ahead and just paste in the jade. Oops, that's not it. Okay, so remember we need extends layout and block content. Then we just have an H1, we have a form. All right, so the form is, it's a post form and it's gonna go to slash websites slash add. All right, so we need to create that route. And then we just have a title, URL, description. All right, so let's save that. Now, before we can actually work on submitting the form, and adding a website, we need to be able to display the form. All right, so what I want to do is put a couple links down here to add a website or add an article. So I'm going to go back to layout.jade and we're going to go down below the block content. And let's do a couple, let's do a line break and then an HR and then another line break. 
and then a footer tag to a space, and then we're going to have our links. Whoops. Now, to do attributes, geez, to do HTML attributes, you need to put those in parentheses. All right, so we want href, and we want this to go to slash websites slash add. All right, and then we'll have a pipe to separate the two. This one will be slash articles slash add and the text will say add article and for this text we'll say add website that's weird let's actually um, push this over a little bit Sometimes this jade syntax gets really, there we go. All right, so these need to be on different lines. It can get really tedious. I'm not a big fan of jade. There we go, all right. So add website, we have going to websites add, which is not found because we didn't create a route yet. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll go to routes and then websites. And let's copy this. And this is going to go to slash add, which is really going to website slash add. All right. And then we're going to render the template, but we also need to get the categories because we need to fill the drop down. So what we're going to do is make a reference to our category model. So we're going to require and we want to require dot slash models slash category.js all right and then here whoops you can say category dot get categories pass in our callback all right and then we want to render so we'll say res dot render and the page is a template that we want to render is what is it add website and we're also going to pass along with it the categories all right so let's see add website make sure that's saved and let's try going there again whoops Okay, we cannot find module models category JS. Uh, where am I doing? Routes, website. Oh, this should be dot dot slash because we're in the routes folder. All right, so if we say add website, good, brings us to the form. So now for submitting the form, remember this is going to be a post request uh, to slash add. Okay, we have a get request which just shows the form, but the post will handle actually submitting it. So let's copy this. And we're going to change this to a post. Okay, and then we're going to grab the form content and put it into an object. Uh, so let's go right up here and let's say var website equals new website. Whoops. All right, and then we're going to add the properties. So we'll say website.title is going to equal to request.body.title. Okay, that's whatever's coming in from the form. Website.url is coming from request.body.url. And then website.description. All 
All right, and now we need to actually add it to the database. So let's change this to website, and we're going to say dot add website. Okay, we created that in the model. So that's going to give us back. First of all, we have to pass in the website object we just created right here. Um, and then let's see, our function is going to give us back website. And we're going to render. No, we're not going to. We're not going to render. We're going to redirect. So first, we'll just check for the error. Okay, if no errors, then we're going to say res.redirect. And let's go to the home page. All right, so we'll save that. Let's see if this thing works. Now I have this um, text file that I'm going to include. And it just has a bunch of uh, queries and stuff like that for this. And you can see we have a bunch of websites here. Um, we have Facebook, LinkedIn. These are the this is the actual data from a Google search. All right, so this would be the title. So paste that in, and then we have the URL and the description. And we're not doing any tags or anything like that. So save. All right, so website's not defined. We just have to add that. We actually want to add that in the index. So I'm going to copy this, and then we're going to go to our index route. And then we're going to just change that to website. All right, so let's go and try that again. Okay, so it redirected us. Now to check it, let's go to our Mongo shell and we'll say db.websites.find. And there it is. All right, now you can see since we we installed that Mongo site on the Mongoose search plugin, we have extra stuff here. You can see we have this keywords, and then we have different keywords that we can search for. Um, so that is that's added by that plugin. All right, so we can't search for anything yet because we haven't added the route to actually do the search. So that's what we'll get to next. All right, so I'll see you in the next video. Okay, so we're now able to add a website to our database. And now what we need to do is make it so that we can search for that website. All right, and then also so we can search for articles, which we'll do in a bit. Okay, so when we submit a search, it's not gonna be just for a website. It could be for, the, for news, for articles as well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the route in the index route, okay? Not in websites and not in articles. So this is gonna be a post request. Actually, let's, let's take a look at the form real quick. All right, so we do need to add a couple attributes to the form. Okay, so the method is gonna be post and the um, action is gonna be slash search. Okay, so that's gonna be in the index route slash search. Okay, make sure you have the name uh, for the search types as well as the search text. All right, so now we'll go to the index route and let's go ahead and just copy this and we're gonna change this to a post and it's gonna go to slash search. Actually, you know what? Let's just have it go to the root, just slash. All right, so in the layout, we'll just change that to just the forward slash. Okay, so we're gonna have to grab the stuff coming in from the form, so let's do that first. We have the search text. We can grab that from the request.body. 
Okay, same thing with the search type. Alright, now we have to run a test to see if the person is searching for a website or a news article. So we'll say if search type is equal to website, then we'll do this. Then we'll say else if. We'll say else if search type is equal to news and then we'll have an else at the end which shouldn't happen but if it does then we're just going to respond say uh, res.send and let's just say choose website or news alright so we're going to work in here at first because we're dealing with the website all right, so we're going to call website dot search websites. I think that's what it's called. Let's just check real quick. Yep, so it's right here. All right, so we're going to call search websites. Where are we? Oh, yeah, we're in index. All right, and we're going to pass in the uh, search text, and then we'll have our function. Okay, so the websites will be returned, and we're going to say if there's an error. Send it. If there's not, then let's create a variable called model and we're going to set websites to websites.results and then we'll render. Okay, and we're going to render website results and we're also going to pass we're going to pass along actually we don't need that we're going to pass along the model okay so we'll save that now we need to go to website results paste that in all right so basically what we're doing here is we're going to loop through websites which is coming in from right here, we're passing it, we're putting it in the model, and then we're passing the model to the view. All right, so we're looping through those. Each one will have a class of result. Then we're going to have a link that's going to go to the, whatever the URL is, and that's going to wrap around the title, the URL, and the description. All right, so let's save that. All right, so let's go ahead. We know we have Facebook in there, so let's search for Facebook. Okay, cannot read property split of undefined. Uh, hmm. That's kind of weird. All right, one issue I see is that this text, search text, should be a capital T. But I'm not sure if that would throw that error. So let's go ahead and try again. Okay, so that was it. All right. Um, so it's coming up, but it doesn't look right. This whole thing shouldn't be wrapped in a link. Let me just check the HTML. Let's move this back. All 
All right, so I just want to add a little bit of CSS just to make this look better. So let's go to public style sheets, style CSS, and I'm going to get rid of this stuff. And I get some styles to paste in. So we're going to give the background a really light gray color. Uh, the results are going to have a border on the bottom. We're going to set some padding. Um, H4s are going to have a color much like the foundation blue, no margin, and then the URL in the description, we're just changing the margin up and the colors. Okay, so let's save that. And there we go, that looks a lot better. All right, so let's go ahead and add a few more websites. So I'm going to just grab some of these. We got LinkedIn. All right, so description. And just to test, I'm going to make sure that we have something we can look for that's going to be in all of these. Uh, let's see. For instance, the word connect is in Facebook, so let's add that here somewhere. Uh, let's say build. Say build, connect, and engage. Okay, then we'll save that. And now let's search for connect. Okay, so both of them come up. Good. If we search for Facebook. All right. So I'll add, let's add one more. We'll add the Billboard Music website. Okay, and the description. And let's put all right great so we, we now have a website search engine all right so what I want to do now is I want to have the same functionality but with news so let's go ahead and stop here and we'll get to the news in the next video all right guys, so we have everything working for the website side of the search. Now we need to work on the news. All right, so we wanna be able to add articles. So this goes to nowhere right now because we haven't set up the route, we haven't set up the view. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we're gonna to go to, let's see, let's go to articles, uh, routes, articles, and actually let's copy from websites. We'll grab this right here and we'll paste that here. Okay, so we're gonna go to slash add Then this is gonna be article slash add. We don't need to get any categories. Oh, I'm sorry, we do need the categories. We didn't need them for websites. So in routes websites, yeah, we didn't need to, to get the categories here. You can leave it if you want, but I'm just gonna get rid of it. Just get rid of these. Okay, so all it really needs to do is render and it doesn't need to pass along categories. All right, so that should work. Let's just make sure. Whoops, what happened? Router get res.render add website okay so add website that should still go to the form no problem all right good so back to articles uh, let's see we want to render the add article view and pass along categories now in order for this to work, we need to pass along the category model like we did here. So we're gonna grab that, paste that right here. All right, now we'll go ahead and create the, the view. So I'm gonna copy the form we have at add website, paste that in add article. 
Okay, so the, the action, it's going to go to articles slash add. All right, and we'll have a title, URL. Okay, we'll also need a little bit extra here. We'll need to have an author. So we'll go here and we'll change this to author. Change the name. All right, now we're also going to need a category select list. So let's go right under the URL and we'll put a label category and then we're going to have a select uh, let's see select I'm going to give it a name of category and then we need to loop through these categories so we're going to say each uh, each category and then we're going to do I in categories and then we'll put the options okay so option we'll give it a value attribute and the value is going to be the ID so we should be able to say uh, to put a number sign and then our curly braces and then we'll say category dot underscore ID and then the title will go here Category dot title. All right, so let's save that and let's see if we can do this. <clears throat> okay, so we'll go to add article. There's our form, there's our categories, and that should be it for fields. Let's just check the model, which we didn't do yet. Okay, so for the model, let's copy what we have in website. Okay, now this is all going to stay the same. The search plugin, uh, we're going to change the schema to article. Okay, so title, URL, we're also going to have a category. Let's do description, author. Let's make the author not required. All right. And then down here, the, we'll define the schema. Okay, fields, we get title, description, URL. That's fine, we'll keep those. And then this will change. So this one, we don't need, yeah, we do need this. So this is search articles. Okay, so that will be the same. We're just going to change this to article search. Uh, all the conditions can be the same. And then let's change this down here to add article. So it's essentially the same exact thing. We just have a couple extra fields. All right. All right, so that looks good. Uh, now let's go to, if we go to the article route, we want to handle the submission of the form. So let's copy that from websites. Okay, that's this post right here. Okay, so it's post slash add, and then we're going to create the article object. Get rid of that. Okay, so this is going to be new article. 
make sure that we include that up here. Actually, you know what? Let's include it in index. All right. So back to articles routes. Okay, so we do have a couple more fields, so let's add those. Okay, we have author. And we have category. All right, so then down here we're going to say article dot add article. And then we're going to pass in that object. Okay, then we'll redirect. So we'll save that. And let's try it. So I have a couple examples here we can use as far as articles. So I'm going to copy the title, the URL. For category, let's say technology, and then description. And author, John Doe. All right, so we'll save. And now let's do a search. Actually, we, we didn't put that functionality in yet. Let's add one more article here. This one about the controversial, controversial Facebook dislike button. Okay, for that we'll say technology as well. Description. and author. Okay, now let's go to the index and you can see we have the functionality if it's a website, now we need to do if it's news. All right, which is pretty much the same exact thing except we're calling it from the article model. So let's just copy from here to here and then we'll paste it in this conditional and change it to article. Okay, we're going to pass in search text. And then down here, let's change these. And then we're going to render the article's results. Actually, it's article, not it's singular, article results. All right, so that looks good. We'll save that. And let's see, in the model, in the model we have search, search. This should be search articles. All right, and then we're going to go to the view. We need to create the article results view. All right, so let's copy what we have in website results because it's pretty much the same idea. All right, and we'll go paste that in here. And we're just going to have to change all the websites to articles. So each article in articles. And then we'll change all these fields. Okay, we're going to have to add the author. Uh, we'll just do the author. Because if we wanted to display the category name, we'd have to add some kind of relationship with the category table because we have the ID stored, not the, the actual name. All right, so let's save that. Go ahead and, and reload. 
and let's choose news search for Facebook and there we go all right the other one I know it was an Amazon thing so we'll search for that I thought it was all right let's just check real quick so we'll say DB db.articles.find and Amazon it's right there huh okay oh that's websites oh did I not choose news that's that was my issue so Amazon make sure news is checked and there there we go all right so that's all working we can now add websites we can add articles we can search for websites and articles all right so obviously there's a lot more you could do with this but uh, I think it's a good foundation for a search engine um, it's just one of the things you can do the plugin we use is just one of the things you can do to implement search um, Obviously, there's a, there's a lot more if we wanted to, to get more advanced, but um, yeah, so that'll do it. Hopefully, you guys liked this application. This is the last one of the series, and I will see you in the course summary. All right, so congratulations. You have now completed 10 projects using MongoDB and over a dozen other technologies. So let's take a quick look at what you've learned and completed. All right, so in project one, we built a customer database. It was just a database, no web application. Um, we learned how to install MongoDB on Linux Ubuntu. We had an introduction to the Mongo shell. We worked with collections and documents, and we, we did find, update, insert, and remove queries. And we also looked at arrays and embedded data. So project two, we took the database a step further and created a web API where um, we could make HTTP requests to and update, delete, read, post data, um, data modeling. We looked at URL routing and we learned how to use Node and Express. Project three was a task manager and this is where we used the MongoLab account and we used the MongoLab data API we created a script using jQuery and Ajax calls and we also used some session storage functionality. Project 4 was the Meteor photo gallery so you were introduced to Meteor JS. We worked with GridFS to store files in our database. Uh, we set up and install Meteor. We worked with the FS collection module which allowed us to upload images and files to our database from the browser. Chapter 5 was the PHP to-do list. We set up an Apache 2 server. We installed PHP. We installed the MongoDB driver for PHP. And we did a lot of object-orientated programming with PHP. Project 6 was the Invoicer app. Okay, so we built a uh, RESTful API using Express. And we built the front end using Angular. So we used the mean stack and we implemented invoice and customer create read update and delete functionality project seven was the cdn finder uh, we set up mongodb in windows we used the mean.js platform we created custom modules in the platform and we learned about searching and filtering with angularjs project eight was the air find application this is where we took a look at geospatial indexes as well as geojson. We created an, an express API from an, an existing JSON file and we implemented state and proximity search. Project 9 was the Mongo chat application which was a chat client that communicated over sockets over socket IO. Uh, we used the MongoDB native driver for Node.js and we used MongoDB to insert and get chat messages from the database. And the last project was the site search engine. 
we implemented the express generator we took a look at the files and folder structure we created